Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John North Berserker. Again, do you don't need the smartphone, you don't need the watch. It's Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday with the Berserker, all John right, Nord. Stand right. by. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the berserker John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes. Of wrestling inside his potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. But we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Party Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. After successful cancer surgery, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan plus three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition. WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, The Wild Berserker, and at least three more WWF icons. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive group 80s legends photos, autographs, individual photos, all before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Get your VIP packages and tickets now to secure the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, Dan Marotti here at MWF Studios in downtown Melrose, Massachusetts, the zip code of Champion 02176. Hope your heart is filled with love after Valentine's Day as we gear up for three big days of tapings with the wild, unpredictable berserker John Nord beginning this Sunday night. February the 20th, the Berserker will be taking part in not one but two live cyber autograph signings on Sunday and Monday. A great chance to help out the show and get a personalized, collectible, personalized to you, if you so wish, live on the air to pre-order 8x10s and 11x14s, including an exclusive print we had designed for you guys. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com. Calm now. The Berserker is taking over Thursday nights on the professional wrestling airwaves, folks. But we realize that, unfortunately, millions of fans have no idea the show exists yet. So, uh, you know what we're doing today. We're bringing you every episode thus far that's aired uh, in this all-day and night Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday Marathon to pump you up. For more tapings, live episodes, signings, and watch-alongs with Fridley, Minnesota's finest, beginning this Sunday night. A few news and notes as fans begin to filter into the marathon as we're now less than nine weeks away from the big one, back to the 80s, a live wrestling event, Legends Fan Fest Extravaganza. Saturday, April the 16th at Memorial Hall right here in Melrose, Massachusetts. The Berserker is just one of the legends coming to town, along with WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champion Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, the freshly announced Dangerous Danny Davis, and at least two more 1980s WWF superstars to be announced. If the VIP packages sell out in advance, John Cena Sr. and I are planning to bring you even more 
80s legends. That's our commitment to you. The event includes a VIP exclusive Q&A session before fans enter. It includes an 80s VIP legends group photo before fans enter. It includes an autograph and photo session open to everyone before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light the squared circle on fire with a hot night of professional wrestling. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now and make a tremendous late Valentine's gift for your loved one. Head on over to Boston Wrestling dot com now for fans that love our watch alongs before the berserker comes to town there are rumors that quincy ristani will be making a rare winter appearance uh, before he can start riding his 78 honda honda matic again uh, with quincy's wrestling challenge watch along this thursday night at 7 p.m if he's here we'll pick right up where we left off in 1986 which is where quincy's brain still lives a lot of the time in more great news, we're almost at 100% of our goal to bring you Season 2 of Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. As of this recording, we're at 94% to the goal to get Marty back in studio for another set of tapings later this winter. If we have the Marty Gennetti that was with us at our Back to the 90s live event November 13th, you guys are in for a real treat as that is uh, Marty at his best while still being Marty. Check out the link. To our prize and experience-filled Indiegogo campaign uh, with the link in the premiere chat in the description box below and across our social media platforms. It's the winter time. It's what motivated Quincy to sing Baby, It's Cold Outside to Deborah McMichael. But no matter where you are, have the professional wrestling streaming time of your life while helping keep wrestling legends working with early full screen off and ad free access to wrestling insiders each and every week, 300 plus full length episodes in our archives, our world renowned studio shoot interview DVD library is seen by millions online and millions more on the Howard Stern Show, Patreon exclusives and more by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family. Patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. On Christmas and New Year's Day, we added exclusives not to be found on YouTube watch alongs with the Berserker and Demolition Axe. More great exclusive content headed your way again. Patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. If you want to treat yourself to something great from the Boston Wrestling eBay store, we have merchandise of superstars from every era to add to your wrestling collection, your wrestling man cave. It's open 24-7. Simply click the link in the description box below or head on over to bostonwrestling.com and click the button that says store. So with all that news out of the way, folks, all those cheap plugs out of the way, for the next few hours, kick back and relax. Remember the good old days of professional wrestling with the Berserker? We talk 80s, we talk 90s, even a little current events uh, with the big man himself. If you're enjoying tonight's content, please, folks, the Super Chat button is open for business. Graciously tip the bartender for all of our hard work bringing you this content so we can bring you more great superstars in studio. I'll be checking in throughout the marathon. Here's how we kicked it off with the series premiere of Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursdays with the Berserker. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to the kickoff of something new for us here in the world of Austin Wrestling Sports. A man we were looking forward to having with us. Uh, on November 13th at our 20th anniversary event. Unfortunately, there was a lot of craziness in his world. Unfortunately, you know, we, your dad passed away. And My dad did die, and uh, I want to tell all the fans that, man, I love you guys so much, uh, but that's that's life. People die, and, and that's why I wasn't here. So. Well, some of the fans, they saw that you wound up taking an appearance at the last minute. Um, in New York at one of those fan fests, but where there was I so much did. there was so much going on in your life, you really didn't know what the situation was well, at that point, I did, and yeah. you didn't want to guarantee that you were going to be with us and let the fans yeah. down at the last minute. So. It was really a long story, but uh, it was a tough. The time. bottom line is, I'm here right now with you. And we're going to have a lot of fun. And we're going to have a great time, and let's do it, with Every Thursday night, we're going to be throwing back to the good old Throwback days. Throwback Thursdays, baby. Uh, every fan that's been with us for a long time they know we love to go through those 
They always, they love the WWF in chronological order. And we're going to get there, but we got a couple of fun episodes for you. Uh, maybe for some of the younger fans that weren't around <laughs> during the days of the Berserkers Prime. Yeah. But uh, let us know, John. You might have to Google me or something like that. You come from one of the more unique uh, locales for where it comes to producing professional wrestling talent. I mean, your peers that you came into the business with all around the same age as yeah. you. Unfortunately, yeah. many of them aren't here anymore. But, I mean, tell us how John Nord came into the world of professional well, wrestling. Well, let me Were tell you. you this, 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 this is it. I'm telling you, I'll try to make this not too long, but literally in seventh grade, me and Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, would start imitating Dusty Rhodes because we laughed so hard at him Sunday mornings on AWA. So we'd be talking like this, you understand? Did it just roll? And we laughed like heck. And it started there. And then, you know, we had guys like Rick Rude, Mike Hegstrand Hawk came from another high school, but it was really close to our high school. Scott Norton went to Hegstrand's high school. Barry Darso graduated with me. Scott Simpson, Scott Wade graduated with me, but don't call him Scott Skin Simpson. His name's Nikita Koloff. Geez, you call him Nikita. I mean, you call him Scott Simpson, you think he'd have a freaking heart attack. Lighten up, Scott. Anyways, the bottom line is there's been dozens of guys, not dozens, but I would say a solid dozen. A guy named Brady Boone that passed away. Um, uh, who am I missing, Daniel? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Joe Laurinaitis. Joe Laurinaitis um, was a great guy just passed. We had so many Kevin guys Kelly. pass away. Ooh. Kevin Kelly. Kevin Kelly. Uh, nails. Um, and uh, I actually got a phone call from him a year ago. And... For you fans, I'm going to try to get them. I ain't promising nothing, but I'm trying to get them on one of these shows. Wow, wouldn't that um, be something? Yeah, everybody, because he's never been seen. I was there when he choked them out. And what teased me off is you got guys like Bret Hart saying, yeah, I was there when uh, Nails choked out Vince. No, you weren't, Bret. Me and Kevin were driving a rental car. I was driving, and he knew he couldn't get off the pot. They were piss testing for marijuana, and he knew he couldn't get off of it. So he goes, I'm going to choke that son of a bitch out. So I said, tonight? Now? Yep. Let's save that for when we get there in 1992 as the series progresses, because that's always a, a story that fans have a heck of a lot yeah, of Yeah, you're right, in, you're right. I, I got, you gave I them got, a good little teaser. Well, I gave you a good little teaser, and you're right, Dan. I started ahead. And then, anyways, I wrestled in high school. Um, college, I played at Montana State football. I wrestled my senior year at Montana State, 15 matches, because I could beat the heavyweight. Um, from there, I re went to 1984, uh, Brad Rangan's wrestling camp. Mm -hmm. And we that was his very first wrestling camp. And there was me, Rob Ricksteiner. Oh, really? That's okay. his real name, Rob Ricksteiner in case anybody has delusions of something else. Um, it's Rob Ricksteiner. Um, there were so many guys in there. Right after us was, uh, you know, Scott Norton, Vader. Uh, I mean, there was guys that I can't even remember right now. The Alaskans, if you remember them, um, they, they, they didn't get over that much, but they were great guys. And that particular camp, we had more tough son of a guns than you could ever believe. I mean, um, there were guys that wouldn't have not made that camp. And I would name them, but it would hurt their feelings, and I ain't going to do that. But I'll tell you something. Guys like uh, Shawn Michaels wouldn't have made it. Guys like Marty Gennetti 
one to made it. I'm telling you the truth. And if Bret Hart, I got like Bret Hart, wouldn't have owned, and I like Bret, I travel with him, but if his dad wouldn't have owned it, Bret Hart wouldn't have made it. Hmm. I promise you. And I'm not saying that for ego or to be mean or nothing, but I tell the actual fact, truth. And I try, if I hurt somebody's feelings, I'm sorry, but I do tell the truth on these shows. It's the so, only way you know how. Huh? It's the only way you know how. No, it's the, it's the truth, man. And that camp was tough. I mean, we got in fist fights. You got Brad Rankins, who was an Olympian. You had Dennis Kozlowski, who would just stop by. He was an Olympian. Uh, a guy named uh, Dan Chandler was an Olympian. He would stop by. So you had nothing but really tough guys there and I thank God I was in good shape then because I would have got my butt kicked if I went to train hard before I came in there but I did train hard and I ended up wrestling Dan I ended up wrestling Rob Ricksteiner a lot a real shoot really yeah me and him and we were about 50 50 and he wrestled for Michigan um, I wrestled for Montana State um, Rob was a good, good wrestler. He had much more experience than me, but I still went 50-50 with him. The bottom line is, is from there, first job was AWA, and Vern Gagne was my father-in-law's uh, best friend in high school. Oh, really? Yeah, they went to Robbinsdale together. Now, Robbinsdale's the big wrestling school, and matter of fact, if you go to the Minnesota Wrestling Hall of Fame, it's in downtown Robbinsdale. Um, the first inductee was Vern Gagne. You had Larry Henning. And then there's going to be a lot of others in deck, so many per year. But uh, you mentioned that you and Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, went to school together. Obvious, I'm going oh, to guess you knew that Larry was a wrestler. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We would, uh, uh, well, when you're in junior high and you're looking at Larry Henning, the guy looks like a mountain. He, he's, he's one of the biggest dudes ever. Him and Scott Norton are physically the strongest guys I've ever met really? naturally. Larry Henning was a freak of nature. But when I was a kid with Kurt, we got caught stealing beer out of a beer warehouse and we took off running and Kurt went one way, I went the other. I didn't hear from him, so I went over to Kurt's house to see if he was home. Mm -hmm. So I got home and Larry had heard from the cops and he was taking Kurt and was throwing him down the steps. <laughs> and oh, Kurt's geez. mom goes, don't Larry, you'll kill him. <laughs> And it wasn't like a, an abuse or something that is definitely wrong. It was just one of them. My old man was so teed off, which we've all been through that. Oh, yeah. Right? And uh, the stories with Barry Darso are endless. And uh, so 84, uh, 85, I went to Louisiana. And one thing about Louisiana and Bill Watts, Jake Roberts became my tag team partner for a full year, and I was in the best shape of my life. Mm. And there's a black and white picture where I'm going like this, and Jake's standing here. He's got his hands on. And that's one of my favorite pictures. And I'll tell you why. Because Jake Roberts is a genius in pro wrestling. He is as smart as dude as you could ever have. He told me exactly what to do all the time. I didn't do it right all the time, but there's a lot of interviews that you'll probably never see, but we said some just really funny interviews, and it was all because of Jake. Jake is a genius, and uh, uh, from there, 86, AW, back to AWA, 87 AWA, 88 AWA, 89 AWA, kind of, 
I took some time off. And then uh, uh, 91, which would be February 91, I got oh, called. I got called. Call. Yeah, I got called by Vince. And then uh, 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 I started there. I was kind of disappointed. I didn't get a push. Well, we're gonna, again, we're going to be standing there in a, in a couple of episodes, which I think is a, a great segue into because of the fans. Yeah. They, they love the nostalgia of the WWF as opposed to WWE. But again, the we're going to get there. The WWF, you are correct. They uh, do love that. Let me ask you this. I know we're going to be getting ready to go to a commercial break any second now, but um, we're going to jump, skip around a little bit until we get to that WWF timeline. What uh, brought you into the orbit of the late, great Bruiser Brody? Well, I met Bruiser Brody in 1985 mm -hmm. and, uh, in Japan, and he had the chains. He was something to see, man. They were going to make a cartoon of him. He was absolutely, he, every place you went, it was a packed house. And it was because of Bruiser Brody. Well, I became good friends with him. Um, was this for Anoki or Barber at that point? It was for Anoki. Anoki, okay. Um, Frank wrestled for Anoki. As far as I know, he hardly ever wrestled for Baba. He did maybe once or twice, right, but that, yeah. that's about it. Anoki, uh, next thing I know, we're, we're good friends. We're calling each other on the phone. We're meeting, we're doing some independent shots, and we're meeting early, and we're talking, we're going to lunch, we're, you know, on and on, and we became friends. And, uh, and Frank says, why don't you start that hus hus thing with me? And I said, okay, what does that mean? I said, he said, I have no idea. I just do it because I breathe hard. I said, that's about right. That's why you do do it. You start going, hush, hush. You mean you got to say something when you're breathing that hard. But we did a lot of the independent shows in them 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like I told you, I don't, I don't know about, you know, that contract in 88. So we're going to get there, too. Was a big deal. But I got a, a cue from the back from our partner in crime in the control booth, John C. Manicus Riley. Right now, we're going to take a brief time out as we get ready. We're inching closer and closer to that big day on the 25th. The reindeer are going to be hitting the roof. Santa Claus is going to be coming. Is our Paul Bear holiday headlocks. Paul drive. Bear. Paul Bear. I love that guy. Don't forget him. He was the best. We'll find out more about the toy drive and other great things happening in the world of Boston wrestling. We'll be back after this brief timeout. Oh, yeah. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the Berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the Berserker, John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Party with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but... We're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling, and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Mighty Rockin' each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. You can add this to your collection. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this WWE NXT TakeOver War Games 2020 11x14 Limited Edition 
autographed posters signed by everyone on the event, number 23 of only 100 made. Include signatures from the Undisputed Era, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Tommaso Ciampa, Timothy Thatcher, Io Shirai, Tony Storm, Rhea Ripley, Dexter, Loomis, and more. Comes with authentication hologram on the back of the poster. Also comes with mystery autographed 8x10. And an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back. We're starting to scratch the surface of the world, the career that is John Nord, the berserker to some of you, Nord the Barbarian to others, among other aliases in the king of sports professional wrestling. But tell us, uh, again, Bruiser Brody, uh, one of the more fascinating characters that's almost gone on to become an enigma due to the way he left this world. But You're right. Uh, tell us about the yep. Bruiser Brody that you knew before we even talk about wrestling. The, the man you knew was Frank Goodish, the man. The man was, his name is Frank Goodish. Um, I even asked him where he came from, and he was very European background, okay? Um, and he, the, the Europeans uh, are very casket oriented. So that's why his funeral was uh, in a casket. Remember that picture of him laying there I've in the it. casket? Yeah, yeah. I've seen that too, and I didn't make the the funeral, either did Stan, and uh, I was I was effed up myself, especially after I heard he was uh, murdered. But uh, the man, Frank Goodish, I'll tell you something. We had a few things in common. Number one, he played for the Washington Redskins, okay? And his old line coach at one time was Vince Lombardi. Oh, wow. And then he became the head coach. And then there was an old line coach named Bill Austin, who used to be the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, I played for the USFL, the mm -hmm. um, United States Football League, which, um, if you're old enough, you'll remember it. But Bill Austin was my uh, old line coach, which was really a coincidence. If I would have known Frank then, it would have been really cool to talk about him. But one thing about Frank Goodish, I'll tell you, he was all state in basketball. He was all state in football in Michigan. And I'm going to tell you, he was the genuine article. He was the real, he was the real macaroni, no phony baloney. He was the real deal. He was an athlete. He had the lungs of a greyhound. He really did. And when I wrestled him, he seemed to have a thing where when I thought it was over, he had an extra steam in him that you can't even describe. But he was human, you know, obviously he died, but he loved his wife and Jeff back then, was his son who was only four or five years old. And he loved the heck out of them. And Frank Goodish was a, I, I'll say, if, if one thing about Barbara, his wife, who knew him better than any of us talking, she'll tell you one thing. Frank Goodish was a free spirit. That's what she says to me. He was a free spirit. And he was, uh, he was a guy that, um, was he the toughest? You know, you always talk about, hey, who's the toughest? Was he the toughest? Well, if you put a guy in a room with another guy and who would walk out, who would be the toughest? No, Frank wasn't the toughest, okay? When you get into the tough stuff, you got to talk about ultimate fighting. You got to talk about amateur wrestling. You got to talk about boxing, okay? And if you intertwine all of them, you're going to be one tough dude. Where do you think he would rank amongst the tough guys in pro wrestling? Just in pro wrestling? Just in pro wrestling. Not counting none of the other None guys. of the other uh, genres. Well, I'd probably put him fourth or fifth. You think he could take Haku? 
Listen, I'm going to tell you something about a talk cool. Let's okay? hear it, baby. I know how cool very well. Am I talking to this Would camera? You, the, let the camera follow you, but talk okay, whatever listen, way you want. Listen, tell them, John. Tell I'm them. tired of the hot cool shit. Oh, wow. Okay, now hot cool, I wrestled a dozen times in Japan. I wrestled them five, six times here. And I'm going to tell you something. That is the most overdone, overrated thing that's ever been talked about. Haku is not that tough. I went at it with them. And I'm telling you, I didn't lose. So if you don't lose, you, I ain't going to say it. But guess what? Haku, was Haku an amateur wrestler? I'm talking about the breed behind the, the guy, okay? He never did any of that. He never played football. He never played amateur wrestling. I'm not saying he wasn't tough, but pulling a guy's eye out at a bar or doing or punching a guy out at a bar, that don't really count, okay? Anybody can punch a guy out at a bar or pull his eye out. It don't count. Haku, I'd fight, I'm 62 years old. I would fight Haku right now. Okay, I'm telling you guys the truth. I'm tired of the Haku stuff. It's, it's, it's got drove up there because they want to make money on it. Okay? Do you really think, yeah, he's got an intimidating look. Okay? But I'm telling you, and I talked to my good friend Brad Rankins about this, because Brad wrestled him. And I said, do you, what do you think about Haku? And he said he didn't have that toughness feel. When you grab onto a guy and uh, uh, the guy goes this way or the guy stands still and you can't move him. One of them two things are going to happen. Haku, you can throw Haku around. I'm not saying he ain't tough. Haku is tough, but I'm telling you something, and this sounds big-headed, and I don't know where I read on it, but I'll tell you this, I'm tougher than Haku, and I know you think that that's a big, full of shit deal. It's not. You guys have overrated Haku. Somebody started something somewhere with this Haku deal, and it's got to stop. Because the guy ain't that tough. Period. Don't forget it. Or oh, Marty Gennetti beat up him. Well, it almost sounds like one of those say no to drugs PSAs. You're so animated about it, John. But I'll say this. Well, I'm telling the truth. I, I, I have no doubt your personal opinion is, is your personal opinion. And no, no, it's the truth. It's not, it's not, it, besides your opinion, Daniel, okay. it's the truth. I'm not going to sit here and say uh, a guy ain't, ain't the toughest. If he, if he was the toughest, hell yes, I'd say he's the toughest. All right. But he's not. In this studio, both Marty Gennetti and Holly Ray said they had Haku at number one. Where would you place Holly Race on that list? Don't know him well enough. Okay. I would say Harley in his prime mm -hmm. might have been one tough dude. I didn't know him until he got older. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you could, you know, touch his forehead, take him down. Yeah. Scoop a leg, put him on his back, boom, 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 boom. Okay? That's how it works. But if you get old, the only, only guys you can fight are guys you're old, you're same age. Okay? But Harley Race, and who else rated him number one? Marty Gennetti. Marty Gennetti don't know what he's talking about. The guy's an idiot. He's a drunken... Marty, I hope you're watching this because you're a freaking idiot if you rate him number one. And Harley... Uh, Harley Race, I don't know what to believe you. I'll tell you why. You said you were at the... You said when Patsy Klein airplane crashed that you were there on the scene. And I watched the crash, and they showed it on an old clip. I didn't see you, Harley. So, Harley, I think maybe, you know, everybody likes the bullshit now and then, and 
I don't know if I believe that. But is there anybody that gives anybody else a number one? What about Andre? <laughs> Andre might be number one. <laughs> Andre grabbed John you with his arms. You feel like you, a fucking elephant trunk <laughs> has just picked you up off the air. Andre's an animal. We, I challenged Andre to a drinking contest. Oh, to a drinking contest. We, okay. we drank in Tokyo, and we're at a German restaurant. And we were drinking, and it was a five-liter clay mug German be uh, beer. If you drank it, you didn't have to pay for it. I don't know how much five liters is. Do you guys? It's roughly two and a half bottles of soda. Okay, so five liters. So it's a lot. So of, here we go. Of... We're going at it one on one. It's a fierce. It's a fierce look. I'm like, that's too old, tough guy. Of course, I was joking. I love Andre. Anyway. We're drinking, drinking, drinking. I get the first one down. He put it down, you know, kind of like drinking a shot of booze, you know. Um, went down real easy for him. Now I'm on my second one. I get three quarters of the way done, and I go into a blackout. I'm, <laughs> I'm falling on tables of people trying to eat their <laughs> meal. And Andre's going, John. John, you're too drunk. Why do you get so drunk? I said, I don't know, because you did it to me. <laughs> and seriously, they booted me out to 86. Now, I ain't done with this story. And this is a true story. And that's for Ric Flair. This is a true story. Um, Andre uh, uh, finishes that. Then he drinks a bottle of brandy. A full one with no ease and don't even look like he's drunk. <laughs> he was incredible. So now when me and him get in a cab to go back to the Keogh Plaza. And you know those little white Nissan cabs in, in Japan. Well, me and him squeeze in there. And we get to the Keogh Plaza. I fall out because he's taking most of the room. His ass was this wide. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not kidding you. Listen to me. It's this wide. So I fell out on the ground. I get up and now I, and Andre got stuck. Boss, I'm stuck. Boss, I'm stuck. That's what he called you, boss. Um, uh, boss, I'm stuck. I'm going, well, get, pull, and I'm trying to pull. No, no, pull me. Oh, pull me. It hurts there. I, I, his hair. No, my hair hurts. He's legitimately stuck. Now, listen. The Keo Plaza called the police, and the police <laughs> bought, brought a welder with them. Now, I'm saving these stories for my buddy Dan. Thank you. Some of them been unheard and they are true. So, a welder is with the cops. He's got a little buzz saw deal that cuts metal. So he cuts them out <laughs> and he falls out onto the pavement. He can barely get up. Andre, I mean, Andre was old now. I mean, he died at 49, but good God, he, he couldn't. He even move at 46, you know, or how old he was. I think he, he passed at 46. I, well, no, I think he died when he was 49. Well, he, I think he was around 40 and 87 when he worked with Hogan at WrestleMania, and he died in 93. Somebody, anyway, somebody check, but I'll bet anything he, he was 49 when he Do you want to make died. a small bet? I'll you make, make a, a bet. Uh, yeah, let's make a bet. 20 well, bucks? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. 20 bucks, I'd say 49, he I says. I say 46. I say 49. And if we're both wrong, I guess it's a tie. Bingo, Santa Domingo. There we go. All Bingo. right. So, we have, and so this, anyway. This isn't he, one of those Marty Gennetti bets. This one's going to happen because Marty owes me quite a few meals from things he was wrong about. But anyway. Marty, you're so full of shit. Anyway. Back to Andre in Japan. Anyway, Andre gets back up. <laughs> Oh, he's got all kinds of shavings from the 
metal on him. And, and I, find, I help him out. I go, are you all right, Buck? You know, when you're helping Andre up, you're concerned about him, you know. The guy's, and, and he's got these knit pants on. And, and uh, you know, the, these knit pants that, you know, Omar the tent maker made. <laughs> and I lift him up and he got boss, I gotta go to bed. Boss, I gotta go to bed. I said, so do I. We were just hammered. But he was he didn't he wasn't as drunk as I was. I lucky I started snapping out of it. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And he won the drinking contest. Oh, big time. He buried me. All right, well, John, as we get ready to go to the timeout, I don't want to, to have heat with us so early on in the program, but John C. Manicus Riley checked on the Internet up there. Andre was indeed 46 when he passed. So Son right. of a gun, yeah. okay. But you know what? Okay. We can still have other competitions as the days go on with these programs. God, you're, how do you know that? He looked it up online. Oh, I just... I just Son whatever. of a gun, I would have bet anybody... See, See, I did the same thing. I read it at 49, I thought. The only but I was wrong. The reason I remember it is I was wrong. I remember I'm... he was 40 when he did the big WrestleMania 3. Really? And he died in really? 93, six years See, later. So. You, wow, you were right, and I was wrong, and I take it but like a man. It. You lived it. I will take it like a man. All right. Well, you know what? We'll see what other competitions I'm glad. I should with. know guys like you know more than I do. Well, I don't know much. Believe me, just ask my Yeah, ex, well, I... That's a different story for a I call time. bullshit on that. All right, wrestling... I think you know a lot. Go ahead. Thank you. All right, wrestling fans, right now we're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with the final segment. Stand by for more Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursdays with John Noy. Hey, hey! Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Party Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. After successful cancer surgery, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, plus three-time WWE Tag Team Champion Zaxxon Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, the Wild Berserker, and at least three more WWF icons. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive group 80s legends photos, autographs, individual photos, all before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Get your VIP packages and tickets now to secure the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College, March 26th. Tickets and Superstar Experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon. But we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty. But, but, our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out. At WrestleMania 37, she proved she is the EST, defeating Sasha Banks to become the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Here's your chance to own this limited edition collector's autograph print, personally signed by Bianca Belair, one of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE, also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome Bianca Belair collectible for your wrestling collection now. Wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insider's Throwback Thursday with John Nord. Believe it or not, this is the Berserker John Nord. I unfortunately continue to be me, Dan Marotti. We're having fun here on the... I'm pitch. glad to be here, Daniel. And I tell you, I wish you were going Marotti, to... Marotti, what is that? T Italian? The whole... Oh, you should hear the whole last name, but we had to cut it off a little bit. Yeah, they cut it? sounds like an Italian song. I've cut stuff before. There's 16 letters total, but... Is we, there? We, we sliced it a little Holy bit. Holy cannoli! But, but they figured to make it easy on me, they'd give me Dan, which is only three letters. All right, so well, we're going to go with Dan. I'll say that. I wish you could be with us live this Sunday night, John, when we have our annual 
Uh, Paul Bear, Holiday Headlocks, Toy Drive Christmas Party, where John Cena Sr. will be here in the soul. studio. God He's going to pick soul. the winner of that cyber raffle. And I know you were out back earlier, and you couldn't believe some of the prizes that are going to be up for grabs. One giant jackpot, one winner anywhere in the world can buy a raffle ticket for as little as five bucks. Not only are we going to quote unquote update Santa Claus's GPS to find every kid's house with the money we raise, but we continue to honor this man right here. He was like a second dad to me, the one and only Paul Bearer, who we miss oh, and love every day. God bless his heart. God bless his heart. He's never, he's, I've never heard him say nothing but a kind words to people, and he was kind to me. And um, the one I tried stabbing the Undertaker, um, oh, those will be and, some good and the stories. deal, yeah, he, yeah. he came up to me and he congratulated me that I was able to get it in the ring, you know, yeah. to actually get yeah. it in. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of guys, they, 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 they wouldn't get that sword in, but I'm not. Again, I'm not you bragging. Did a good I'm job. talking about you this. You did a man. good job, John. Well, this. You did a good job. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, it's unfortunate. It was the year before he passed. Yeah. Him. God, he passed. Him, quick. John Cena, Senior, and myself. We all put the. We started the toy drive, God. and in his honor, we continued it. So I'm glad we do it. Dan, can I give it a shout out to Jim Duggan? Yeah, please, Jim. Jim, I know that uh, you're going through hell right now. Um, I want you to know our prayers are with you. Um, honestly, uh, uh, there's been times in the, in the wrestling business where maybe you and me didn't see eye to eye, but I'm going to tell you something. You're a heck of a guy, and hang in there. Everybody's praying for you, and that's from here. That's from the heart. Thanks, Jim. And his wife is a great lady too. Deborah. Oh, she's very nice. Awesome. Lady. I met her a couple times. He was. Uh, yeah. He was another that was going to be with us at our uh, reunion back on November the thirteenth. We but you got. Miss it you of told dad, me that. He had the prostate cancer. So we hoping. And that came you know like what? a thief in the night. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That Hope. came quick. Wouldn't it be great? Not only where we're going to have you with us on April the thirteenth. Yeah. Right down the street at Memorial Hall. If Hacksaw is feeling better, we'd love to have him and his wife with us, obviously. So most important too. thing is the health. We want to have Hacksaw get back to as close as 100% as possible, and then we'll worry Hang about wrestling-related stuff. Amen. All Amen. right, back to the point of contention kind of in this episode. A man that so many find so fascinating, especially the uh, younger group of fans that have seen the, the dark side of the ring program that learned a little bit about Bruiser Brody. Do you remember where you were when you received the bad news back on that July of 1988? I know exactly where I was. And I was with the Nasty Boys. Oh, really? Okay. We were at a place called Lord Fletcher's. And where was that? That's on Lake Minnetonka. Sounds like a movie, don't it? <laughs> Lake Minnetonka in Minnesota, just west of the city, okay? West of Minneapolis, okay? In Minnesota, it's a beautiful big lake, and it's got those bars on the lake. And you pull in your big boat, and you party. Everybody's got their white clothes, and everybody's having a great time. Well, all of a sudden, we get a phone call, and... Uh, it actually wasn't me directly. Somebody, Wayne Bloom was with us. Um, uh, Mike Enos was with us. And I think Wayne answered the phone. And he said, what do you want? We're partying. You know, that type of deal. Tell him Frank Goodish got murdered in Puerto Rico. And Wayne told me, and I for some reason knew it was true. And Frank asked me to go to Puerto Rico a couple times. I'm not saying I was asked that time because I don't think he did. But I'll tell you this, Frank definitely um, was gonna, me and him were definitely gonna end up there. Cause me, him, me and him, but the legend the way it happened, you guys have heard it, okay? I won't go too far into it because I wasn't there. All I can tell you is we're at this lake and we're all partying, getting drunk. 
on that date. What date was it? I believe it was the 18th. The 18th of? 88. Of July? Of July. July. And anyways, you already got me on 20 bucks, you son of a gun. Anyways, um, I went into kind of like a shock. I'm like, and, I, and it dawned on me, my life is never going to be the same again. These guys are different. But I got a contract at home for 250 a year, which to me was like hitting the lottery. I got a friend that really liked me because, number one, I played a little pro football. I loved football. I loved working out like Frank. And we had a lot in common that way. And uh, I didn't know Barbara well, his wife. That's why I didn't feel it was, I, I didn't go to the funeral and I maybe should have, but I just didn't know Barbara that well and I wanted her to be with her family. Anyways, it was absolutely shocking. I left that bar and it was, you know how you got that feeling, like you got someone socked you in the gut and you're just staring as you drive and you go, huh, what? What'd you say? And you're just like stoned uh, and you just, and it's because of the bad news. But Frank Goodish was a legend. He, he's, get, it, is a legend, has it become bigger than it really was? I don't think so. I think, I think it is about what it is. He was a legend and he was an ass kicking legend, but he was an ass kicker in the professional ring, okay? In a professional style of wrestling. He could kick ass. Um, was he the toughest? That's another story. Well, you know, it's interesting. We've had Tony Atlas here in this studio tell the story many times. Uh, we were with Dutch Mantel down in Tampa, Florida, who happened to be in the arena the night it happened. Um, so we've had some very interesting different points of view on it. I say this, what I think is, is I don't want you, nice certainly isn't the word, but I think it's great that Barbara Goodish, still to this day in 2021, goes yeah. to the Cauliflower Alley Club reunion out in Vegas. Awesome. And she goes to these I other various that. functions. I didn't yeah. know that. And she's actually, I think she's actually on the board of directors now with the Cauliflower. And you'd love Good. it if you ever have a chance to go out to one of the reunions. Oh, it's really I got to nice. see her. I got to see her. I, yeah, that and really. And just a sweet really, human being, yeah. That is really, 30, really 33 cool. 33 years now after the fact. Man, that is so cool. Yeah, um, just her class and the way she handled it and everything. She's, she's, she is uh, just a great woman. Well, imagine getting that call. Well, when she called the hotel in the middle of the night, it was patched through to Dutch Mantel's yeah. room. You know, for her to take her little boy and go down to Puerto Rico, what mystified me was that why would Abdullah the Butcher tell her in the airport that he was dead? I mean, I don't think that should have come from him in that place. I think, you know, she should have been at a hotel or a hospital and sat down. And, you know, Abdullah was passing her like two trains in the night. Yeah, that, I thought that was. I wrong. agree with you. That uh, was really tacky, and Abdul, you listen, uh, you know, the, again, I'm telling the truth. First of all, you're he's a, he's a, a a small legend, let's say that's real big, but uh, <laughs> is he is he uh, a tough wrestler? He ain't worth a shit. You can gig him and he can bleed and all that, but besides that, he ain't worth a shit, and he shouldn't have said that to Barbara. Um, Tony Atlas, I love Tony. He's got a way of going on and on and on and twisting the truth a little bit. Now, Dutch Mantel will tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Now, isn't that funny? Tony says that Dutch is lying about his version of it. No. Dutch ain't a liar. You, you trust Dutch. I, I, knew I Dutch. love Dutch. I, I knew Dutch for a whole year in, in Louisiana. Uh, I went over to his house and everything, um, townhouse um, and everything. And uh, Dutch ain't lying. Listen, Tony's got a way 
a twist in it, and Tony's got a way of doing shit that he shouldn't do. You could be having, I did have breakfast at the gathering. I was sitting there by myself, Barry Darso, my childhood uh, friend. Great friend. I love, lo yeah. I think I've told you how much I love Barry. Barry is my childhood Barry. Barry's my childhood friend. He was in my wedding. We're I'll all going to be together April 16th at Memorial Hall, baby. That's it. And it's, it's all because of you, Dan, and we appreciate it. I really do because it's fun, and it's, it's fun to see old wrestlers. But Barry, um, uh, a guy like Barry, I was sitting down. There was another kid. Tony sits down and starts <laughs> talking and won't quit talking. What was he talking about? And, uh, all about him. And just like Ted DiBiase, Ted on and on and on. It's all about Ted. And that's a whole nother story. But listen. Was there any debris coming from Tony's mouth? Yes, there yeah. was. He was spitting out chunks of, of egg and bacon and a little sausage. And I had to duck a few times, <laughs> but I did it. And, and you know what I'm talking about. He, don't well, Tony used to be here with us every week, and I used to oh. get hit by pieces of chicken wing on the left side of his mouth. Listen, the way chicken he eats wing. is freaking disgusting. Tony, listen. Keep it in your mouth, okay? That's what she said. You don't have to. That's what she said. Yes. <laughs> that's, listen, the bottom line is, is he took Barry's spot. He's my childhood friend. And then Barry started talking. He goes, hey, man, I'm trying to talk. Well, you've been talking for 15 minutes. He said so. that to Barry? Um. No, no. He actually said it to another guy oh. that was trying to say something. He didn't say that to Barry, no. But he did say it to another guy. He said, hey, man, I'm trying to talk. Yeah. Well, you've been talking for 15 minutes. I said to him. I said, and Darcel's waiting to sit down. So get the fuck up. I was pissed. I said, get up, please. You had enough of him at that yeah, point. Yeah, enough is enough. I told him. Tony, you guys know him as well as I do. Listen, he can be a great guy. He, he, I know that sometimes he screws people out of money. Like right someone, here. 800 bucks. Like right here. 800 bucks. I'm not going to name any names. So Tell the truth, amounts. baby Ruth. So anyways, long story short, Tony Atlas, um, I know he's got a great heart, but he's full of shit. Okay, and and that's just how that is. But that don't stop a guy from having a great heart. I got a lot of friends that got great hearts, but they're full of shit. But they're my friends anyway, you know? We had right? Tony that was with us every week that had a great heart that turned into a thief, and we had another one that battled substance issues on certain well, days that had a great heart. Well, so welcome to go. my 2018 well, to 2021. Yeah, well, the, yeah, well, that is that is the is how this business can go. And you know that, them both, so you can verify what I, it's like. I definitely know them both. And listen, Marty, great guy, but Marty, quit effing up. Stop it. Don't even show up if you're going to drink. Don't come, okay? I'll come. You don't have to, okay? And I'm saying that out of love. Get some help, do what you got to do. But you're going to end up in a lot of trouble. I know I've done it. Well, I have tried exhaustively with WWE to try and get him some help. Yeah. WWE is willing to give it, but you got to want it, as they have told me. So Yeah, they will give it. Um, he, They paid for Scott Hall. They paid for me. I got help. Did you? I, I don't, yeah, I just, you know. Hey, listen, I'll be honest with you. I still have some cocktails, but getting drunk, I can't do it. I, I almost good. throw up. It's good for you. I don't like the taste of it even anymore. But anyway. I think with Marty, it's more the, the substances, and I think with Tony, he's more worried about the free meal. Is that a way to put it? <laughs> that, is, that is. All right, wrestling fans, running out of time. We'll be back after this brief time. Thank you very much. Ah. Uh... See ya. Why, hello. 
I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Here's your chance to own a piece of history from the 2020 WWE Draft. On the second night, October the 12th, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss unleashed hell on Andrade and Zelina Vega. This limited edition 11x14 collector's poster is number 26 of only 50 made, personally signed by both The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, direct from friends at WWE. Comes with Certificate of Authenticity hologram on the poster itself, suitable for framing. You'll also receive a bonus autograph mystery photo and an on-air shout out as our thanks to you get this ultra rare autograph fiend and alexa bliss poster now wrestling fans we hope you enjoyed the premiere episode of wrestling insiders throwback thursday with my new partner in crime john north yes, it's and, good to be here dan and other legends joining the family i mean how many more brody stories could we have shared oh. tonight? how many more andre stories could oh. we have shared tonight oh. we're oh. in for a hell of a story wait if, till you hear the muffler story if you guys are enjoying what we're doing here uh, during the live premiere chat away leave your thoughts in the description box below of course the super chat button is always open again it costs yep. a lot to turn the lights on to this studio to bring in great superstars the hotels the airfare the printing the great support staff that we have on hand we got to take care of everybody especially during we the know. holiday season we but gotta again, give guys the mufflers if they need them do, and if you know what a muffler is dan yes i do okay yeah. all right don't forget this sunday night live it's going to be the Boston Wrestling Christmas Party with John Cena Sr., the winner of the 2021 wow. Paul Bear Holiday wow. Headlock Cyber Toy Drive. Oh, John oh, Cena Sr. is going to pick that. It's going to be yes, a lot of fun. Yes, sir. John Cena Sr. Get your raffle Kudos tickets. Kudos to you, baby. Get your raffle tickets now at bostonwrestling.com for as little as 5 bucks. You could win over $1,000 in prizes. But until next Thursday night, for John Nord, I'm unfortunately still Dan. We'll see you then for <laughs> Wrestling Insiders Throwback <laughs> Thursday. Tell yo, friend, tell baby, you. yo! Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now to Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Get the best seats in the house now at bostonwrestling.com. The World Wrestling Federation was live at Zembo Mosque in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Friday, February the 15th, 1980. In the opening contest, Larry Zabisco beat Bulldog Brower, who replaced Baron Mikel Cicluna. Lone Eagle and Cowboy Lang victorious over Little Tokyo and Dirty Morgan. Wild Samoans drew WWF Tag Team Champion Tito Santana and Rene Goulet. Hulk Hogan defeated Dominic DiNucci, and in the main event, WWF Tag Team Champion Ivan Putski defeated Hussein Arab to replace Bobby Duncan. If you're in Harrisburg Live, share your memories in the comments section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our acclaimed Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to episode number two of our new series, Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday with John Nord. Let's it is it. a pleasure to have you here. The Thank you, brother Dan. 
I, the feedback to our premiere episode was off the charts, and again, so many stories, we couldn't even fit into one episode, just about a couple of guys. I mean, this series could go on for years and years as oh, long as God. we don't run into theft and yeah. booze and all yeah. these other things. <laughs> but we won't go there. It's the I holiday like it. season. Yep. Literally, we're two days away from Christmas. Uh, the fans sent yeah. in some very interesting questions yeah. when they knew we were going to be back. Um, you know, the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks toy drive, it means a lot to us. Even though the raffle is over, we're still going to have great merchandise available through the end um, of 2021. John so you get questions from the fans? Oh, we always get questions from the fans. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But if you missed the cyber autograph signing, hopefully John is going to be with us again in January. We're trying to work I out will all. be here in January. Well, I said the it, so I'm going to mean it. And I think we may even stay a little longer this time, more than two days, maybe three. Okay. I think we need to do that. Okay. I, I think the fans are going to love this content so much. Uh, I know you guys are going to love. It's going to turn into a little bit of a party and just have a good time BS in here. Not BS and telling the truth. You're not going to fall through a wall. No, I ain't going to slam anybody through a windshield. You're, you're not going to take money for artwork. No, like, no, no. <laughs> All right, John. Fans wanted to know, very kind of a, a simple, basic question. Yeah. Uh, where it's the holiday weekend. Yeah. yeah. Tell us some of your favorite Nord Christmas stories. Nord Christmas stories was, uh, well, it was Christmas, and my dad had a, a car lot. A real big one. And the show floor was big. And it was called Nord Motor Company. Now, where was this? And it's in Anoka, Minnesota. No, no credit. We don't care. No down payment. We still don't care. Don't make your payment. That's right. Then we care. We're Nord Motor Company, located a mile west of Anoka on Highway 10. And with payments as low as $82 a month. That didn't hurt much, did it? And I do a commercial where I slam a guy through a windshield. Really? It's on Google. It's on the thing. Oh, is it? We'll see oh, if we can yeah, find yeah. it. Yeah. And the thing goes like this. No credit, we don't care. No down payment, we still don't care. Don't make your payment. I scoop them up, I slam them through an 85 rev window, glass, candy glass, that cost two grand. The only place I could get it was Hollywood. Slam them through the window. Don't make your payment. Crash, crash. I go to the roll off the car, look into the camera and say, that's right, then we care. And that got over so big. Now this is at Christmas time, um, close to Christmas. Uh, I think the Vikings were in the first round of the playoff, if I remember right, because Disco Darren Nelson dropped the ball. Um, anyways, uh, what happened was, uh, we started a party after we did it on the show floor and everybody had Santa hats on. The kids were there. We were given toys. We had a great time. The kids and the wives went home and then the guys started, you know, partying a little too hard. Um, Wayne Bloom, one of the Beverly brothers, jumps in the back of my car in the trunk. And I'm driving around in Oka, Minnesota with the Bev brothers from Shaker Heights, Ohio, <laughs> um, in the back of my trunk. Now, Mike Enos, back then, I didn't know. Wayne Bloom hadn't even got into the wrestling business yet. But he's in the back of my car. I see, uh, I see his fingers up through the speaker uh, holes. And I realized he was in there and really didn't know he was in there. But uh, besides that, I got home and uh, uh, I was living, I was married and it was 1987. And I got home and I hear something. I knew Wayne was back there. 
So I let him out of the trunk and I got home. The wife gave me a little bit of a chewing, but not too bad. And we ended up having a great Christmas. That's your favorite Christmas? That's a great Christmas. It sounds like a lot of fun. It was a great Christmas because my kids were small and I could play with them. I could become them. Three-year-olds, four-year-olds, I could act like that. And if you're a dad and you got little ones, oh, they're a blast. Your son's a blast at 16. My kids are all in their 30s now, and so they get a little less, uh, they get a little more serious on you. But the point is, is um, of course, how many Christmases? Um, many, but the ones I remember the most are with my brothers and sisters as little kids wanting uh, the Johnny Quest gun wanting the Fred Flintstone projector, wanting uh, uh, the marbles or the pea shooter or all that stuff, or Pokey and Gumby, all them toys. And I had 11 brothers and sisters, and it was a ball, you guys. And those must have been some pretty big Christmases for all the Nords. Yeah, to get and together. we did it in a three-bedroom house. Wow. Oh, how, yeah. how, many, how many did you have per bedroom? Well, we had a bedroom downstairs that technically I didn't count. Oh, okay. But um, we shacked up on two-by-four beds down there. The boys were down there, and the girls got to stay upstairs. So, um, yeah, we were. it was action nonstop. What it was was the best memories actually to me of Christmas is watching the movie The Robe. The Robe? The Ten Commandments. Oh, okay. Ben-Hur. All of them movies they would have on TV. And my mom would get us root beer floats. And when you got brothers and sisters and you don't have to lock your doors back then, life was just good and it was so much fun and if you ever get a chance watch the movie the robe and it's very moving it's very christmas well you know what it's that time of year i i, I think the world is a nicer place a better place i think the worst thing about christmas is that it comes to an end i miss the lights i, I miss the music i miss oh. like i said i think oh. people's Demeanor in general is just a little nicer around Christmas time. Oh, oh for sure And on the 26th, everybody goes hate, back to being an yeah, asshole. Yeah. I'm like you now. I you hate when it goes away. Yeah. When it's over and people are taking the lights down, it kind of bums you out. You know? And then you know you get three months of cold until baseball season yeah, starts. Yeah, right. You know? Then you got to wait until the Twins play. I got Twins. You got to put the twins over, brother. That's yeah, right. we got the twins and uh, uh, Joel Maurer. Uh, anyways, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, hey, you got the Vikings, d despite of them breaking my heart for 62 years, um, the Vikings uh, uh, are still my team. Um, uh, New England Patriots, second. You like the Patriots. What do you about the Patriots do you like? I just love how ass-kicking good they were. You know what I like is they get guys like Chris Hogan, who was a lacrosse player that never played football. And he runs like the wind. He ran a 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, 40. And here's Chris Hogan just being a heck of a wide receiver, and he was a lacrosse player. But if you watch lacrosse, you'll realize it's a tough game. It's a violent game, and it's tough. You can't be no pansy. Was that a cue, John? Uh, yeah, Chris Hogan was, uh, I don't ever think he was all pro, but he was close. And anybody that watched him realized what an athlete he was. He was kind of like the Adam Thielen who plays for the Vikings. Now, Adam Thielen, Thielen 
came from a Division Three college, Mankato State in Minnesota. Nobody gave him a shot. He didn't. Nobody wanted him. Nobody cared about him. And he just outworked everybody. He's not super fast, but he runs perfect routes, and he's got unbelievable hands. That's why he made the team. That's why he signed a big contract a couple of years ago. Remember the name Adam Thielen for the Vikings. I think Bill Belichick might have been a good booker in professional wrestling where he can take some of these unknown talents <laughs> and make superstars out of them. I, I agree, Dan. I agree. I think Belichick <laughs> just is, he, he'd be the Vince McMahon of, of wrestling. He might even be a little smarter, you know? Yeah. Vince, uh, yeah, Vince is smart, but I don't know if he's smart as Bill Belichick. Very strategic. I, I believe his family was involved in the military, and he's one of the few football guys. And I didn't know this was a thing, but I guess a lot of football people kind of, you know, stick their nose up in the air towards baseball. But Belichick admires the strategy in baseball, from what I've been told. Oh, so well, that maybe just that has something to do with that it. That just shows you how smart Belichick is. Yeah. Is he don't limit his thinking to just this. He goes, I'm going to pick a little bit out of baseball, how they strategically do stuff. I'm going to pick a little bit out of basketball. I'm going to pick a little bit out of football. Even the military. And, yeah. And, yeah, and the military is huge because um, I'm real big on uh, have, you know, driving by all them white crosses uh, that you see of, of all the guys buried from World War II that stopped Adolf Hitler and Japan. By the way, we'd be talking German right now. And I got no qualms against the Germans. I love them. They need help. Back then, we helped them after the war, and now they're doing great. But they had a maniac, a killer, Adolf Hitler, and we had to stop them, just like we had to stop Japan. And the heroes involved are incredible. Do you know 20,000 guys died at Iwo, Iwo Jima? 20,000 of our boys out of high school died. When I was in high school, and got out of high school. I was worried about kegs and beer and girls. They weren't. They had to go right into the military and go fight on the front lines. So thank God for our freedom. Don't you agree? 110%. 110%. So we do some great work with the Wounded Warriors Project. And, do you? Uh, for our live events, we have some of the families of the troops come out, and so we we try and do what we can. You know, we're not the size of WWE, no, obviously. No, obviously but, we but can't. But what we can do on a small scale, we try and do. That's what it's all about. I like I like that, Dan. About you, you do, and I really mean that. I see you doing this stuff, or I hear about it, and I say, hey, he's he's trying, he's digging in. Sometimes he he he, he hits a steel wall. But he don't Many quit times. digging. <laughs> he don't quit digging, and we need you to keep going, Dan. And and I promise you, I will show up and help anytime I can. I don't know if I'm worth anything, but I'll show no, up. No, you're worth help. something. I'm going to tell you, the fans are going to continue to love more and more what we produce. Um, you know, it's nice to hear that from you. And, you know, I think w one thing that's always bothered me is that so many people look down upon what we do in our genre when there's so much good that's done. Not there just so in, much not, not WWE's community relations, which is, you know, I think a lot of it is sincere, a lot of it is PC. You know, I mean, they, sure. wanna, they need to put that corporate hype out there that they do those and types they, of and things. And the bottom line, this is about having fun. Right. You know, this is about having fun, and that's what we're doing right now. And if you want to have fun, keep with us. Keep with, every Thursday night. Throwback Thursday. Thursday night. Throwback Thursdays, baby. Nighttime. Late at night. Late at night. There we go. Once and, the, I, and I love it. I'm telling you. This is a riot to me. 
Well, you know what, John? I, I don't know what you're going to think now that you've said that, but some of the fans, you know, maybe we can turn this episode where the holidays are here, and it, it can be kind of sad for a lot of people. They may be alone. They may yeah. not have families. Yeah. Um, we got a couple of questions about, I guess, things that people have read online yeah. about some hard times that you faced, John, in recent years. Uh, you know, in a perfect time, we're getting, Don't time. Be shy. we're getting time cue from the back. Uh, right now, we're going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we're going to talk more uh, about the human side of I'm the off. berserker John Nord. Stand by. Tea time out. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the berserker John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. At Night of Champions 2020, Tribal Chief Roman Reigns successfully defended the WWE Universal Championship against his cousin, Jey Uso, in a must-see battle. Here is your chance to own a piece of Roman Reigns moments before battle on this beautiful limited edition autographed 11 by 14 poster direct from friends at WWE. It's number 19 of only 50 made. Includes WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Suitable for framing and matting, you'll also also receive a bonus Legends autographed 8x10 photo in an on-air shout-out on Wrestling Insiders as our thanks for helping keep wrestling legends working. Get this ultra-rare Roman Reigns autograph poster now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursday, our new series here in the Boston Wrestling Sports family with hopefully a member of the family joining us in 2021 for the very first time. The Berserker John Nord, we've been having a blast thus far. Our episode last week got such great rave reviews in the premiere, and this week we talked a little about a Nord Christmas. Uh, and now again, I guess, you know, we're, yeah. the internet, it's hard to keep a secret nowadays. Um, you know, well, things, things went wrong. Things get out there, things and you, get can, out there. you can lay it out there on me. And you can sometimes correct things that may be inaccurate, which well, I like, too. I, I can, but uh, go ahead. Any questions, well, lay it out there. One of the biggest stars of the 1980s and the early 1990s. Yeah. How did things start to go wrong for John Lloyd? Well, how did they go wrong? How did they start to go wrong? How was did it, they start to go wrong? Yeah, and was it well, leaving the wrestling I'll tell business you this. full time? I'll tell you was this. It? I had car lots in my family all the time. So I can tell you this. I've never been fired from wrestling. Never. Vince never fired me. Vern never fired me. Bill Watts never fired me. Don Owens never fired me. Fritz Von Erich never fired me. And I worked for all of them. Okay? I never got fired once. But I left them all because I knew I could make more money selling cars. Really? Now selling you cars. You actually sold cars yourself? For my dad's okay. car lot. Okay. I see, I if you look, that. you guys look up Nord Motor Company, John Nord Commercial, you'll see what I'm saying. Okay, so I, uh, I'll tell you what I made. I made 142,000 bucks two years in a row. That's just an example. But the reason I want to tell you that is I'm staying home with my kids, my family. 
I don't have to fly on, I don't have to be gone for two weeks at a time. It might be less money, but it's still pretty dang good money. Um, so the reason I guess you would say, if you want to say went wrong, I don't know if those are the right words, but I'll tell you this, two things. One, I left, I never got fired. Two, and this is a biggie that a lot of guys don't like to talk about or can't, it hurts too much, is injury. I had nerve damage on my left tricep. I had nerve damage on my right delt. I had nerve damage on my right pec. And I went down and my body started falling apart like I just never worked out a day in my life. And that's when I, it got real bad when I was with the WCW in 1997, okay? If you notice, one of my first matches for them, I was just in the best, one of the best shapes I've ever been in. Like when I was young and playing football. Um, and then one day I was doing shrugs and something happened in my neck. And all of a sudden, this arm got an inch smaller in one day. Wow. This arm got two inches smaller in a week, then three, then they started getting a little flabbier. So next thing you know, listen, I was wearing big hooded sweatshirts to hide my body because if I didn't, guys would say, what's going on? Why aren't you working out? Well, it's called nerve damage. And if you call nerve damage, you can't fix it. If the, it's like this, if you've got an electrical box on the wall and you got a sledgehammer and you take it and you hit it as hard as you can and you hit that electrical box all the fuses and stuff are broke all right now you open up the box this one works this one don't this one's dead this one works this one don't that's how your body is You've got electrical things in your body, nerves, that makes the muscle work and feeds it and takes care of it and gets it stronger. But guess what? If it's cut, something pinching it off in the back of your neck, you're shrinking down to nothing. And there's nothing you can do about it. I was told to go to a chiropractor. So I did. I tried. It did not work. And then uh, I went to a doctor. He did cut me, and that didn't help. So injuries are just terribly traumatic. They really are. And especially when it's your job. That might be the thing why you say, when did things start to go wrong? Mm. Okay, um, to me, even when I'm like this and my, you know, left tricep, pec, this don't work, bad right knee. Uh, actually, I got two new knees and they're great. Good. Um, this and that. I still think, now this, you, you're going to think, God, what a big head. It ain't a big head. I'm just. I'm just trying to tell you what's in me. And that's, could I beat Haku? Could I beat up uh, Wayne Bloom? Could I beat up uh, uh, for real on a shoot? Could I beat up, uh, 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 who was second toughest? Harley. Ha uh, Harley Race yeah. was second. He's up there. Well, as far as how the guys rank. Okay. Well, my opinion. Now, stay with me on this. I know I could beat them both up. I know I could. And if they hear me, if they hear this, they can call me at home. Okay. And I know even now, at 62 years old, 
But in my day, neither of them guys were amateur wrestlers like Brad Rankins or anything. That ain't going to make you tough. Bar fights do not make you tough. I'm 112 and old in bar fights, okay? I don't count it because they don't mean shit. What about Vaziri? Who? Cosro Vaziri. Cosro? The Sheik. He actually in this studio had some very unflattering things to say about you at one point. Let me tell you something. You know why he did? Because he, I guess you had made some remarks about him. Well, I'll uh, tell you the truth. Canada. I will tell you the truth. Okay. We were Edmonton, Edmonton, Canada. I got my bag. Okay, we're all going. Now, this is years ago when you just went through a little line to get across the border. He comes up to me and says, and everybody knows this is true, Kaz is full of shit. <laughs> Kaz, you're full of shit, and you know it. And that pisses me off. Um, Kaz, so he comes up to me, oh, John, are too bad. I put the gimmick in your bag. W what? I put the gimmick in your bag. Gimmick was a bag of pot about this big. Well, if you get busted back then in Canada with a, trying to smuggle in a bag of pot, you're going to prison. Now, do you think Taz would stick up for me? Hell no. Hell no, he wouldn't fucking weasel. I'm pissed about this. Now listen, this is the truth, and anybody will tell you it's the truth that knows that's got a head on their soul. So I took it out of the bag. I'm looking around for cameras. As far as I know, I think I've seen one, but I threw it in a planter, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I threw it in a planter. I didn't know what else to do. I was shaking. And so I threw it in. I got through. Kaz got through. Um, Kaz, we get to Edmonton Arena. And I'll never forget because Herb Brooks was there. Herb Brooks is a very famous hockey coach. Mm -hmm. He was the head coach of the Edmonton team back then. Anyways, mm -hmm. all of us Robinsdale guys went nuts. And me, Hawk, Kurt, Rude, da, da, da. Anyways, so Kaz will go and look, Oh, did John, do you have a gimmick? I says, no, I ain't got the frickin' gimmick. I threw it in the thing. You think I'm going to take it across the border for you? I says, hey, could just come here. Come here. We got to talk about this. Seriously. He goes, oh, what, 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 why you get so mad? I says, yeah, you're right, I'm mad. Boom! And I knocked that son of a bitch out. Old. You punched Vizier. I punched him out. Really? I never heard that. Yes. I never well, heard I, that. You know side. why? Because back then I just didn't care about bragging about it. It wasn't in my genes to really brag a lot about mm. shit. Because this, this is how it is. Promoters, Vince, Turner, Vern, they can get very touchy. We don't want that guy. He's trouble. Who else might he knock out? He might knock out the Vince. Right, right. He right. might knock out our star. You know, so that's always the problem. He might be trouble. Well, after he got knocked out, about 10 minutes later, he got fired. Period. And a report. That was the end of Colonel Mustafa. And that was the end of Mustafa. And, and Mustafa, I would kick his ass so fast in a fight, it would make your freaking head spin. Just trust me. If you don't believe me, you can ask Brad Rankins, who trained me. You can ask Brad Rankins anything you want if on what I'm saying, if it's true or not true. Okay? I'm, if somebody that I can't take, fine, back then. Now, different. There's going to be two different times on toughness. Back then, he wouldn't have a chance. Now, I've seen the fat son of a bitch. He's fucking nothing now. So, um, very untrue. He had nothing else to do but lie because of what he did. 
and he begged for his job back, I would too. It hurt. He had a $200,000 a year job or whatever. Oh, please, 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 John, don't. Please. So I said, no, 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 I'm not giving in. You, I could have went to prison for years, and you wouldn't have given one oot. And your career on top of it. And my career. But I ain't into sitting in by, by no four by eight cell. Right. I'm not into that. And um, he knew what he did. He knew what he did, and that's what he did, and that's the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. And if you got a problem, Mustafa, come find me and we'll do it over again. Did and he, you know what I mean. Did he ever apologize? Never seen him again because he got fired. Oh, you, you haven't seen him since? No. Real? Oh, not even like a fan I hope fest? I do <laughs> see him. Well, he's not moving. There's not a lot of moving going on oh, right well, now. Oh, well, there he's, you go. He's, uh, he's recline about Yeah, at this well, point. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be mean, mean in that respect. Well, Believe me, I'm not talking like a tough guy here. Maybe I am a little bit, but I'm telling you the truth. That could have caused a lot of trouble for you. Oh, my God. The, jail, going to prison? Jail. You, you would have went to prison. And do you think he would have went? I put it yeah. in his bag. You think he was going to I'm sorry. That? I put it in his bag. Hell no, he wouldn't have said that. So I nailed him. Listen, sometimes a guy's got a pretty good thing going for me. Mine is my right punch. I can hit really hard with my right punch. I'm not saying I can do anything else that great. I can't write that great. I don't wear a pink leotard that great. I don't cross my eyes that great. But I can punch with my right hand really good. God given me. God thanks God for the right hand. And were you worried at all with his credentials, you know, in the Olympics and the AAU? Absolutely that, zero. None. Zero. Because I'll tell you, there's a whole different thing between and there's there's one thing about tugging and not tugging. Listen, I got enough amateur wrestling to know that I could kick his ass, and it ain't just all you got to do is land a right punch in his face, and he's going down, which he went down. And it was and just one punch. It wasn't even. It a fight. was one punch, and I said, hey, "Well, come here. I got to talk about this." I wanted to get him away from the agents. The, re yeah. the thing is, is if we were with the agents, let's say there was one agent there that liked Mustafa. I yeah. don't think anybody liked him. But let's say there was one agent. Now he goes to Vince, and he says, Nord punched him. Nord's dangerous. I don't know if we should even have him in the locker room. You know? So I, I am very, very... If you wonder why... You pull back, hold back in the locker room. It's because you're worried about your job. What are you going to do? Go back to your wife and say, honey, I'm fired. You mean you were making 250000 a year and you just decided to punch this guy and not think about our family? Uh, yeah. He did say, and I don't know how you'd even react to this, that he wanted to make you humble. I don't know what that means. Well, in Iran, I guess it's a form, you know, he used to be the bodyguard for the Shah. Uh, part of their religion and their, their punishment is it's not considered a, a homosexual act if you're the one taking it as opposed to giving it. He wanted to, you, Brian Blair, Hulk Hogan, Jake Roberts, there was a select list that he wanted to make humble. He thought that was the ultimate form of revenge on what you happened mean in what Canada. what I'm thinking is he that wanted, dirty shit? He wanted to anally violate you. That is so fucked up. That is so wrong. That is so Iranian. Go back to the fucking country, Kaz. If you're going to talk like that and act that, I heard you say that once, actually. Oh, Benderova, a mega humble. Oh, yeah, ain't that real good talk. We don't do that in America here. We try to keep it clean. No, we're not clean all the time. We're human. But we don't do your filthy shit. And if I see you, you're going to go down. And, and you know I can't. There ain't much left to you. I know that. Okay? And I got, I got a lot of injuries myself. 
but I got enough to knock you out for a second time, okay? Well, Shiki Baby to me is one of those characters that I look at my injuries now and I, I put a lot of the blame on him because of his drug use. We wouldn't have been in the situation we yep. were in. We would have never been in that car crash if it wasn't for all that bullshit. Yep, yep. And oh, Dan, yeah. don't ever have him in this studio with me because it'll be ugly. No, it's been a long time since we've had him. And like I said, he... Yeah, well, he so, Sobriety, I think, hurt him an awful lot because all of his injuries... You know, he feels them now. When he was drunk and high every day. It's like injuries, exactly. Yeah, he feels Drunk it and now. high, you're just numb. Yep. Like yep. Just, and now it's like, oh, 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 because you got nothing to make you. Uh, I don't think you'd have to worry about being humble. Well, yeah, and that's just some filthy stuff. Um, you know, there's guys that can say anything they want, but I will tell you this. In a real fight, in a real fight, for whatever reason, I'm not saying I'm the toughest guy on, in, in, you know, if I went into MAA, I'd get my ass handed to me. But that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about growing up in Robbinsdale, uh, being in pro wrestling. To the pro wrestlers growing up in Robbinsdale, I never lost a fight. And, I, and that's one thing. It's it's not an ego. It's just the truth. I know when I go down someday and meet the good Lord, he might say, John, yeah, yeah, it might be a little ego there. You better stop. But I can tell you, I've never lost. I'm not, I, and I won't. Then you took Bazeri and Edmonton. I knocked him out in one punch. Easy enough. All right, wrestling fans, we got the cue in the back from John C. Manicus Riley. We'll be back with the final segment. Stand by for more Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursday with John Noor. Thank you all. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Party Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. After successful cancer surgery, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan plus three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, the Wild Berserker, and at least three more WWF icons. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive group 80s legends photos, autographs, individual photos, all before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Get your VIP packages and tickets now to secure the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College, March 26th. Tickets and Superstar Experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over BostonWrestling.com and our social media, but Leo, brother, they gotta check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. At WrestleMania 37, she defeated Asuka to become the new Raw Women's Champion. And here is your chance to own a piece of Rhea Ripley on this beautiful limited edition autographed 11 by 14 poster direct from friends at WWE. Number 50 of only 50 made includes WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Suitable for framing and matting, you'll also receive a bonus Legends autographed 8x10 photo and an on-air thank you on Wrestling Insiders as our thanks for helping keep wrestling legends working. Get this ultra-rare Rhea Ripley autograph poster now. All right, John. Well, I, on a Christmas episode, I really didn't expect to be talking about the uh, potential anal violation of you, but we never know where these stories are going to go sometimes. I mean, we go, we just go with them. One question that came into my mind as we were talking, it. again, it's not on the script. Um, you mentioned MMA, UFC. If it was around back in the day when you were a younger yeah. guy, would you have considered that instead of pro wrestling? You know what? Um, uh, 
If I was injury free, I would have considered mm. it. If you were, you're talking, let's say, 21, 22 year old John. Yeah, Hunter. yeah. I was in, when I was, I'll tell you, when I was 19, I was in Teenage Minnesota. Mm. Okay. And what's, I was what two, is, what's th that? It's a bodybuilder. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and I was 235, 65. So they were counting on me. Now, these are years ago, but they're true. They were counting on me as being like the next Lou Ferrigno. Okay. Arnold 6'2", Franco Colombo's 5'9", Frank Zane is 5'11", these bodybuilders. But the guys that are 6'5", now there's something to talk about. So I was 235. So a guy named Joe Weeder, you know, heard of him? I've heard of the name. Joe yep, yep. Weeder is on all the magazines. He sold the supplements. He became a multi-millionaire. He's a very famous Jewish guy that is just, uh, he made the bodybuilders. Arnold came overseas. The, the reason Arnold came what he came is Joe Weeder and steroids. Franco Colombo, Joe Weeder and steroids. Lou Ferrigno, Joe Weeder and steroids. So I'm sitting at Jesse Ventura's gym, and I'll talk like him. Hey, Johnny, Johnny, uh, why did you got punch that guy out at the fountain? <laughs> I said, because he took my 10-speed. He goes, if, I, if he sues me, I'm going to sue you. And I said, that's okay. Take my 10-speed. That's all I got. Nor you got problems. Oh, you knew. Anyway, you knew the governor. I grew up with the governor. Okay. My brother played football with him. Oh, really? My brother introduced him to uh, Terry. Uh, my brother used to call her Natalie. Anyways, yes, very well. I used to babysit Tyrell. His year oh, old yeah, son. I remember him by yeah. name. Okay. Me and Mac and Wayne uh, Beverly brothers. We used to watch him, and then we ran his gym. He gave me 200 bucks a week cash. I thought I hit the lottery. That was big money. Um, anyways, what was your question? Uh, ju I didn't know that, uh, how, that when I think about your career paths and his career paths, that you would have come across each other all that much. Yeah. Other than being Minnesota guys. Yeah, I never wrestled, uh, Jesse. Um, uh, he kind of had his big run, and then he sued Vince for all the tapes. Yeah. Uh, and all that, and I think he won about eight hundred grand. He did, yeah, he did. Um, he did all right. Yeah, he did good, and good for him because he should have got. Paid. If he was entitled to it, he if was he's entitled, entitled to it. To it he should have got paid. But um, uh, Jesse's stories, uh, there, I can tell you, um, a true story. I'm outside trying to move a refrigerator in his garage, and I look up at his wife, and she's in the. Uh, bay window of the house watching us and he starts his bullshit um hey johnny i can put a wrestling move on you and eat an apple at the same time and have you not get up why eat the apple i said really and i'm 19 now i'm in the best shape of my life i mean i got no injuries i'm ripped and and uh, Jesse puts it on me, this, that. And he, I said, it's good. Is it tight? Is it good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Wayne, Beverly Brothers. I says, Wayne, you say go. One, two, three, go. I busted out of it. I picked him up, and I slammed him on the ground. And I looked up at the picture window with Terry, his wife, and she went just like this. And she walked away. <laughs> and he got up, his hair was sticking straight up. He got up, and his hair in his face was just beat red and, and said something like, you know, well, I don't know if I had it on there right, Johnny. And uh, it was just so bogus. But see, he's, all, he's full of shit on all that, just like, when he, when he was in high school, even swimming, I talked to guys that I ran into that swam against them, and he said he was the biggest smack talker there ever was in swimming. Um, and uh, 
an old guy, and I know guys that got invited to the inauguration for the governor, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I wasn't invited, and uh, uh, I know guys that got invited, and uh, he's just, uh, all, all I can say is, and Wayne Bloom of the Beverly Brothers one time got in a fight with him at, a, at the gym. Oh, really? Yeah. What happened and, there? And, uh, and uh, uh, Wayne said something. And Wayne, when Wayne, see, see everybody's got a two to five year gap when they're the toughest. Mm -hmm. Okay? You lose it either way. Somehow. Injuries, whatever. You just lose it. But Wayne had it at two to five, just like I, I had a two to five year gap. Wayne had a two to five year gap. He hit, and during Ventura, uh, Wayne said something about her being a whore or something. Who was a whore? Ventura's wife. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and Carrie. And she took her shoe off, her high heel. And you got to remember, we're all by incline, squat machines, bench presses, dumbbells. Everybody's drunk as hell, not just kind of drunk, really drunk. And she takes her uh, uh, shoe and starts hitting Wayne, and Wayne went hit her, he just kept like this. And then here comes Ventura, and Ventura's going to hit Wayne, and Wayne hit him. And he staggered back. And he didn't go down, but he staggered back. And then Wayne went towards him and hit him again. And then he went down and he goes, let's go. He wasn't bleeding or nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. He just got punched, but I think his face went. <sighs> swelled up. Swelled up. Yeah. yeah, swelled up. So he just left the party. He ain't going to beat up nobody, Ventura. There's guys that are fighters and there's guys that are not Fighters. I mean fighters, fighters. Guys that will hit you hard in the face. I mean, one guy that um, I'll tell you that is not a friend of mine is Johnny Ace. Um, why is John that? Laurinaitis. And he should be because I knew him from Joe. He's Joe's younger brother. Right, right. Another basketball player. Division three, just like Kevin Nash, another basketball player with two left feet. Just like Scott Hall, another basketball player with two left feet. Same thing, all three of them got two left feet and they played basketball. How tough do you think they're going to be? Not very tough. But the reason I brought up John Laurinaitis and, uh, me and me and Brad Rankins ran into him at uh, uh, Planet Hollywood in uh, Tokyo. And he's talking like this. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah. Well, all we can do, you know, I just got, I got my shoulder and it's sore. And me and Rankins go, hey, Ace, why are you, what's the deal? You got, you got like something in your throat or you got, you know, maybe something wrong with it? Why are you doing, oh, no, I know, I know, it's just, uh, maybe you can cut the shit on the hard voice shit, you know? You think the voice is a work? The what? Yeah, of course it's a work. Really? Anybody can talk like this. It's a work. Smart now, Dan. I'll tell you this. Dan, I've, smart now. I've always had great interactions with the man, but I never suspected uh, he's, him. He's super personable. Yeah. Super. But I'll tell you something. What he did to me in the ring in Tokyo, okay? He had a partner. I forgot who it was. I had a partner. I forgot who it was. We're going at it, and he somehow did something to, in the ring where it pissed me off, where he didn't, where he tried just not going along and having things go smooth and having the finish go through. Then at the end, I took a chair and I hit that son of a buck so hard in the back of the head. He'll confirm this. He was bleeding like a stuffed pig. And I'm waiting on the bus. And he comes walking in and he goes, thanks a lot. I go, what happened to the voice? 
You he, knocked the voice out of him. Yeah, the boy, I said, well, I guess I cleared it up. No, I did say that. And he goes, well, then he went to that. And then he went, <laughs> he goes, well, he goes, look, I says, guilty. I well, hit you, I'm sorry. It sounds like... I guilty, the reason is I said guilty, because I didn't want the Japanese to be mad at me and say, you're done with the tour. You, you hit him right. in the head. Do you follow me on right, that Right, 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 right. It can be very touchy. So, and he added some ins over there, even with yeah. the, uh, the Baba family, I've heard. Oh, yeah, he, you know. Mrs. Baba. We'd, we'd go before the, before the matches. Now, this is in 94. I did nine months for Baba in 94. Mm -hmm. and I was with Ace every time. Well, Ace would 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 be, would practice in the ring before before uh, the uh, show, and we'd go there early, and and Ace would do a bump or something, went back, and then Mrs. Baba and Baba would be sitting in the stands all by themselves, nobody else, because it hadn't started yet, and Ace would look up to her and go, "Good, was that good?" I'm a suck ass. Is that good? Because I'm the biggest suck ass in the whole world. Anyways. Well, he went from Mrs. Bob to Mrs. Bella, I guess, in his. Uh... Yeah, no, he, he, he's. 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 Uh, we're done. Oh, he, all right. Well, the, the time continues to fly by, but finish that story. Listen, so he ended up. Uh, we ended up the year not being friends. All I can tell you is the people he screwed over, Barry Darso. Another guy that screwed over that lived with Barry Darso was Nikita Kola. How did he screw over Barry out of curiosity? Both slept on his uh, bed in his apartment in Charlotte mm -hmm. and never gave him a dollar or a dime. Johnny A slept on Barry's bed and Never gave him a dollar or a dime. And you know what I mean, Ace. You screwed Darso. Scotty Simpson, I graduated with you from high school. I love you like a brother. But guess what you did? You did the same thing Ace did. And you asked Barry Darso next time he's here, and he will tell you, Dan, this is not bullshit. All the stuff I'm telling is going to be known as the truth. It's the truth right now. I got no reason to lie or make up this shit. Dan, I'm telling you, Barry Darso, you know as well as I know, is not a liar. No, no not at all. He's, he has character and integrity. He he's has a total good integrity. He's not a liar. He's got nothing to good to say about me, but good to say about me. And I have nothing good to say about Barry Darso. Barry Darso is a great football player. He played at Northern Iowa. He could run like the wind. He was just a great athlete. But my point being is both these guys screwed Barry over. And not just more than one month, hmm. like six months. Wow. So when am I going to get my money? Uh, and you know Barry. Uh, well, get it to me when you can. Get it to me when you can. Um, yeah, Good you, can have, you can have that steak, but... Uh, you got to buy me the next one. Nothing ever came Barry's way. You can call Barry Darso on the line right now, right now live, and ask him if you don't believe me. Oh, I believe you. The one thing I've noticed uh, about you and some of the different people that we've had here in the studio is that you know what ruins it for the guys? You can tell every story as honestly and as well as you remember it as possible. But once you bullshit that one time, it takes away the believability and the plausibility don't of everything it, else don't you say. It, yep. Don't it? Don't it? That's why I like having you. It's refreshing. Well, I'm just saying, it just, I got no reason to lie. But I, do, I am glad to, to tell the stories. Um, I'm not out to rip anybody's character, but it is what it is. And if you um, can say I'm sorry and be a man and repent and just say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have did it, but I did it. I've had to do it in my life. You've had to do it in your life. Sure. They're going to have to do it. So man up, Ace. Man up, Simpson. Man up, Nash. Man up, 
Scott Hall. Man up, you guys. All you uh, uh, Division Three basketball players with two left feet. Scott Hall couldn't knock over a Girl Scout carrying a pan of brownies. Kevin Nash couldn't knock over a Girl Scout carrying a pan of brownies. And you know what their problem was? Was in that, in that, during Turner in 97, 98, when they were with the NWO, they treated all the boys like crap, okay? And then it all blew up. They were both making 22 grand a week. Now it all blew up. Now the chickens come home to roost, boys. That's the way it works in my life. So Nash, Hall, I seen you, Nash, at the last signing. And I was ready to take your fucking table and tip it over on you. And don't think I won't. So I would be careful not to be on the same signings I'm on. Especially you, Scott you, Hall. You had that many issues with the two of them? I don't like either of them because all they did was treat the boys like crap. Mm -hmm. Me and Scott Hall got into it a little bit. I was just joking. I said something like, yeah, geez, I was with Scott's wife two nights ago. And I was just laughing, joking. And he took it so personal. And I was totally joking. And he says, what? You want to go? Hey, you wanna... <laughs> hey, man, you want to go? You want to go? And I'm like, you mean outside? I said, yeah, I'll go outside. Hey, man, be careful what you say. I says, I'll say anything I want. Fuck you. Go to your fucking kiss ass. Eric. And that's another guy, Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff, um, when I first met him, he was working for Vern Gagne. He held up his bowling trophy that was three inches high. Did you see my bowling trophy? Did you see my karate trophy? My karate trophy was two inches high. <laughs> and I said, God, that's really great. <laughs> How did you achieve such fame? That's wonderful, Eric. And then he got snaky. But I'll say one thing about Eric. I got to give him kudos to him. He signed me for 150 a year. Me and Darso went up to the CNN Tower in Atlanta and both signed for 150 each a year. Here How many was, years did you here, Huh? How many years? Two. Two. Here was the heat. Here was, this was a big heat, Dan. Wayne Bloom, who we were, had to get in. You know, you, we got to get our buddies in. Mm-hmm. And Wayne um, was super close to both of us. Um, him and Darso set the two-man world record deadlift. Um, uh, but me and Wayne, I know him, Wayne, I played football with him for a year. Anyways, Wayne's super close to me. Well, what I'm trying to get to quick as I can here is where was I? Where was I? Oh, you were um, at CNN Towers signing the deals. Yeah, Bischoff, what about Wayne? Trophies. Oh, Wayne, Wayne and Bischoff. Wayne and Bischoff. So Bischoff kept, kept avoiding Wayne. He kept doing it. And Wayne did nothing but treat him good in the AWA. He told him he was a great guy, great announcer, helped him out on announcing told him to do this, that, because Wayne could do a pretty good promo. Helped him all he could, and he wouldn't, all he did was avoid him. Finally, Wayne brought his kid down to the uh, Minneapolis Target Center. And he brought his son with him for the, for the, what well, well, would you call that? To make it smooth, may help. Help me, I got my son with mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing against Wayne, but that's what happened. Wayne's going to probably be mad at me for saying that. But he brought his son down there to, to try to get this deal. And what happened was Bischoff came up to me and said, listen, John, the reason I don't want to sign Wayne is... He sues everybody. Oh. Okay? 
Now, with that being said, I said, come on, Eric, please, just, just try, just give him something. It don't got to be a lot. So he ended up signing Wayne for 85 grand a year, okay? And Wayne was so pissed. <laughs> because it's his ego, you know. He was just pissed. I'd go to Wayne. Wayne, what are you getting? 85. I'm getting 150. You know. <laughs> well, hopefully you didn't tell him. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did tell him. But, but I was just joking about all the fuckers. Oh, he would be mad. Excuse my language. Anyways, that was a story with Eric Bischoff. And Eric Bischoff, by the way, has this tendency to talk with John Nord's uh, demons, John Nord, um, yeah, I love to drink and get messed up and get high. Okay, I loved it. Okay, who didn't back then? But the bottom line was, Eric, I was getting hurt. My nerve damage was falling off my body. He had plans for a big push. I wrestled the Barbarian on, 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 uh, on Turner one night. I could barely lift him because I had no strength in my body. Mm -hmm. You know, if I would have got on the steroids, it would have helped me a lot, but they were testing for him. And they actually had a woman doctor put your goon nuts up inside yourself and feel them and shit. And a woman doctor, freaky. But anyways, sorry to say that, but listen, the bottom line was, was Wayne signed for 85. Bischoff, as far as I'm concerned, he got with Nash and Hall and totally screwed up their head. One more thing I got to say is Bill Goldberg is another weasel. He never went to camp. Bischoff gave him 80-some wins in a row. Bill Goldberg was a damn good football player. But a fighter and a wrestler, absolutely not. He would get his ass kicked. I'd like to see him in wrestling camp. And here's the thing, Dan. Here's what I'll close with. You know, you want to know who's tough? You want to know who's tough? See who comes down to the wrestling camp and works out with the guys and, and turns on the steam. And let's see who's really tough, okay? instead of doing what the promoter says to do, okay? I noticed Bill Goldberg never came down there. Kevin Nash never came down there. Scott Hall never came down there. You know who I did see down there? Kurt Henning, Mike Hegstrand, me, Brad Rankins, on and on. But those other guys like that were too much of a pussy. And then... On top of it, I see Goldberg on the frickin' uh, YouTube rooting on his son, how you got to be just as 100%. You got to go for it in wrestling. Bill, it's a work. It's a work. You got 80-some wins because the promoter had the guys do that for you. It was given to you. You didn't take anything. So lighten up, Goldberg. You're another guy that ain't tough, but had a hell of a good... You are, I, Bill, you're a good football player. Great. I'm going to give you that all the way. Congratulations. Wrestler, fighter, you're nothing. All right, wrestling fans, you heard it from John Nord. We'll be back to wrap up the show. Stand by. Ah, Sia, why hello, I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know, you want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic, and I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard king. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as 
You know? <laughs> Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Here's your chance to own a piece of history from the 2020 WWE Draft. On the second night, October the 12th, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss unleashed hell on Andrade and Zelina Vega. This limited edition 11 by 14 collector's poster is number 26 of only 50 made, personally signed by both The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, direct from friends at WWE. Comes with Certificate of Authenticity hologram on the poster itself, suitable for framing. You'll also receive a bonus autographed mystery photo and an on-air shout out as our thanks to you. Get this ultra rare autograph fiend and Alexa Bliss poster now. Well, uh, our Christmas themed episode certainly took a few twists and turns, John. But again, that's what you can only expect here on Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday. Merry when Christmas. We, we go back to the good old days, throw back then, throw a few stories down. I certainly wasn't expecting to go the WCW route, but I'm sure we'll have uh, many more discussions about your time there as the series goes on. But again, as we run out of time this week, we're a couple of days away. From the big holiday itself, like Frosty the Snowman used to say, <laughs> I'll say goodbye, but don't you cry. I'll be back again someday. And in John's case, I love that. That'll be next Thursday night. For you and yours, have a very merry, merry happy, Christmas, merry Christmas, very merry Christmas. And we we'll love you, Hugo. And we'll see you before the new year. Good. We night. love y'all. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now to Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Get the best seats in the house now at bostonwrestling.com. The World Wrestling Federation had over 22,000 live at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in New York, New York, Monday, February the 15th, 1982. In the opening contest, Johnny Rods drew Davey O'Hannon. WWF Tag Team Champions Mr. Fuji and Mr. Saito and Captain Lou Albano beat Pat Patterson, Tony Guerrero, and Rick Martel in a 3 out of 5 falls match. Jesse the Body Ventura victorious over S.D. Jones. WWF World Champion Bob Backlund retained the title over Adrian Adonis in a Texas death match with Polish power Ivan Putski as the guest referee. Pierre Martel defeated Larry Sharp. Steve Travis with the win over Charlie Fulton. Rick McGraw beat Jose Estrada. WWF Intercontinental Champion Pedro Morales retained the title over Greg the Hammer Valentine in a brass knuckles alley fight with Ivan Putski as the guest ref. And Mr. USA, Tony Atlas battled Killer Khan to a curfew draw. If you were at MSG Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday. I'm Dan Marotti, along with my new partner in crime, John Nord. Very happy as we wind down 2021 to have you part of our extended family. I'm grateful for that. Oh, I'm grateful to be here, and I'm grateful for the fans that are listening right now, you guys. I hope you enjoy it. I really do. Well, we want to keep continuing, continuing again. If you're watching the premiere on Thursday night with us, you can leave messages as you're watching in the premiere chat, or if you're not watching live in the description box below. Of course, Super Chats are always appreciated, and we'd like to, again, hopefully we're going to be having John with us again in a few weeks, maybe set up another one of those live cyber autograph signings so we can get a picture and interact with the man live. I know we had so much fun when we did it a couple of weeks ago right here in the studio yes. leading up to the... Paul Bear a Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. So Paul Bear, God bless his God heart. God bless him. We miss him. But I tell you this, I hope you in the, you know, the Nord family, even though it was kind of a difficult yep. year because of your dad, we hope yep. you had a nice Christmas. We did. We did. It was wonderful. And it was it, wonderful. And now that it is December 30th and we're just a couple of days away from another big one. Yeah. Any, any New Year's resolutions in the world? New, of how, how, well, how about you? Anything? Come on now. I got a couple. Do you? Yeah. Would you like to name them? I would like to 
have things be in a better place with uh, Linda Marotti so things are easier with the kids, okay. being able to navigate my interactions yep. with them. Yep. Uh, interesting person that came into my world of late uh, that's into tarot and things like that. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you believe in that sort of things, but they sure. made some very interesting calls in my world that I hope are true. I'd like to see yes, a live I've heard event. about that. When we go back to the 80s, Saturday night, April the 16th, two blocks away at Memorial Hall, nice. we want to see a packed venue with you, Jake the Snake, Demolition, and all the other greats oh, coming in. Oh, man, uh, it will be. I want to see these talk it show series continue to grow. So my big thing is, and I know Marty always gets pissed, yeah. is that I like to use the phrase, let's keep wrestling legends working. I he like says, that. He goes, oh, man, no. Why you would he us, care about that? You're trying to make us all sound like we're poor and destitute. I yeah, said, well, you know Marty, not you're every, taking it too personal. Not everybody's getting a, you know, a not six figure legends contract yeah. from Vince. Now, you're taking it way too personal. Thank you. Thank way. you, John. That's the one thing. Matter of fact, ain't that a good year's resolution? Is don't take stuff personal. That's a good one. I like Most that. Most people one too. don't mean it personal. They're just being people. Well, and. and Go ahead. My, no, Marty's entitled to his opinion. I just yeah, disagree absolutely, with him. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I love Marty. I can tell you times we've been, oh, my God, I won't even want to tell you about the times that we're well, doing. Well, you know, we're why not crazy. tell Marty's story? Because Thursday night used to be Marty's night until we ran into a couple of the, quote, unquote, technical difficulties. <laughs> but how about a fun Marty story on his night? Well, first of all, I want to tell you my resolution. Oh, oh, my sorry, resolution is this. Be here with us every week. As long I will, my resolution is never lie to defame or what's that word I'm looking at? Anybody's character. I don't want to hurt anybody's character, anything. I don't think I have, but I want to stay on top of it. I want to keep uh, just telling the truth. I do not want to rip people apart like they're no good. That. That one I, I wanna, I wanna stick to. Now the Marty story. Marty, well, of course you heard about the, you know, so-called murder in the river, which happened on here on the show. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, I heard, and it never happened, right? Um, now you say it doesn't. It didn't happen. Th that the never happened. River? It never happened. Why do you say it never happened, John? Because I'm, because I, I'm going to come back with re my reason why. But I want you to go ahead. The reason why it didn't happen. Whoop. Number one. Sorry, Bruno. The police are not that dumb. Mm -hmm. Number two, Marty is the type of guy to want to get everybody talking. That's it's, true. it's born inside of wrestlers. Like, what can I say that makes the whole wrestling world talk? What could it be? Let me see. Um, I climbed up uh, Mount Shasta and sat there and had a 12-pack in my underwear. Anything like that. But Marty chose to say something that they could never prove and that he could never get in trouble for because it didn't happen. So bring the police on. It never happened. I know, I just, if you know Marty, you know it didn't happen. And I know him, and I know that it, it, it didn't happen because it's the perfect thing to say because it's not the truth. They could never prove it. On and on and on. It happened what back in think? the early 70s, Yep, as he claimed. Uh, for those fans that may have missed what went on in the summer of 2020 here in this fine studio, Marty had alleged that, you know, there was a, a man that attempted to violate him when he tried to buy weed from him. It is, I think, 14 years old. Right. And his only way to try and stop the uh, attack was yeah. to use a brick on the guy's head, and he just yeah. continued to use it until the man needed to be rolled into the Chattahoochee River. And this is obviously the pre-internet days in the 70s and so on. And of course. And again, how do you prove it? I don't know. Uh, I know it got a lot of attention in all of the, the New York well, it's newspapers what he and TMZ. Dan. And we had Inside Edition calling this TV studio. 
Did you? Um, we, we sure did. Well, you did, you did. Then it worked exactly what he wanted. But here is why. Two reasons. One thing about Marty is, and like you said, he does like to get people talking. But, you know, I think there is, almost like we had discussed before, he has always gone with that phrase, the first time you tell complete nut of bullshit, everybody's going to suspect everything you say with bullshit. Yeah. Second reason I give it a grain of truth, or I believe there may be truth okay. to it, okay. aside from private conversations with him, is that, uh, I don't know if it would be, a call, I, we can talk off here on who it was, but someone that I consider a very dear friend and a very honest person within the industry said to me, WrestleMania week, we were talking, you know, it had a chance to catch up. Yeah. He said, the reason I believe that to be true is because back in WWF in 1996, he told me the same story. 25, 24 years earlier. Okay. So, maybe it didn't happen exactly the way he described. Maybe he changed some parts around. I don't know. Possible, I might be wrong. I, I might be wrong. I'll say and this. You know, I that, does, that does help that it might be true. But here's the thing. It's working the way he wanted it to work. Absolutely. Let me tell you, law enforcement is so unbelievably detailed, and they are like hounds that will keep going till they find the truth and get the guy. Very few people can kill a guy in the 1970s and get away with it. If the guy, got, if the guy was in the river and they found uh, that he was missing and they looked for him, they would have found it. Guaranteed. Now, Marty, I'm telling you right now, um, there's nothing wrong with coming clean. Or there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't care what you guys said, I did it. But then... No, I don't think he wants to go to jail. But then I don't think he wants to go to jail. <laughs> okay? So here's the deal, Marty. The reason I don't think it's true, again, it's a perfect thing to say. I've said stuff 20 years ago that I, I, that I say now. It's the truth, but I say it. I hardly ever tell anybody about um, maybe some girl I'm with, you know, that she's just like, you know, butt ugly. Um, and I'm embarrassed I was with her that night. And God bless her heart, don't mean anything anyways. And then 20 years later, I still tell people that I was with her. Well, that's very doable. So... I don't think it's a subject really worth going on because it just is, uh, I, I don't give it any credibility. Well, I don't. I, if you're in, I forget even the name of the city, but rural Georgia, with what I imagine a limited resources as it is to begin with, yeah. how much time are you going to dedicate to a missing potential pedophile from the early 70s? I'll say this, if the story is true, I think Marty did the world a favor because I don't think that probably would have been the first time the man ever tried to attack a kid, and it probably wouldn't have been the last time the man tried no, to attack a kid. No. So good riddance with them floating down the river if it is true. Well, that is very. I I concur. I I totally agree with you. I just I just think from being in trouble myself and knowing some policemen that are, were actually in my wedding. Oh. Um, they don't miss much. Yeah. They don't miss much. They're going to get what happened then. Not in a year from then. Not in five years. Not in ten years. And then 30 years after you tell them, no, they're going to get them then. And that didn't happen. That's why I don't think it's true. So I think in your I think in his, he's, it's just happening the way he wants it to happen is there's people talking about it. You think there's enough intel now in 2021 to figure out something even that old from, you're talking almost 50 years ago now. No, I don't. I think it's probably all disintegrated if yeah. it did happen. But, I mean, it's all just, just it's in, you know, river, 
That's why people put stuff in the river and the ocean. Because the, the, <laughs> most of the time, the law... They'd have to do a lot of looking. they, they got to do a lot of looking, especially in that damn ocean. The river, the river that he supposedly used it in is not that big. Do you know the Chattahoochee? No, but oh. it's not that big um, is what I heard. Oh, okay. Okay, so with that feeling that it's not that big, here's the point is they would have got on it then. You think a guy is missing and they're not going to look right there and then and keep looking till they find it? They don't just go, the guy's missing. Oh, give me a call when you find them. <laughs> no, it don't work that way. No. All right, wrestling fans, you heard it from the horse's mouth. The man that knows Marty very, very well, like we got to know him on Thursday nights with Potty with Marty. Right now, we're going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we're going to dive into the world of John Nord in the World Wrestling Federation. Stand by. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the Berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the Berserker, John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but... We're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling, and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon, but we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty, but, but our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out. The Undisputed Era kicked ass and took no prisoners in WWE NXT. Now you can own this limited edition collector's autographed art print personally signed by Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. Also signed by the original artist Rob Schamberg, a one of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible for your collection now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday. I'm Dan Marotti along with your host, the Berserker. The most, John Nord, the Berserker, Nord the Barbarian. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to his humble abode. Thursday yeah. nights for now are going to be the night of Nord. Yes, sir. All Thank right. You. The nostalgia, it is big in 2021. It could be bigger in 2022 for all we know. I think it is. There's so many fans that are disgruntled by quote unquote sports entertainment that is on TV nowadays, they crave the wrestling they knew and loved. I love it. I love it. I know you're I feel the same way as the fans. Do you ever watch the product anymore? The wrestling? Yeah. Not a lot. Not a lot. Because um, I know Wayne Bloom's son he's is not Von well Wagner. Yeah. So he's getting a push. That's why I watch it. To watch him and see how he's doing, and kudos to him. Um, yeah, they're going to give him a push. Now, that's funny. He follows us on Twitter. Maybe he'll come across these talk shows. Um, yeah, he, well, there, here's the thing. Wayne and his son's name, his real name is Cal. Cal. Yeah. Okay? Both of them are really scared to go on any talk shows or on any kind of, show at all or statements or what they think or quotes or anything 
because they're afraid that Vince is going to hear it and get mad and fire him. Right. Which is not the case. I've been in arguments with Wayne and say, Wayne, these guys want you. You can pick up some cash and you're worried about you saying something that would affect Cal, that would affect Vince. It don't work like that, dude. Come on. <laughs> well, like I said, even Cal, if he's on Twitter, maybe he'll come across our, a link to one of our interviews that he could enjoy. Maybe, but I know they're both scared as hell. No, they they're won't just, do their own. They're though, just right, scared right. As, as, as can be. And when, if Wayne's listening right now, Wayne, I love you like a brother. But listen, there's nothing to be scared of, man. Nothing. All right, well. 1991, the big year where it all began for you with WWF. Take us back to the WWF Superstars television taping. January the 7th, John Nord, as John Nord, defeats Pat Rose with a pile driver. Take us back to that moment in time. What's going what on in your world? What year was that? That was January 7th of 91. Um, in the WWF? Yes, your first TV taping with them. Um, uh, take us back to that. I was billed as the Viking. No, in this match you were just John Nord. It was a dark match. It wasn't used. It was a dark match? Yes. Wow. Um, I, now, was this more of a tryout? Was it? Did no, you, no, I signed. You had already I was signed. got okay. locked in. Yeah, I was, I was got locked in. Um, I had a lot of steam behind me anyways. was uh, uh, Kurt Henning, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rick Rude, even if Rick wasn't working. Um, yeah, he was hit, just about Hawk, done as you finished up. Hawk. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Hawk. And they all say, and you get Kurt and Hawk saying, uh, take care of them. Um, then you know you're in. So with that being the case, um, I do remember a little bit the dark match. But because it was a dark match, I almost just put it out of my mind mm -hmm. going, um, it's just a dark man. It's just Pat, Pat Rose, and it don't mean nothing. But that is where it started now that I remember. You're right. Boy, you guys remember everything. And your finisher you used that night before you would go on to the more famous berserker finisher we'll talk about. Uh, uh, as John Nord that night, you did the, uh, the pile driver. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know. I think they just said uh, go over, do anything you want. You know? Did you think Pile Driver would have been a good finish for the Berserker as a regular? No, I tell no. you what, what okay. would have been good for me was the full Nelson because my body, I knew my body was getting touchy. Mm -hmm. I had already pounded on it on football and, and, and college and on and on, but not super bad. Some guys uh, are just fortunate to have really good bodies and they stay all glued together good and everything and they're fortunate and other guys get hurt real easy and I was one of them guys I wished I would have used the full Nelson which Bill Watts had me using for a little while and that was good because it don't beat your body easy, up. yeah but going to the uh, so the next month or whatever, Dan, um, I, I I went as the Viking. Right. Well, we're going to get there. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, it, it, I don't know. Would Billy Jack Haynes and Hercules have been upset if you went the route of the full Nelson? Because Herc was Good still question. there when you were Good there. Question. Billy Jack was Good gone. Good question. But, yeah. um, I guess I didn't watch it enough <laughs> to, to, really, know, yeah. to really yeah. know. Um, if they would have came up to me and said, um, and I know Herc real well. I know yeah. Billy just a little bit. Uh, I know Herc real well, and Herc ain't going to hurt nobody. Uh, Billy's tough, tough. Billy Haynes is tough. Um, anyways, uh, I don't know if they would have, but that would have been my choice. However, it wasn't up to me. It wasn't my right. decision. Um, but here, here I here I was, um, just trying to. Uh, just, I was just doing what they were saying. Right. Me, the main thing was I was getting paid. I was at a job. My wife was, 
grateful they come up. Titan Sports, those checks. Right in the mailbox, Titan yeah, Sports. Nothing and wrong that, with that. Yeah. Uh, and, so how did it come to be? Who reached out to who? Did uh, you, know, you mentioned uh, Barry and Joe and, uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, Hawk and Mr. Perfect. Barry, Hawk, and... And Mr. Perfect. They work. went to the office and said, this is a guy worth investing in? And yeah, and actually back in 86, mm -hmm. uh, you can, and you can verify this with Brad Rangins. Um, Hulk called Brad Rangins and said, uh, I want to work with him. Uh, I want to work with uh, John Nord. Um, I heard he's a good guy and he's a big son of a gun and and that's when I was in shape, 86, and, and he called Brad wanting, and uh, I just stayed with Vern. I just didn't even think. I said, well, why do I want to go out to New York? It just didn't realize in my brain how big New York was and how much money was out there. It was astronomical. I just didn't know it. If you had a big run with Hogan, those house shows sometimes, you're talking six, eight, ten grand a night. Well, Kurt Henning uh, had a heck of a run with him in 89. 89 into 90, yeah. Yep. And I sold him two expeditions, brand new. Did you? Yeah, I was selling, I was selling Ford. And I to sold him two expeditions, brand new each. And Kurt had terrible credit. His credit was so bad, he'd need a co-signer to pay cash. You really? Know, that bad? It, it was bad. But anyways, he wrote on the application what he made mm -hmm. on the run of Hogan. And in one year, he made 385. Wow. So that's a big year. And Kurt, is, he's like me. We've never been able to manage our money. Never, never. We just can't do it. We, we've tried and tried and tried, but we get drunk and we do the bull tabs. And we do a little gambling, and we lose this, and we come home with nothing, but we still got money in the bank, and we, it just it goes round and round. But, so that's, that was that. And that's the truth, and that's verified. Call Brad Rangan. You know what I find? Call him right now. You know what I find interesting? You mentioned you know, Kurt with the money. Um, I, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but we had Larry Henning and Irene for his very last appearance before he passed away. And Irene had told me that, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar, his son got involved in wrestling, yeah. Joe. Yeah. Um, and almost the polar opposite. What him and his wife did was, they lived off of the money she made in, I think, the medical field. And everything that Joe made, Curtis Axel and WWE, uh, they put that away and they saved. So maybe they saw what the dad did. Saved for who? For themselves. You mean for Curtis Axel or for Irene and Larry? No, 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 no. Curtis Axel saved it for, him, for himself and his family. Oh, I they see. just yeah. never spent the money. They were very smart with the money. Very smart. Yeah. But see, um, Joe, Kurt's son, mm -hmm. um, which I have a good story. We were going up to Mille Lacs Lake, a big lake in Minnesota. We drove up there and meet Kurt and, and Joe was, I think, seven. And it was just a little funny deal. And, and we go in, walking in this uh, little uh, restaurant with, you know, fish up there in the lake right there. We walk in there and um, the guy across the bar goes to Kirk, he goes, I know you. And Kirk goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, I can't think of your name. He goes, are you a good guy or a bad guy? And Kirk goes, I'm a great guy. And little Joe just laughed. He thought, and then I heard him tell the story at the Hall of Fame when uh, Kirk got inducted. And I just thought it was really cute, you know. Are you a good guy or a bad guy? I'm a great guy. So, typical Kurt Henning. Well, I, I never got to know him, but Irene and Larry, I thought, were class people. Oh, I got to know them through the college. Oh, college. Larry. When I, oh, when we got caught stealing that beer, oh, my <laughs> God. See, Larry was a different guy then. You know, he was at his prime. The guy was just a grizzly bear of a man. Oh, my God. Um, but, yeah, uh, 
uh, next step, what? What, what, what next do you got on your sheet? Well, okay, uh, who reached out to who? Uh, did you hear from someone particular in the office to set things up for you to come in for the yeah, TV show? Yeah, Pat Patterson. Okay. Pat Patterson called me up and said, hey, come on in. So I flew in, Pat got me in a room and said, I, good, good, how are you? I'm doing really good, and I was. He goes, well, he goes, I heard sometimes, you know, um, <laughs> they tell you to take a left and you take a right. I said, yep, yep, that's true. I said, but that's over. I've learned in life that um, I just don't do that anymore. And I was super polite. And uh, uh, then Vince came in, just said hi quick, wasn't much. You know, Vince don't hang around for any length of time for hardly anybody. Right. And then, and I think Rene Lugay, uh, Goulet was there. But I knew I had gotten the job just by the way they acted. And they said, oh, I know what they said. They go, you got to go to our costume uh, department next. What do you feel like in the ring, they said. I said, I feel just wild. You know, okay, okay. So I'm sure they got together and said, hey, Let's make him a Viking, you know. He's from Minnesota. He grows curly long hair, and, and he's wild and this and that. And so that was set as a Viking. I didn't want to wear the tunic. I didn't felt like I was wearing a fucking dress, you know. Yeah. I didn't like that, but I had to do it. Now there's another thing. You do what your promoters tell you to do. I don't walk in there and say I'm not wearing it. I don't even got I don't even got my first paycheck yet, you know. So obey your promoters first of all. So I did. I went with it. I took it off. And anyways, I uh, uh, started with the Viking. Okay. So the Viking uh, did a couple matches as that, and I liked the name the Viking. Well, they couldn't do it. A guy had it trademarked. Oh. And believe it or not, the guy that had it trademarked was working in Japan as the Viking. So it was really a weird deal. So, yeah, so, um, matter of fact... Um, Did you know that first night when you worked as John Nord that you were going to metamorphosize into the, the Viking? at future TV tapings, or was it just kind of an idea, a sketch on a piece of paper at that point? Um, I think it was just a sketch on a piece of paper. Okay. It wasn't a for sure deal. Nothing was. Mm -hmm. Nothing's a for sure deal right. until you're in that ring right. doing it. Um, speaking of the tunic, you know, the thing I didn't want to wear um, was... Uh, one thing that they got mad at me about that the little story is uh, the, the Undertaker, I, I slammed him, I hit him with the sword, 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 shield, hit him, hit him, hit him. He went down, I took the uh, sword and I went to stab it in the, you went to stab him. Well, he moved pretty early. So they had to dub that a little bit because he moved really soon. and Or I jabbed it really late where it didn't look like it was going to, you know, like it was dangerous. But anyways, it stuck in there. Um, did this, that, that. Then we went outside. I pulled the mat back. I slammed them. I pile-drived them. And then uh, uh, afterwards, I took my two-neck off and threw it on his chest, if you see it on the tape. Mm -hmm. And then I walked down the aisle. And I got in the back of the locker room. Now here's a lesson on how to listen to your promoter. I got in the back of the locker room, and here comes Pat Patterson. He said, John, what the fuck did you take the tunic off for? And throw it on him. I said, I don't know. So, you know, I was trying to look as good as I could. Like I just kicked his ass, 
you know. Um, don't do that. Do what we say, okay? Just don't take the ball and run yourself and go your own way. I said, yeah, thanks, Pat. No, that's good. That's good advice. It is. Because I like this job of yes. 250 a year. Yeah. So I never did it again. Um, me, and, me and him went around the horn. In other words, we went city to city to city to city to oh, city. I, those are stories I can't wait to hear about, especially with our friend Mr. Percy Pringle, Paul Bear involved once we hit 92. Yes. Uh, funny enough, night after you debuted uh, in the dark matches, John Nord, Another uh, youngster, well, probably right around your age, uh, War Eagle Chris Chavis, who went on to become Tatanka a little bit in the future. Any memories of a young Tatanka at that point? Breaking yeah. In right around the same time as you. Yeah, Tatanka was, um, although uh, I, I know I had a lot more matches under my belt than him. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, Tatanka was a good guy. I never knew him that good. He got along with everybody. Um, um, and uh, I know him, too. He had a hard time running around me doing his war dance. He didn't necessarily like doing that. But Tatanka, he didn't like the war dance. Not that much. I think, I think it kind of bothered him. But after a while, I think he started getting into it. And, and uh, the bottom line is office told them to do it. You better do it if yeah. you want to keep your job. But Tatanka, yeah, um, a harmless guy, totally wants to get along with everybody. Don't got a mean bone in his body. Yeah, he was with us last year, as a matter of fact, well, here yeah. in the studio for the uh, Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. We had some great interviews with him that the fans... Yeah. Love to, love to have him back here in the future. Don't have a mean bone in his body. I love him. Yeah, his kids are really into athletics now down in, uh, outside of Tampa. And are they? He's living the good life. Yeah, I ah, believe he's still uh, a, an official WWE legend. He has one of those contracts with them where he's an ambassador yeah. of sorts. So he's doing good for himself. Yeah, yeah. I signed a legend deal. I don't know if it's the same as his. But well, he gets the check in the mail every two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. One of the good ones. That's a really there's every one that, two. There's one that comes four times a year if you hit the fifty dollar threshold, and then there's the legends one that comes every two weeks. Now that is really strange to me. I I would have never guessed that on Tatanka would have got that, but good for him. What you know, good for him. Here's what I can tell you. Bring, talking about that subject, the berserker is like a band in Australia or something. Oh, really? There's another yeah, Berserker? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. And there's a Berserker this and a Viking that, and there's a lot of offshoots of the name. I don't know. I don't follow it. Um, I'm not sitting there on uh, YouTube or wherever else and looking and seeing what's on, but what had happened was... Uh, uh, I had talked to the office, uh, the payroll guy, uh, Rob, somebody with a long name. Um, Rob, good, nice guy, talked to him for years. I says, hey, what's going on on, uh, on my legend? He says, oh, you got that paid off. So I says, oh, good. So it was 10 grand, you know, which they give it to you, and then you got to pay it off. Right. So I got it paid off. And... What I was getting, my checks went to 10 times as much as what they were. The, the royalty checks. You the mean. royalty checks. Because they were producing the more content with you. Well, I, I don't know what it was, but I, 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 you would be kind of dumb not to think that flat, that berserker name, finally might have paid off. Yeah, right. Is my opinion. Yeah. I might be wrong. I don't know. Um, but between the band being the berserker and this Viking deal and it being an actual pretty decent uh, action figure as far as look. It got yeah, it was a nice good figure. Reviews, yeah. Yeah. Got good reviews. My checks went up 10 times the amount. And I'm like, what? 
you know, and it was really good because I needed the money. Obviously, we all do. And uh, if you don't need the money, you're lying. Unless you're Marty Gennetti, I guess. Yeah, unless you're Jimmy Jack Gennetti, I call him. Jimmy Jack Gennetti. Jimmy Jack Gennetti. Go to the river. Keep looking. <laughs> See if you can find it. <laughs> go to the river. Just go to the river. And when you find it, come back. You started as the Viking at the first set of TV tapings after the Royal Rumble. Did you have any expectations as far as what they were going to do with you? Babyface, heel, what? anyone you were going to work with in particular? In what? Uh, as the Viking, once you debuted with that gimmick. Did I have any uh, feelings of who I was going to work with? Did they give you any idea what they wanted to do with you? No, no. But can I Whoops. tell you? This is okay. Can That's I right. tell you this? Can I tell you? You can tell me whatever you want, John. Okay, speaking of that, this is what happened between me and Undertaker. It was Toledo, Ohio. I was told that Pat Patterson came up to me and said, we brought uh, Mark into the room and asked him, who can you have a good match with? Because he wasn't having good matches. He was with a lot of big stiffs at that He wasn't point. having good matches, especially in Japan. Japan basically booed him out of there. Yeah. If that slow stuff don't work. And he wasn't having good matches. Hey, who can you have a good match with? And he says, John Nord. And they says, really? Yep, okay. We'll tell him, hey, you're getting a big push tonight. You're going to go with The Undertaker. Okay, and I had a dirty piss. So now my piss is dirty, and I had to scream out, I got to go home, my wife is pregnant. I guess she might have it. So I had to leave. And you know what they said? That's all right. When you come back, we'll do it. So two well, days. You know, let's save that for the, once we get to 92. Okay. You know what I mean? I, yeah. Again, so, I sometimes it. it's like setting, well, you were bringing up, setting the scene. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. well, you, you're but right. In 91, when you first came in as Viking, did, did they give you any idea of who they might want to have you work with or what they wanted you to do? Or did you have any expectations before you started on the road full time? Because they build you up on TV before they put you on no, the house show. Uh, no, they actually, I don't think they knew for sure. I think they wanted to see. I think they were a little nervous. Like, some guys didn't want to work with me. Oh, really? I think so just a little bit. Because I was maybe a little stiff. Mm -hmm. um, the first, one of the first guys they put me with was Coco Beware. Oh, we're going to go through the whole list, yeah? And what are your memories of the Birdman? He's a son of a bitch. Why was he a son of a bitch? Because he freaking wouldn't work. He, he, he was in the ring. He wanted to do everything his way. He was difficult to work he with. He was difficult. He was working with, he was like working with that freaking, that big uh, staircase there made out of wood there. You know, it was stiff and you didn't want to do it. And I think he had a little bit of syndrome that you ain't going to get over on me. You know? He had that, and listen, I'm not the first guy to say Coco Beware was tough to work with. Mm. Everybody said it. Ask him. Everybody said it. So he was just tough to work with. So he'd be coming back, and he'd never come over to the locker room and confront me. All he would do is bitch in the other locker room, the, you know, in the baby face you. locker room. Yeah. yeah. Just bitch about that. And uh, so that that was my first guy there. And then I went to... Uh, well, we can hold off on that. We got the cue from the back from John C. Manicus Riley. Uh, I like to break things down very detailed because you know what? Sometimes... You we, are detailed. We never may get a chance to tell these stories again, John. You we are know. detailed. You, you never like, know. I like it that... It's a throwback Thursday. Thorough. All right, well... You're it's a, thoroughly... Thorough. It's a thorough Thursday.
It's a thorough throwback Thursday. It's thoroughly throwback Thursday. And Thorough. wrestling fans, we want you to stay with us right now. We're going to take a brief timeout. We'll be back with more with John Nord after this brief timeout. Thank y'all. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Party Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. After successful cancer surgery, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan plus three-time WWE Tag Team Champion Zaxxon Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, the Wild Berserker, and at least three more WWF icons. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive group 80s legends photos, autographs, individual photos, all before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Get your VIP packages and tickets now to secure the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College, March 26th. Tickets and Superstar Experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this limited edition WWE NXT Johnny Gargano personally autographed. 11 by 14 comic book style poster, a great addition to the collection of any Johnny Wrestling or NXT fan direct from WWE. Also comes with a mystery autographed 8 by 10 photo and an on-air shout out from WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside a Throwback Thursday. We're really throwing them back. John C. Manicus Riley really said, throwback. we're talking too long, John. What's going we are. on here, brother? I don't know. All I do is talk. I can't stop. Wrestling fans, you got to let us know what you think in the premiere chat on Thursday night or in the description box below. You can help us bring you a lot more John Nord with a lot more super chats or join in the Patreon, hitting the eBay store and all that good stuff. But before we go, John, uh... Big yes, question. You talked about Coco. Uh, it, before we even started getting into some of the various opponents you worked with on the loop, which we're going to start with yeah. next week as we kick off a new year in our new series on episode four. But what did you think of the I trip? think next year is going to be awesome. I do. Well, you're going to be here, so it will be. Thank you. Was, I will be here. Was the schedule as intense as you expected it to be? Uh, working for the WWF? Yeah. It was more intense than what I ever dreamed. And can you tell us how and why? Well, I started out after Coco going to uh, England, Belfast, London, on and on and on and on. 
and it was, I, if you've ever been to England, you know the food is just junk. <laughs> Their steaks look like, you know, shoe leather. Oh, really? You know, they do. They got shitty food. Hey, you want to stick with the best food in the world? Stay in the U.S., trust me. Um, how, how many days per month would you say you had off at that point? I'll tell you what, in 92, not 91, because I started late. Yeah. But 92, I wrestled 285 nights. Holy shit. 285. 285. I would seem like, I went like 37 nights in a row once. Wow. It was crazy. And you know who else was with me on that? Because we kept going with Bret Hart. Bret wrestled everything, which I got it. Don't let me forget to tell you the Bret Hart. Story. Oh, we got bread in the notes coming up in some yeah. of the uh, oh, the, you? the episodes in the very near future for the fans that want a little bread hot teas. But yeah. did as many as 285 nights. Obviously, well, in I did 285, but they introduced um, it before they put you on the house show loop. They want to introduce the character at a few TVs, so you weren't on the road full time right off the bat. They kind of exactly they, they build the character up so it has value on those house shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. It I don't was know tough. I mean, were. when you went home, Mrs. Nord must have been like, who's this guy? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I tell you what. Um, how, old she, you, how old were your kids at that point? Um, they were, uh, uh, they were uh, three, four, five, six. Oh, that must have been tough. Uh, you, eh? Yeah, it, it was, but I'll tell you what. My wife was a flight attendant for 40 years. Really? Okay. And guess what? They offered her for Northwest. Mm-hmm. Now it's Delta. They offered year leaves, and you could come back. Oh, okay. So my wife stayed home a year at a time, four years, and uh, homeschooled the kids. Really? And it was just wonderful. Um, the checks in the mail, money ain't everything, but it was paying the bills. It took the comfort. It, it made everything comfortable. Uh, John wasn't out doing something stupid, which I've done. Um, I was out working, and she was getting the paychecks. And my kids were, you know, I talked to them a lot on the phone and told them I love them. Everything was was good. No, uh, you must have been going through me. a lot of quarters on those pay phones. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like 400 bucks a month. Oh, my well, God. Remember that $400? A month long distance? Hey, I tell you, imagine if there were those unlimited cell phone plans back then. <laughs> Think of the money you guys would have saved. Oh my God, they should refund us. No kidding, that. right? That's or, or even never mind those hotel room phones. That's terrible. All right. So, well, where are we at? Well, right now, unfortunately, John C. Manicus Riley says we're about ready to wrap up the show. Stand by. We'll be right back. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wrestling fans around the corner and around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. MJ in the house. Future WWE Hall of Famer, mind you. Let me tell you this. I'm he... not in there yet? No, not yet. Oh, okay. But you will be. Yeah, you, I will. you know, Sean wants to be the first three times. Three timer, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it, let me tell you, you enjoy the in-studio shoot interviews four times a week. It isn't cheap to put these productions together, folks. We need you. No, because you got to pay me. Okay. <laughs> Coronavirus has killed the nightlife in a lot of ways. We are night owls, Marty and I, but that's a different story for a different time. One way you can help is to check 
out the great merchandise we have in the Boston Wrestling eBay store. It is perfect for any wrestling man cave or any collection. That's right. Check it out. Arguably the greatest professional wrestler of all time. Get this limited edition collector's autograph print personally signed by two-time WWE Hall of Famer Nature Boy Ric Flair inscribed 16 times for each of his recognized world championship reigns. One of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE. Also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome Ric Flair collectible for your wrestling collection now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome yeah. back to the second to last episode of our entire Wrestling Insider series for 2021. What a year it has been to think that we were going to expand virtually to seven days a week unbelievable. is unbelievable on our end. I don't think I ever expected Tony Atlas to be gone. I didn't think the party with Marty, with Marty Jannetty, was going to go on a quote-unquote little hiatus. I didn't yeah. know we'd start an ECW he's, theme he's show. He's never looking for three guys. He's still, he's still down in the chair. Maybe he's that's ever. who he is. It could be like a reality show. Hey, we could start a band, River Bottom Nightmare Band. <laughs> Chasing the Chattahoochee. Yeah. But for all of you fans, I know New Year's Eve is a busy night. You may not be with us tomorrow night for John Cena Sr.'s Fabulous Fridays that's at 11 awesome. p.m. But if you are with us on New Year's Eve, that's we're going to awesome. have a little bit of fun, maybe a little bit of the Fabo Vino, a that's little bit of the Bubba. Awesome. But I, I hope you guys know how extremely grateful and appreciative I am for those diehard fans that are with us so often, the regular fans yep. that are with us, especially our great moderators, Slick Rick B, who put so many different ideas as far as what we could do with YouTube into my head that I wasn't even aware of. I don't claim to be the smartest man in the world. Phil has been a great help. Vaughn has been a great help. I mean, the list could go on and on. Yeah. Tania, how I could, could I forget about Tania? And hopefully we're going to make more great friends and continue to build this bad boy up. Um, we love doing the in-studio talk shows, and even more so if you're yep. in the Northeast. We humbly, not like what the Sheik wanted to humbly. do to him, him, humbly invite you to be with us when we go back to the 80s, Saturday night, April the 16th, two, two blocks down the road at Memorial Hall here in Melrose, Massachusetts. Yes, For John Norton, I'm Dan Marotti. Not only will we see you next time, We'll see you next year. You and yours, be happy, be healthy, be safe. Don't drink and drive. See you next Thursday night. Good God night. bless you. Wrestling fans, hope you're enjoying this all-day Berserker Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday Marathon. Please like, share, and subscribe. Share, share, share on social media so the millions of fans that don't know we exist can join the fun with our nightly talk show shoot interviews, especially the crown jewel, the premiere of Throwback Thursdays each and every Thursday night after Impact Wrestling at 10 p.m. As noted, the Berserker will be back for three big days of tapings beginning this Sunday, February the 20th, with a live cyber autograph signing uh, both Sunday and Monday, as a matter of fact. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com. You can pre-order your autographed 8x10 and 11x14s now, including an exclusive print you can't get anywhere else. As noted, uh, with Marty Gennetti's program, we can't produce these shows without your help. This is a cool way to interact with the Berserker live uh, and help keep wrestling legends working. With that said, folks, I've taken up enough of your time. A little break, a little breather. Now, back to the Berserker. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to yet another Wrestling Insiders welcome. Throwback Thursday. Dan Marotti along with you, a new Thursday night host with the most, the Berserker, John Noor. John, I hope you had a happy New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Oh, uh, I did. You know, I laid low New Year's Eve because it ain't what it used to be. You know, yeah. who gets hammered on New Year's Eve unless you're a young man and then you do it. But those young man deals are over. But yes, I did thank you. Uh, New Year's Day was awesome. A bunch of food. How about yours? Did you invite your neighbor in the wheelchair over? I did. How did you know really? about that? And how was she? Was she all right? Or? She was not. She was, well, she always is. She's <laughs> not effing this, effing that. She's nuts. But yeah, I did. I tried to be above my self, my faults, and invite her over, which I did. And not pat myself on the back. It kind of sucked. But I did it. All right. Well, it just shows you are a good man with a good heart. Well, and the taller of the I two. I hope the good Lord thinks I am. I hope so. 
All right. Well, uh, new year, new series. If you are uh, new to uh, Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursdays, I know it may come as a culture shock. We were only a couple of episodes in. Marty Janetti was our Thursday night host. Season one has come to an end. You know, almost like when those shows uh, climax in the spring and they take the summer off. But I'm sure we're going to be seeing Marty again before it's all said and done. As he yeah. has many more stories to share with us. But so excited about the feedback we've been getting from John. If you're watching during the premiere on Thursday nights at 10, please type your thoughts in the premiere chat or after the fact in the description box below as we continue to note those super chats they go a long way we got to keep the lights on we got to keep the studio folk happy yes, we got to bring john in those airplanes and hotels they ain't free so a lot of work goes into making these productions happy but we're really yeah. happy that in just a few weeks we're planning on having you back live thank you thank well, you i i plan on coming and and uh just don't let me down kid hey isn't that a song Something like that. Something like that. I don't know. We have, like you have that. to talk to the, the Quincy Rustani, our music aficionado. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Could have been uh, Max Steiner or somebody. But I'll throw another funny one. Now that we're back into the world of the World Wrestling Federation, that was 1991. Uh, a man that we talked about quite a bit already in these first few episodes debuted uh, at the TV tapings just a couple of weeks after you. Uh, the man right here in the center of this table. Percy Pringle III, who you probably knew as a blonde-haired guy down in Texas, uh, he had quite the makeover when he came to the WWF uh, as taking Brother Love's place as the yeah. manager of The Undertaker. Your, well, your first thought when you saw him dressed up looking like that. I am so glad because I couldn't remember when he started. I thought he was always with The Undertaker. He wasn't. Well, in WWF he was. But, I mean, in, in, when he was in world class in Florida, yeah. when he had the blonde hair, he was with Rick Rude and he Matt Ford Rude. and Percy Buzz Pringle. Sawyer. And, yeah. yeah. But in WWF, he started with Undertaker, and they were together for six years before he turned on him. Wow. So they had a great run. Yeah, yeah they had a great run. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Did Where are we going? Him? Did you know him in Texas? Yeah, I did. Um, I worked with Texas. I'll tell you why. Frank Goodish mm -hmm. had the book in Texas, okay? And uh, we worked with a guy named Tank somebody, um, huge guy. But anyways, Brody thought he'd go, Frank was going his Red River Jack, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I remember doing an interview in Texas back then going, Kevy and Mikey Von Eric's new names are Itsy and Okay, and then all of a sudden Frank comes up to me and goes, those are the boss's sons, don't call them Itsy and Bitsy. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah, yep. It always goes, that's what you got to watch out for. So anyways, it went by pretty quick. We had a bunch of small towns, blue, blue uh, Texas and this and that. Very uneventful, very not well-paying. Um, then I got... Um, a chance for the world championship in in uh, Texas Stadium with Kevin mm -hmm. and uh, Kevin uh, and um, we had a good match and uh, 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 Kevin I think won on uh, DQ or did he pin? I don't know, but anyways. Um, there was about 10,000 people there, I think. It wasn't no 50,000, 60. Well, I'll tell you what happened is I go into the dressing room and Fritz came in and Fritz goes, well, I just wanted you to know. Shakes my hand like this, his hands all. Um, I just wanted you to know that's one of the finest matches I've ever seen. Thank wow. you, thank you. So I was supposed to get in a apartment with Lynn Denton, the grappler, who mm -hmm. is one of the greatest guys in this whole business, one of the best guys you'll ever meet, one of the most honest, one of the funnest, one of the best guys to have on here. He's got that Texas accent. He's going to get a little ahead of you. But um, 
So that night, I'm thinking, okay, should I come back here? I got family back there, and I'm making more money selling cars than my dad's lot. So I never came back. And Brody, at the same time, quit the book. Oh. And we didn't know that he quit the book, and I quit too. We didn't even know we did the same thing. So I'm at home, and I was all set up to win the the belt from Kevin. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. And uh, I didn't come back. And 10,000 people, you know what Fritz sent me in the mail for the payoff? I've heard they were pretty bad. 600 bucks. Wow. Yeah, and uh, me and Frank didn't talk for six months, maybe. And I go, God, I thought you were mad at me. He goes, brother. You know, Frank, brother, I thought you were mad at me. Because he knew what a shitty payoff I got. He was the booker. We went through all that shit for 600 bucks. That's the horse shit part about pro wrestling. You can, they don't tell you what you're going to make. You got to just take what they're going to make. Now, if you walk up to them before and say, listen, this has got to be a, a good one, a good payoff. Otherwise, I got to go. And they just might say go. See, I mean, it's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a, it's a quandrum, you know. Um, you just don't know what you're going to get. And anyways, so me and Frank ended up doing some outlaw shows, one for Windy City Promotion, one in Little Falls, Minnesota. Um, that could have been the worst match in all of history of mankind. Why is that? Because of Frank. Frank, we, got, we only made 500 bucks each. Um, we traveled from my dad's car lot three hours north uh, up in Minnesota in a small town. Um, the house was average high school, you know. And uh, uh, Frank just got kind of his attitude. Just went, oh, shit. Fuck this. Let's go home now. It's, it's too early. We haven't did nothing. <laughs> so the guy that ran the show came up in the locker room. He walked in. He says, what, what's the deal? What happened? I said, I don't know. Go ask Frank. You know, he's the ring general, which he was. Mm -hmm. He was a ring general. Of all the guys in this business, everyone, including anybody, Danny Hodge, Ric Flair, any of them, the biggest ring general, the guy that knows exactly how to put it together, the puzzle of a great match, is Frank Goodish. Really? Absolutely. He is a ring general. That's the term that wrestlers use. You know, if you, if you say the word ring general, a wrestler will look at you like, hey, you know, you know what you're talking about, you know? Anyways. Uh, why did he want the, to cut the night so short? Did he have a particular reason? I think he or? just wanted to get the hell out of there. Oh, I right. think he had stuff on his mind. I don't know if he was there, but I remember driving back, and we ended up running into a buddy of mine, and we ended up going to a pig roast on the way back in the middle of nowhere, and we got so hammered, he called me four days later, he goes, brother, I was never so sick. I can never do that again, ever. I was so, you know, hung over. And I was the same, so hung over. And it made you not want to drink ever again. Oh, my God. <laughs> and but anyway, yeah. That, yeah. Any memories, anything that stood out about Percy Pringle when you knew him back then? Percy? You know what, what I, I remember? The stories. He was, he was. He was just one of the best guys you ever met. Mm -hmm. He was top, top shelf. And matter of fact, I called him top shelf. Did you? Yeah. Um, I said, Percy, you are top shelf. Matter of fact, I'm going to call you top shelf because you are. And he was just, you don't find a better guy than him. 
He minds his own business. He's grateful as hell. Mm -hmm. he, he knows. He knew. He somehow knew he might pass away early. And he did. And it, and it was kind of eerie, but I think he knew. I'm you know what I mean? I think yeah. he kind of knew. And, and he was a very morbid individual to begin with because of his background in mortuary science. I know. Yeah. 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 See? You're right. That double ensures it. Yeah, his, his last few years were interesting because after his wife passed away, him and I would speak, even if not on the phone, you know, text to it. Uh, email really? almost every day. Really? You know? That's cool. He was such a huge help to everything we did, which is why we try and, you know, remember him and carry his, his legacy on. There's so many of that the guys. That is cool. So many of the guys that pass away, they do a video montage and then they forget about them. I don't, th I don't that want that to be him. Cool. That I want is him cool. to be remembered. Good job. Good we, job. We do what we can. I'm we do what we can. I can Kerr and Percy, I love you. Uh, did you think it was funny to see him with such a different look? I remember as a kid, just as a fan, being, wait a minute, that's Percy Pringle. And now he's got the dark hair and the dark mustache and the little... Yeah, oh, yeah, little you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. I did think he looked a little, but he, he was, he had such a look anyway yeah. that you could have painted him pink that... You weren't going to forget that face. Yeah, you know, that face is, is only a mother could love. And, <laughs> uh, and what a guy. That's the point. What a guy. All right. Well, you know what? Again, he'll always be in, he's in the opening of every one of our shows we do. So he's, he's always with us in some way, shape, or form in some spirit, which I think is nice. Uh, more early happenings when you were in the WWF. Uh, Ultimate Warrior just dropped the WWF world title to Sergeant Slaughter. Did you think, in your opinion, Warrior had what it took to be the guy for WWF? Um, no, okay. I don't. And why is that? Because he was immature. Mm -hmm. He wanted his own locker room. He, uh, uh, he wouldn't even dress with the guys. Um, he... He had been, he, he hadn't really paid that many dues. He was in Texas, and Frank Brody chopped him in the locker room when he was sitting in a chair. Just boom. And Frank goes, I wish I was working with you tonight. I would kick your ass. And what was the issue? The issue was he wasn't obeying what the promoter oh, wanted. Okay. Okay. And that's a true story. Um, and uh, so, anyways, you know, I'm not hating on Ultimate Warrior. I'm sure he was a great guy. I did not know him personally. I know him a, a little bit, in, in, uh, you know, outside the ring, not much. But the point is, is he, he wanted to do everything his way, have his own dressing room. Oh, I don't think that would look good if I did that in the ring. I think I should use this paint. And the officer said, why don't you wear a white tights? I think I should wear black. Always go in the opposite. You know, you know, you got yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all got friends that, that are like you that. say, uh, hey, the sky is blue. Not really. It's kind of gray. Oh, we're going to play that game all day. <laughs> uh, funny Marty story that he told about Warrior. He'd say when the guys would go by to shake his hands when they got to the building, he'd shake it, and then when they'd walk away, he'd go, fuck you. They'd shake it, he'd go, fuck you, shake it, go, fuck you. Marty caught on to it, and he'd sneak back and look at him as he did it. Do you ever remember him doing anything like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Was, Nobody liked the Warrior. Did he just have a miserable outlook on everything, or what was the story? John? He was so self-centered. Yeah. Here's a thing that don't fly in life, period. You got it? Listen, self-centeredness. Self-centeredness sucks. Yeah. Ted DiBiase, the warrior, the most self-centered people. And, it, it's and look brutal. And look at the trouble Ted and his family are in right now. I don't oh, know if you're familiar with that. but I, I, I heard. Dear God. Yeah, I heard. Millions of dollars. Millions. Well, you know what? 
And here's the thing, as Ted, I see a couple of his sermons, and he starts out, ha, 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 I just had to get that out of my system. No, Ted, you're doing it because you want to stay over in wrestling and involve it in the church, okay? Keep the church separate from wrestling and be humble. Not like the Sheik humble. Not like the Sheik humble. That's right. a different humble. All right, wrestling fans, right now we're going to take a brief timeout. Hopefully you'll be humble and join us after this brief timeout. Thank you. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the berserker John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside his Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. As the Demon, he became the first WWE Universal Champion at SummerSlam 2016. Here's your chance to own this limited edition collector's autographed art print personally signed by Finn Balor, one of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE, also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible for your wrestling collection now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursday again. If you're new to the series, while the uh, Wrestling Insiders party with Marty season has ended, it's a whole new series Starting out on Thursday night with the Berserker John Nord. We're having a hell Thank of a you. lot of fun here we as are. we kick off 2022. My wow. Dear, wow. 2022. I didn't even think I'd be alive this year. Well, hopefully you're going to be with us many, many years beyond this, John. Come on. Thank now, you, brother. Come on. And uh, double back at you. Thank you. Because you are you. a good man. Well, I appreciate it. I try. Serious. Good All I man. can do is try. I'm not going to be perfect, but no, nope. try. You are my, and that's why we're together because. We're two unperfect people. There you go. That's a, the only person perfect here is John C. Manicus Riley. Absolutely. Now, let me perfect. ask you this. We did. We mentioned New Year's resolutions. Would one of your resolutions be to maybe try and grow your hair out as long as his? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's a, that's a long be a shot. Yeah. Because, Literally. listen... <laughs> It's sometimes, you know, when I did have it long, I'd walk into a store and I'd and I'd walk like Sasquatch, and they people would get scared and go, "Here's your change." You think that happens to him when he goes into the store? Yeah, I do. Yeah. They'll well, give you your change, John C. <laughs> John C. If you get a chance to go through the box of the pictures that we're going to be using for the. Um, Toy drive tonight. There's a couple of, of John in there with hair kind of like yours. Yeah. But, uh, back to the World Wrestling Federation 1991. A couple of old peers of yours. I don't know if you'd consider them friends, but from back in the AWA, uh, Sergeant Slaughter and General Adnan, the former Sheik Adnan LKC, ah, ah, they were ah, taking the world by storm ah, as <laughs> the Iraqi sympathizer slash friend of Saddam Hussein and the World Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion. There Very was good. some heat Very going good. down with Slaughter and I add on at that point, do you think maybe that angle where it played into a real life war, do you think maybe they went a little too far over the top with that? You mean with Adnan versus uh, uh, Slaughter? 
No, when they put the belt on slaughter and they brought Adnan in as the manager saying they were friends with Hussein. Uh, no, I don't. You didn't? I don't. Okay. I don't because um, I believe the Americans can handle it. American mm. public, American fans, these fans, they can handle that. It got heat, though. It got in good nine, heat, and that's the It got, it got, heat. It well, got good heat. Look at the reaction they still had for tickets for WrestleMania 7. That was originally going to be in a 100,000-seat stadium, and they had to move it to a 16,000-seat arena that didn't even sell out. So I, know, I, don't know I did not good. know that. Yeah. They had it well, booked for the L.A. Memorial Coliseum, and then you, due to low ticket sales, I know some people are going to say it was a security threat. Okay, if it was such a security threat, how come they sold such few tickets that they didn't have to refund one single person? Yeah. It's not, yeah. like, they, it's not like they sold 30,000 tickets and said, shit, we're going into a 16,000-seat arena. They went from having that major stadium booked into the tiny arena with plenty of tickets still available. So I don't know how good that he I, was. I, I, I see what you're saying, and I'm starting to agree with you. Mm -hmm. I did not know all that, mm -hmm. what you just said. I didn't know that. Now I see things in a different light. Um, you might be right. I, I would say you are right. Um, the only thing is it's been years now, so maybe my thinking's yeah. a little you know, slow on that like everybody else. But Sarge, great guy, uh, Slaughter, um, great guy, and uh, uh, Adnan, uh, who just did a deal. He's 88 years old. He Is got he that lost. old? He's 88. He got lost in the airport. And he got lost everywhere he went. And he sat on the vir virtual show for Marty and... He couldn't remember nothing. He's kind of slow moving. Who am I? Oh, he's terrible. Slow he's got down. Alzheimer's. Oh. Oh, okay. it's a definite Alzheimer's deal. Marty had to go look for him. He got lost. He didn't know where he's at. He says, where am I? In Indiana? Just insane. Um, he, he had no in business leaving his place at 88 years old. He lives in where, Hawaii? In Hawaii. And what, three years ago his son committed suicide? I didn't even know that. Yeah. yeah. So that's double, triple um, trouble, and I feel terrible for him. I called him during the show. I said, this is John Nord, and he remembered me, um, which it made me feel good. good. I, I said, remember, you would never pay me trans, you know? For oh, the, he was a pro oh, when you travel trans, with Trans, yeah. Oh, you know, I you're see. You're supposed to pay so much per mile. Per mile? Yeah, like 18 cents a mile or something. And he is that yeah, he never paid. He was the cheapest son of a bitch that ever lived. But I loved him because he 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 didn't drink, he didn't do drugs, and he prayed and he prayed. He was praying to the wrong person. Yeah. Because if you don't pay pray to the right person, it don't matter. But um, yeah, I mean, he's got a story. He's got his stories, but they're not my stories. But yeah, I didn't. It's too bad about the Alzheimer's. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was terrible. I, it was just terrible, I guess. Yeah. Well, so hopefully, you know, uh, best to him and his family. Yes, uh, I agree. It's kind of a sad ending to I life agree. for someone I, that had such a big life, you know, out in the world. You know, coming from that part of the the world where he did come from. I think he wrote a book where he said he actually in real life. Knew Hussein. Well, of course he did. He told me when he was my manager, he told me that he went to high school with him. Oh, wow. And he said all the time he'd be writing on the, and he'd be sitting on the banks of the river and he'd be writing. Hmm. Yep. And, uh, and another thing that's probably in this book, he ran a show over there with George Gorianko guy named and he made a ton of money like seven hundred fifty thousand the the crowd was incredibly big he couldn't bring the money home why because there was so much i i think it i just thought number one saddam was hussein was running the country mm -hmm. and he was friendly he goes edna come on over to the capital here I want to show you something, what we do to traitors. Wow. 
had not walked down the stairs, went into this room, and they had a fire hose of water stuck up this guy, and water was coming out his eyes, his everywhere. Where was the hose, here or somewhere else? The hose was up his butt. He was being humbled by the hose. Yeah, wow. yeah, maybe that's what being humble is. So the, the there was that. But, much, wow, imagine yeah, how much but, water but, that but must that's have taken. A, that's what Adnan told me, and I believe him because Hussein was that crazy. Yeah, he was insane crazy, and that's why you know that's true. That something sounds like it came out of a horror movie. My God! Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's scary stuff. And he, I he would was, guess you know, I would have left the money there too. I've never read his book, but I'll guarantee you it's in it. I'll guarantee you. I'm not into reading these wrestlers' books, really. I read Lynn Denton's one a little bit. Um, selfishly, I read just my part. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so that's all I read. I read a little bit of Piper's book. That was actually, I thought, one of the better ones. Um, but, yeah. Are you a big reader? I go in streaks, don't you? Either I if quit. I had the time. Yeah. Usually I'm at this place Are for you? a good 10 hours a day, seven days a week. So that eats up really? a lot of the... <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> yeah, I go in streaks. I, I, I'm either reading, I, I, read the, I read corny old books that nobody else would read. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, like Man in the Gray Flannel Suit. That was a movie with Gregory Peck. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, The Tale of Two Cities, these classics, Gone yeah. with the Wind. I'm a real geek on, on and I love old movies. I can, I can rattle off the old movies. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm proud of that. But I got to be careful I don't make that an idol because I'm trying to live my best Christian life I can. There you go. And you know what? You can only learn from the mistakes that you've made, right? That's right. That's all you can do. That's the way I look at it. Hey, what don't a- drink and drive. <laughs> I'm the classic. <laughs> I'm the classic. I'm literally boom. And you'd think, you know, if you'd hear of a story with the sheik involved in a drinking and driving accident, he was the victim instead of the person behind it. Did you ever think that would <laughs> pop mm-hmm. into your brain? Right. No, Welcome I never to my drive. reality. No kidding. You'd think it'd be, he would have been the one driving the car. Right, right. Nothing against all cars. Never but, thought about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, no, that's that, very, uh, very, very Maybe true. if we're having a nice meal later, I'll yeah. share some of the anecdotes from that crazy day. But um, Sergeant Slaughter, was he someone that you got to know well at all from AWA? Or? Sarge was a good guy. We got along great. Got along great. Now, you know, here's one I've never heard of, and we'll get, we, we like to get personal on these shows, but um, Marty had made the claim that Sarge kind of climbed the ranks in the world of wrestling due to beyond his ability to be a great drill sergeant as Sergeant Slaughter, but due to a little fellatio. Did you ever hear anything like that about fellatio. Sarge? fellatio? A little fellatio. What does that mean? Oral sex. No. I've got, it came from Marty, not I. Well, one thing that, okay, here's the one thing that did freak me out a little bit about Sarge. All right. Was Sarge was really quiet and he never went out with the guys. He never invited anybody up to his cabin. He lived down in Pryor Lake. You know, he lived down where. Jimmy Rasky from Nebraska lived um, down by Prior Lake, Minnesota, and which is south of the city, 40 miles, 50 miles or something. And he never invited. He was very, very private. And anytime you hear that is part of your personality, that you're that private, it either means you're just private and don't mean nothing, or it means you. There could be a little activity weird. going on. Could be a little weird. little activity. Could it be yes. All right. Well, all right. We got the cue from a man that always has a lot of activity going on, Mr. John Z. Manicus Riley. Right now, we're going to take a brief time out, take a pit stop on the road as we continue more wrestling insiders. Throwback Thursdays. 
with John Nord. Stand by. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Party Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. After successful cancer surgery, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan plus three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition. WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, the Wild Berserker, and at least three more WWF icons take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive group 80s legends photos, autographs, individual photos, all before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Get your VIP packages and tickets now to secure the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College, March 26th. Tickets and superstar experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon, but we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty, but, but our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out. On October 28, 2020, Wrestling's Scariest Night was back with WWE NXT Halloween Havoc. This limited edition collector's autograph poster is number 12 of only 100 produced and is signed by all nine superstars featured on the poster, including Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes, Rhea Ripley, Raquel Gonzalez, and your Halloween Havoc host, Shotzi Blackheart. Comes with WWE Authentication Hologram on the back. You'll also receive an on-air thank you from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus mystery autograph photo. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursdays, Dan Marotti along with the Berserker John Nord. Uh, I believe we're on episode four already. It's unbelievable. The time is flying. Unbelievable. When we're having fun, and if you think we're having fun now, this is great. He's it, come, He's going to be with us again live. Hey, in January. can I tell you? Can I tell you the honest to God? It's the fans that I get a kick out because they come up to me and they say, you know, hey, when you were on this show, you'd said this and that. That was great. It really makes me feel good. So thank you guys. And I really mean that. That's not bullshit. Well, keep the compliments coming, folks. If you're with us during the premiere, use the premiere chat or leave your thoughts in the description box below. As always, the super chat is welcome to try and keep the great wrestling legends working. I'd love to do talk shows like this seven nights a week. I'd like to do them twice a night, seven nights a week. There's so many guys out there, so many greats that could use a helping hand that aren't getting the six figures from WWE anymore. Why not? All we can do is try, right? Don't make us out to be broke bums. No, you like mean, Marty Janetti you know, said. Don't make us all look like Don't do that. We're doing destitute, man. We got, we got Marty and Johnny Ace going at it right now. <laughs> Johnny Ace. Hey, Johnny. I don't think Johnny's going to be hurting for cash. Johnny, you think you're the godfather or what? <laughs> Johnny Corleone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just, again, just as you were entering the World Wrestling Federation in January 1991, two tenured veterans got their walking papers. Black Bart and Saba Simba, uh, better known as the man that used you as a human napkin in North Carolina, Tony Atlas. <laughs> um, Black Bart? Yeah, they, he, he... Good worker, but one of the most unathletic guys <laughs> I've ever met in my life. <laughs> He didn't really have the look other than the cowboy thing. Yeah, though. yeah. He, yeah. His hips and his ass look like, uh, <laughs> uh, look like uh, you know, uh, f two big cans of pork beans or some shit. I don't know. 
And then who else? Saba Simba. A uh, Saba Simba? Who's he? Tony Atlas. Oh, Remember, him? He was, was he Saba Simba? He was dressed as an African warrior. Was he? I guess, well, you were just kind of coming what in as that was ending. What did I do? What do you mean, wipe my ass? <laughs> oh, the muffler? Poor Saba Simba. I mean, poor, Tony never had a fighting shot with that one, no matter how much food he spat on us over the years. Tony. Give us the um, money back. Tony, just uh, would tell your story walking, okay? <laughs> And not eating, preferably. I don't need, yeah, your food flies out of your mouth. Stop the shit. And the 800 bucks, give it to me, I'll give it to him. Oh, my, well, we'll give you a finder's fee for that. Yeah. Dear Lord, no, you're right. I mean, most people, for that much to come out of their body in some office, yeah. they usually use a restroom with Tony. Yeah. It's chicken wing debris or whatever. You don't got a shit. He shits out of his mouth. <laughs> Oh, did you get a chance to see Tony at all during that brief spell in WWF or no? Tony, no. Yeah, because he was he was he was canned pretty much yeah. right after that first TV taping that you would work. Well, Tony, here's Tony. Tony's ego is just huge. And he's in his own little world in his head, thinking how great he is, and he don't think about anybody else. He, and that's true. Well, I understand what you're saying. He loves his degree. wife. I'll guarantee you that. And, and he loves his family. I ain't saying he's got a lot of love in him. I get that. But it's just so twisted. Have you ever seen the feet videos? What, are you sucking on some toes now or Being what? Being beaten by women's feet and shoes. Licking the shoes. That sounds like an addiction. I'll have, you know what, maybe if we have time, I'll call it up on the screen over the next couple of days. Because he actually wanted us to, not to stray too far from WWF 1991, but uh, Tony wanted people to understand how he has this addiction. Uh, addiction, yeah. Tony, get some help. It's not a sexual thing. There's no, he's not pleasing. They're not? Really? He's not pleasing himself as it goes on, but he like. He literally likes to have women kick the shit out of him, but the shoe, it has to be a certain kind of tennis sneaker, a certain thickness. It, it's, it's bizarre. That and then, is nothing less than bizarre. He likes to lick Dan. the shoe. That is a sex addiction. I don't give a shit. We ain't talking about putting it but in. But if, if he's not doing anything with himself, how can you call it a sexual yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, anytime you're abusing your body like that, um, I would say it's so wrong that it falls in sex, okay? You don't actually have to throw nothing in coals or suck nothing. But if you're doing that weirdest shit, what are you going to call it? Writing a novel? <laughs> but Come he, on! He doesn't even touch the foot. The foot has to have the shoe on it. Oh, you're weird. Stop it! Well, anyone, do you think it was just maybe that Tony and Black Bot were past their primes and WWF didn't need to utilize their services anymore? Or? I think that, yeah. Because Black Bot think, was done, done. Yeah, Black Bart uh, uh, looked like uh, Mel Brooks, except he weighed <laughs> 400 pounds. And then Tony, um, when you have food flying out of your mouth in the ring and guys are ducking and you're... <laughs> And you're hitting the first three rolls, it's time to go. <laughs> all right, another one of our friends here in studio. It almost sounds like we are piling it on, but in all seriousness, uh, Marty Gennetti was dealing with some tough times right when you broke in. Prior to the TV taping, I think prior to your debut, yeah. uh, the enhancement talent Chuck Austin broke his neck taking the rocket drop of the wrong way, which cost Marty uh, an awful lot of income along with WWF when really? that lawsuit was settled. I think in 1994. Would, did it seem why like, not? Why not, uh, Sean? Because Marty did the move. It was Marty's move. You, oh, you mean Sean had nothing to do with it? He, no, it was he wasn't his, touching him even. He, I don't even think he was in the ring. Oh, okay. Do you know the move I'm talking about? The rock no. drop where he would. What he does? What does he? You do? lift up the leg and the guy's head would be down like this, and then you 
Oh, yeah, 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 The yeah, guy yeah. took it almost like, I guess, a DD. I've, oh, I've, the, the footage never snapped surfaced. Snapped broke Yeah. It. He wound oh. up getting $26 million initially, but it wound up being for much, much Was less. Was there any, did he have an insurance? Marty obviously didn't make $26 million. No, no. Well, WWF had to pay for the majority of it, but Marty wow. said it still cost him a half mil. And that's that a lot sounds of money about in 91. Right. That sounds about right, but here's the thing. How can it cost Marty a half million if it's Vince's show, I'm doing what Vince McMahon tells me to do, and the WWF owns it all, so my opinion is you got to be careful with these guys. They might be lying. Marty might be lying. It might not no, have cost... That part, I don't know. It might not have cost Marty one dollar. That part you might be right about, but I know that this man got a substantial amount of money. He got a huge amount. Because within, four, I think, three or four months in 94, you had the Jesse case we spoke of, the yep. Chuck Austin case with Marty, and then Vince's steroid trial, all within a couple of right, months right. in 94. So, and I did, wanted to get a neck brace like Vince wore. I wanted to get the whole <laughs> locker room wearing it. He had to pick good timing to get the surgery. God, can you imagine wearing that damn thing around his neck at a trial? Talk about burying yourself. Vince, okay, I love you like a brother, but you shouldn't have wore that neck thing. But you got enough power behind your lawyer, so you're okay. But how was Marty doing at that time? Do you remember him being typical Marty, or was he in the dumps a little bit? Where he kind of nah, he was no? he was a good guy. Marty was a really good guy. The party didn't stop, even though Chuck Austin's party did. Yeah, but uh, uh, Marty had more fun in the AWA. Um, really? Yeah. The WWF calmed him down. Yeah, I I think so. I know in the AWA he was. I mean these girls these good-looking girls, Marty would be just, every one of them just with the, with the bedroom door open for everybody to see just pounding away and seriously good-looking. And I'm like, God, how does he do that? Well, I was married and had a beautiful wife, so I wasn't into it anyways, you know? 25 years, I never cheated on my wife. They were never berserker rats. <laughs> yeah, I know. Barbarian, man. Well, but nor anyway, the, yeah, nor the but here's rats. a, here's a uh, FYI. I pushed the wrong button, and it came up Yukon John and Flapjack Norton, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He just drank, drank 278 pancakes. God, Norton's mad every time I call him Flapjack. I go, hey, Flapjack, don't say that, you <laughs> son of a bitch. But anyways, where I was going with it was I pushed the next thing. And you got to remember, that was taped in 1990 or 91, right? Mm -hmm. 1990. And you know what's on the next thing? Full picture of a Hasbro doll, Hasbro action figure, front and back, of Yukon John. Really? Yes. Wow. My brother took pictures of it. I don't know how to get it. And I got the jeans and the boots and the mustache like I got now and curly hair. And it was Yukon John. And obviously they didn't make a damn one. <laughs> Because <laughs> they didn't think it was too good. But I'll tell you what, I sure wanted one when I seen it. That was just a month ago. Really? Oh, recently? Yeah, yeah. it was just a month ago. I went, God, I'd like to kind of have one of them because it's just so rare, you know? And uh, anyways, uh, it was, uh, bottom line was I was just shocked. Um Anyways, where were we at? Well, we where were talking we about Marty pounding in the AWA, but as we, we venture... Pounding. <laughs> you know what I mean. Pound, oh, I know what you mean by pounding. Yeah, yeah. pound. Pounding. Pound. You're going to break my back, Marty. Slow down. In February, uh, once the next set of TV tapings hit, they continued to t try to evolve what you were doing. And instead of coming out alone as the Viking, you appeared with the devious one, Hall of Famer, Mr. Fuji, memories of your ah, starting Mr. to work Fuji. with the, the devious one. Oh, Mr. 
Uji, ah, yeah. Uh, his, his, here's, here's what Fuji, I'll imitate him. He goes, you know, you know, a, a kid at school are teasing Kevin Lane and, 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 and his, last, his son's name is Lane, you know, because Lane he kept Fujiwara? Name. Yeah. No, he, yeah, he kept, the, the wife kept their names. They were twins. Oh, okay. Kelly and uh, Kevin. Mm. Anyway, so he goes, the, the kids are teasing me, teasing him at school, you know? And so I teach him sidekick, you know? Fuck him up. And I laughed so hard when he said that. <laughs> so everybody I went to around the locker room for all the, almost the whole year, I went, ah, sidekick, right? Fuck him up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it was just hilarious. It was really funny. So. Any uh, infamous Fuji ribs that you witnessed? He was known for his practical jokes. Here's one thing that was a reverse rib. Oh, really? Okay. Fuji and Darso will uh, uh, confirm this. He kept telling us about his swimming pool. He lives in Jefferson City, Tennessee. He kept telling us, yeah, I got... I got uh, I got a pool, and people come over. Lady next door, nice body. He said, I try to, you know, keep my pool nice. So one day I went over to Fuji's house. I go, well, where's the pool? And you know what he said? He goes, oh, I filled it in. There was no lines or nothing. He never <laughs> even had a pool. He never had a pool. We laughed. Bill Eady, Darso, and me laughed so hard. There was no lines, there was no nothing. And it was just like, Fuji, you don't got to say stuff like that to us. To, you know, try to, and impress you. Try to yeah. impress the boys. Are you kidding me? And then he'd always say, Kevin Lane, I want him to play for the USC. Well, first of all, he's got to get past 5'6". <laughs> right? That would be a good start. Yeah. That'd be a good start. Yeah. You know. So that was a reverse. But Fuji was always um, putting pills in people's beers. If, the, if you seen a beer and it started foaming, now this is serious stuff because of the Bill Cosby deal. He started boom, 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 and people were fucking. These are people that pissed them off, though. And his ribs were vicious, but they were mostly putting Halcyon in beer. And, uh, you know, let me tell you, I was part of a few of them, so I'm not proud of it, and I'm not pointing fingers, and I'm not holding grudges, and I'm not, and, I, and uh, Fuji, uh, God bless his soul. Um, but, yeah. You were the victim, or you helped him with the rib? Well, I never did it with him. You did it with others. I did it with one other one time. One time, all right. Well, Mr. Kurt Henning. To a fellow wrestler or a to random a stranger? Wrestler. Who was the, the victim? Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it was a girl wrestler. Oh, really? Sherry? Yes. Really? And how did you, well, I can imagine how she reacted. Well, there probably wasn't much of a reaction. Well, it was a reaction. What happened? She got naked. She started walking around the halls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry. I love Sherry, too. That's why it hurts. Well, that was a tough one. You know, I, that we, one. Me and Kurt both regretted it. We went, God, what the, what the F is wrong with us? You know? But I, we're I think young. a lot of people say that at some point when they're in wrestling. I think, what is well, wrong with us? I, yeah, where it's, right. no, it's almost normal, you know? You're right. You know, that's the sickness of wrestling. Where some people, is you get to a part where you think it's normal. In a nine-to-five job, oh, you know what? I might take an extra three minutes on my lunch break. Yeah. In yeah. wrestling, this is not normal. This is, yeah. This, not that I've ever done that, but yeah. anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, God, no. I have, I've um, never drugged anyone, but... You know, well, I, no, I, of course not. No, not many people have, but 
The point of it is, <laughs> <Not many. laughs> but the point of it is, is it makes you feel really, you know, odd, bad. It makes you feel bad. Yeah. And uh, if, uh, 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 you know, Sherry's gone, Kurt's gone, I'm still here, so by the grace of God, here I am. You're still surviving, brother. Yep, and I want to be honest. I don't want to lie. You know? Well, and he just proved it right there. That wasn't, I'm sure, the most comfortable stories to have shared, but you did. And you know what? I think the fans will respect you for it. Yeah, thanks, you guys, if you do. Thank you. He's only being honest, guys, from stories that happened decades ago. Again, we implore you to stay with us because we're going to be back after this brief timeout to wrap up the show. I ain't put nobody in the river, though. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's... Sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. Hell. <laughs> cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders in-studio shoot interviews on eBay with this brand new personally autographed WWE Royal Rumble 2021 11 by 14 poster signed by WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, his advocate Paul Heyman and Kevin Owens. Reigns and Owens battled for the Universal title in a last standing match January 31st in the Thunderdome in Tampa. This limited edition collector's poster is number 31 of only 50 produced. Comes with WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Also comes with an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus autographed 8x10 photo. Get this rare, awesome collectible for your man cave and help keep wrestling legends working now. All right, wrestling fans, another tremendous installment of Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday. Dan Marotti, John Nord. Again, folks, if you had fun tonight, even if you hated the show, leave your thoughts in the <laughs> premiere chat if you're watching live on Thursday nights or... In the description box below, we can read your comments in a later time. The Super Chats always help. It takes a lot to keep these lights on. Like we've noted, we want yes. to bring back Marty Gennetti to the studio. I know there's many of you that miss him on a weekly basis, but these throwback Thursdays with John Nord to turn it into something. And again, not only are we taping episodes during this visit, but John's going to be back later in the month of January. As WWE gears up for the Royal Rumble, we are gearing up for the Rumble known is John Nord running out of time again for the wild, unpredictable barbarian known as Nord? I'm still Dan Marotti. They haven't come up with a better name for me. We'll see you next <laughs> Thursday night. You and yours, be well. Good night from Boston. Be well. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the Berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the Berserker, John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, it's strange to feel it's a new year. I mean, are you one of those guys, John, that runs into the problem that you're right the wrong year for about a month? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I do that. I do it a couple times. Well, yeah. I do it more than that, so you're doing better yeah, than me. Yeah, I, I do do it a couple of times, and then I just rip up the paper and say, uh, you know, F that, I'm not doing nothing today. And then I go in my there room and shut the door, and I, I watch cable. There you go. And then this cable TV. To and that you. fixes the problem. And when it's cold in January in Minnesota, that's not the worst of things to have access to. That's right. And maybe we'll have you up in Minnesota, Dan. I, you know, you know, there's one thing about that man, Barry Dasso, I'll say. 
Don't you love it, him? It took me three years to hunt him down when he wanted nothing to do with wrestling. WWE had nothing. Road Warrior Animal hustled the book and I was trying to get for him. But when I finally did find him yeah. and convinced him after yeah. 17 years yeah. to talk to Bill Eady again and for them to interact with each other and do these appearances, which has led to bliss for the two of them with all the appearances they've Oh, they made, made a ton of money. Since 2007, since I got them to They reunite. made a ton of money. But you know what he said to me since all the way back then? He said, Dan, someday I'm going to take you to a Twins game. And it's, what year is it now? And I'll go with the, I'll go with We should, the, we'll all go. Well, I told, I told you, I got it. You, you, you got it. the show. No, don't worry yeah. about it. I, I believe you. We've seen it. We love those twins. Hey, uh, listen, and it's a great ballpark. That's why I Not want to Not an average. It. And everybody there loves to eat hot dogs and drink. He, he's been it. telling me since 2007, he's going to take me to a twins game in Barry. Barry, if you're watching this, now John wants to go with us. I can tell you, Darso, um, which you're probably not watching it, but maybe. We'll send him But listen, list. me and Barry grew up together. Darso, you're in my wedding. Me and you have been through more shit than anybody. And you know I love you like a brother, and you say the same thing about me. I don't even got to ask you. We are that tight. When are we going to the Twins game is what I want to know. Well, uh, when does the season start? Well, we got a couple of months at this point. It's why, January. Why don't we now. maybe shoot for opening day? Hey, it's not, well, it might be a little chilly in Minnesota. Hey, man, opening, opening day, day might be fun, though, because people are jacked. Yeah. I, I, I had a streak for a long time of about, um, about 10 years at Fenway Park in Boston. Did you? Yeah. I'll talk to Barry and I'll see what, what, what he thinks what day might work. We'll have a lot of fun. Oh, God, yes. You're a great guy. And we'll, we'll piece something together. Yeah. What a great memory, right? We will. We will. It might not be opening day, but we're going to piece it together. We'll piece it together. That's all we can do. Yeah, I don't know how far good business. You, and it's good business. From, well, I, on a night like that. It's not business. But anyway, how far are you from Minneapolis? 15 minutes from oh, the stadium. Oh, you're pretty, pretty close then. Really close. Ben, to, to, with the traffic, it's a lot further Dar away. No, Dar me and Darso are both live in the same town, about 20 minutes. Oh, do you? Yeah, Fenway I don't... Park from here is probably only about six or seven miles, but with Fenway? the traffic. Really? Yeah. God. I didn't know you were that big of a baseball fan. Oh, John. well, Fenway, I got to see the big green. Well, you know, Barry has said the same thing, so maybe I we'll have to. I got to see the big green. May, who, I'll may, tell you who was a hell of a baseball player is Barry Darcel. He was a good baseball oh, player. Oh, my God. I never tell us. He, in Babe Ruth, you know Babe Ruth? Yeah, the league. In Babe Ruth, that was the last year he played. Yeah. But Babe Ruth, he was crack them and it would just go a mile and I'm going that son of a gun how does he do that but he's that natural athlete he is well he wants he's to... he's not the killer type of guy mm -hmm. he's the nicest guy in the world but he's a natural athlete he can run he can go sideways fast he can hit a ball a mile he can throw well, he wants to see Fenway, and I want to see, is it is a target field? Is that what it's called? Oh, target field. There you go. All right, well, we're going to have to do some baseball swapping. Uh, right. We started on the last episode talking about Fuji, some ribs. Uh, professionally, how did it feel to see the Viking now uh, have a, a mouthpiece? Do you think you needed a manager? Do you think it enhanced your presentation? Hard to say. Uh, hard to say, Dan, because... Um, I, if they would have had me with the right person, mm -hmm. the right the, to work with the right guy, um, I could have cranked it up. I could have steamed it. I know I could have. I know I could have. And I think Fuji sometimes hurt me really? by banging the cane and do this, do that. Why you do that? Why you do? Fuji can be a little. You know, let me tell you, Fuji and demolition were a big, huge deal, but it didn't break their heart when he left them. If he did, I don't know. But I don't know. I would say 50-50.
Do you, th well, let me ask you this. Let me throw a couple of managers by you. Do you think maybe you would have been better off with a Jimmy Hart, Bobby Heenan, Sherry, Slick, some of the managers oh of those times? Oh, my time? God, Bobby Heenan makes you an instant star. Yeah. Bobby Heenan is one of my, he's an icon. Uh, he makes Jimmy Hart look like uh, uh, a second grader sitting in a chair. Um, he looks, makes him, and Jimmy, nothing against you, but Jimmy is very, very for Jimmy. Yeah, um, I've he heard talks. That. Yeah, yeah he, he, he talks. You know, hey, man, hey, baby, I love you, baby. He walks around with those fucking glasses and the fucking <laughs> Still. coat. I'm the coat with the fucking, you know, banjos on him. He sleeps <laughs> in the son of a bitch. You know, and he thinks he's Mr. Over, and he don't, you know, and the truth of it is, is you can't shine Bobby Heenan's shoes. You can't shine Fuji's shoes. You just got lucky, and you're a musician. I get that, but stay a musician. To me, you're to get these autograph things, and to have people actually think that they come to see your signature freaks me out. Because I don't think he can draw flies to a turd. <laughs> How do you really feel? Wow, I'm telling you. He's a, a Jimmy. Nothing, I, I mean, nothing personal. But honest to God, you walk around. And the last time I seen him, which was, which was uh, about six, eight months ago, and he didn't even say hi. Oh, really? And he, we were friends. And you know who else did say hi? Who? Or he, he did say hi and he talked to me. But he was just like, um, you know, after 30 years, you hug a guy and say, I love, how you doing, brother? And I went up to him and I did that. And I was ready to do that. And he goes, oh, hi. Yeah, uh, you know, the neighbor next to me has got a lot. And I, he won't sell it. And I'm like, Mike Rotundo. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm like, what did you just say? I ain't seen you in 30 years, and you're talking about your neighbor's lot. That's goofy. His neighbor at home down in Florida? Yes. That's kind and, of an and, he don't, yeah. and, and he don't have a smile on him. He looks really depressed. He looks really, I'm telling you, you know, so. Is he really depressed? I think he is. Yeah. Well, he did get released by WWE and his two sons, yeah. which is a little stiff, but. Yeah. Well, Mike just, you know what? Guys just end up thinking they're the shit. And they find out that here's what you find out in life. Right or wrong, everybody's replaceable. Everybody. The fault comes when you start thinking you're not replaceable. That's when you go down. That's the truth. You know it, Dan. Oh, I agree with you 110%. And that's where I think that was Rotundo's deal. Oh, did and he, he didn't seem excited to see you at all after well, 30 that, years. Well, that kind of hurt my feelings. Um, I, you know, I shouldn't take it personal, but it did hurt my feelings because I thought I was going to get this big hug like, you're the funniest son of a gun I ever traveled with. He was in my renting car, and I would be making him laugh so hard, he would almost throw up. And then I get this, my neighbor won't tell the lie. I don't know what the deal was with this neighbor in this lot, or it's going up or something, but who gives a shit? Save it. Tell your story walking. Well, hopefully he wasn't spitting food on you while this was going on. Yeah, the way I'm spitting right now, I better be a Tony Allen. Well, again, you, you're being honest. Could you have seen Slick with the Berserker? No way. No. And what uh, about a, a, a Viking version of Sherry Martell? That would have been interesting to have a female Viking with you. Maybe not Sherry, but... <laughs> yeah, Sherry, that might have worked. <laughs> Sherry might have worked. She was so scary, she might have worked. And actually, Sherry was an absolute sweetheart. 
Absolutely. I, it will always bother me that we spoke not too long before she passed about trying to set up a booking. Um, and it's just, I thought. Really? I thought what she was looking for was kind of crazy money. I know she had, a, you know, her issues at the time, and maybe that was part of it. But, you know, to hear that she's... She's just being dumb that she really don't know what the going rate is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes people have to be realistic. Well, here's the thing with Sherry was a funny thing was, we'd be doing our interviews with Vern in 1985, uh -huh. no, 86, and Sherry would bring her shower dog right mm -hmm. and you don't bring a fucking dog to interviews first of all what the fuck is wrong with you okay so anyway sorry for the effenheimers you guys anyways you bring the dog and i see henning and somebody bought a big box of rolls you know it was morning and everybody's trying to do the interview and anyways dan are you yeah, so I've to me? Been, um I've got a big box of rolls, right? I see Henning taking one at a time and giving it to the dog behind his back. <laughs> and this dog <laughs> ate like six rolls. And then about a half hour later, it started throwing up all over. And, oh, she, and Jerry's going, I don't know what's wrong with the dog. She probably thought the dog was going to die. The dog might die. I better take him to an ER. And the ER doctor goes, were you feeding them something? <laughs> Nothing, she said. <laughs> and I said, that's freaking Annie. God, he's funny. Even the poor dogs weren't safe from the, yeah. uh, the oh, ribs. Well, we for, I don't know if you ever heard about the one where Fuji cut off the, uh, the dog's head and served it. On the grill? Uh, well, yeah, on the grill. I heard yeah. that, too. I, geez, but, uh, oh, that's too brutal. That, that, <laughs> that's too brutal. That's a sadistic man. That is sadistic. That's and I was going to tell that one. As a, as a third person, but I glad I did. Tony has shared that one before. Yeah, yeah. Mid but, chicken wing. Yeah, but I got to tell you something about Tony, and you should know him by right, now. Let's hear it. He exaggerates, and he and he has a way of telling little lies in his story. He said a mad dog Vashon told him if a story is worth telling, it's worth embedgering. <laughs> And I said, do you mean embellishing? And he said, yeah, or embedgering. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> All right, Don't that fans. sound right. Yeah. We got the cue from John C. in the back. We're going to take a brief time out. We come back. We're going to have more throwback stories on Throwback Thursdays with John Nord. Stand by. Thank you for watching. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the berserker John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. MJ in the house. Future WWE Hall of Famer, mind you. Let me tell you this. I'm not in there yet. No, not yet. Okay. But you will be. Yeah, you, I will. you know Sean wants to be the first three times. Three timer, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it, let me tell you, you enjoy the in studio shoot interviews four times a week. It isn't cheap to put these productions together, folks. We need you. No, because you gotta pay me. Okay. <laughs> Coronavirus has killed the nightlife in a lot of ways. We are night owls, Marty and I, but that's a different story for a different time. One way you can help is to check out the great merchandise we have in the Boston Wrestling eBay store. It is perfect for any wrestling man cave or any collection. That's right. Check it out.
Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. At Survivor Series, it was champion versus champion as WWE champion Drew McIntyre battled Universal champion Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman. Get this 11 by 14 poster autographed by all three men. Limited edition number 42 of only 50 with authentication hologram on the back of the poster itself. Comes with a mystery autograph date by 10 photo and an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back as we continue our Tales Down Memory Lane with the Berserker John Nord here each and every Thursday night on Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursday, we get to the point where the Viking began getting managed by Mr. Fuji. Uh, we had discussed in a previous episode how the Viking kind of had uh, to change his name. How did the, the Berserker become the name? Any idea? Of uh, Vince McMahon, totally 100%. They were going with the Viking, mm -hmm. and I was standing there in Vince's office, and Vince looked up Viking and the form of a Viking. And one of the forms of Vikings are called berserkers. Oh, really? They were the worst Vikings. Mm -hmm. They were like, they would kill and rape and pillage the worst of all Vikings. So Vince liked that. He said, we're going to go with the Viking, period. And I, and I went with it. I wasn't wild about it. I still ain't. But. Now that these checks are getting bigger by some damn uh, band in Australia, whatever the cause, it's going up, up, up. So I'm grateful for that right now. And that's the truth. I'm grateful. I'm back then. I wasn't. Have you seen the Viking Raiders tag team in WWE? The what? The Viking Raiders is their name. In WWE, they're a tag team. They're really? Vikings. Yeah, you haven't seen them. Uh uh One of them was one of our guys on a. I wonder how they Boston used wrestling. Vikings. I wonder if they paid off the. I'll show you. I'll show you the action figure before we leave. Well, I was gonna say, I wonder how he got paid off because it was a hundred percent trademark, the Viking. M maybe the trademark of the copyright expired, paid, or maybe he, he but paid it off. It could be, uh, it could be what he called statute of limitations, yep. or Vince might have paid it off. Yeah. Well, he'll, you know what? I'd like to get a picture of you with that figure because I know he'd get a kick out of it. He became a fan, one of members of the team, right around the time you were there as the Berserkers. So, really? Yeah. So you get a kick out of yeah, that. Yeah, we'll do one later. But did it become difficult to travel with a Viking helmet and a sword? Now, how did that go about? It didn't bother me in the least. I was the biggest slob in the whole world. I had this old Samsonite uh, uh, suitcase, and my sword was too long, so it was sticking out of the suitcase, the, the sharp part, and everybody else, and my underwear, and my uh, pants were all wrinkled, and my Zubas were all wrinkled, and, um, you know, on and on, just uh, uh, to bring all that shit, and then the helmet had to go in there, so I would say, honestly, it kind of sucked, but it didn't bother me because I knew the money I was making, and I just didn't care. I figured I'm got to work hard anyways the rest of my life, so what the hell? And the guys, especially Henny, he would laugh at me carrying my suitcase, you know, with the sharp edge sticking out of the, <laughs> you know, not it's out of the, just out of the, cloth Samsonite, you know, and, you know, it was that maroon color, mm -hmm. and uh, God, he laughed, but yeah, it was, it, it sucked, but it didn't bother me, I, knew, I just figured I'd work hard the rest of my life, and look at the money I'm making, hell yes, I'll do it. Uh, did you ever poke anyone accidentally with the sword while you were running Never. through an airport? No, not with these coordinated hands. All right, all right. Got those Eric Bischoff ninja skills, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, his bowling <laughs> and his karate trophy. If that karate trophy would have been one inch higher, I would have shook his hand. But they were both <laughs> only two inches. Oh, that's funny. That's a true story. And Bischoff knows what I'm talking about. Bischoff, if you're listening, I'll guarantee you, 
Remember when we went in and you showed me them things? And it was a big deal. I'm poking fun at you, brother, because we all poke fun at each other. We're just all human. And you got to be Mr. Big Shot anyways with, with uh, three guys that couldn't tie their shoes and uh, played Division Nine basketball. Well, does that sound like I'm resentful? A little. Sorry. Go was on. it really three inches, though, the trophy? I think it was about two. Two. It was even smaller. It was really that, short. Huh? One was bowling and one was karate. So maybe almost like a participation award. And here's a funny, here's a funny, <laughs> here's a funny line. Roger Kent was, was uh, introducing a guy named Peter Lee. Mm -hmm. And he was a job guy, but he had the karate thing on. And Roger Kent goes, introducing Peter Lee uh, from the Orient. And he uses his abilities, and it's called karate or karate, whichever you prefer. And I remember watching that. Our whole family fell over backwards laughing. <laughs> so now, now the big thing is karate or karate, whichever you prefer. So if I call you Dan, it'd be Dan or Don, whichever you prefer. Maybe I'll start going by Don. Yeah, now, now you do the whatever Very, you prefer. Yeah, deal. whatever you prefer. Whichever you Dan prefer. Dan or Don, whatever yeah. you prefer. Percy Pringle or Percy per se Pringle. Pringle. Percy Pringle, whichever you prefer. <laughs> no, but I mean, who the joke is, is, Who's ever called karate, karate? <laughs> I mean, that's not. I've never heard of it that way. Oh, it's hilarious. I had buddies in my freaking, when I played college football, laugh at that. Well, that's a funny one. Karate or karate, whatever yeah, you Yeah, yeah, like somebody called it karate once. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. Oh, all right. Funny enough, fans, uh, it, just as the Berserker was uh, renaming himself, uh, one of the, the, the greats of the 80s was coming back repackaged in the 90s. He went from being one of the great intercontinental championship holders of the, of the era, uh, a classic with the macho man Randy Savage at WrestleMania 3, and now he, Ricky Steamboat returned looking like a giant lizard in early 1991 yeah, yeah. as the dragon. Was that kind of an odd, unexpected look? Ricky? Yeah. It was absolutely nuts. I thought he was crazy. He's blowing fire? That I thought was kind of cool. I thought the lizard outfit was a little... Well, I guess I guess I, I agree with you a little bit. The, 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 the fire was like, he's going to burn himself one of no, these shit, nights. No shit, you're kidding. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's, we kept saying he's going to burn himself. And, of course, Henning, yeah, he says to him, like, oh, let's put something in his fire. <laughs> like, like, no, Kurt. What was it that he would use? He wanted to put something in his fire, like, like fucking. Oh, uh, really? Light like, up. Yeah. like, uh, not like gasoline or something. You know. What was he blowing to make it go? Whoosh, I know? think it was kerosene. Really? He had to put that in his yeah, mouth every night. Yeah, he had night? to be Jesus. careful how it started so it didn't burn out. He said, but he had it down, and I think he got the actual how to do it from a professional guy at like a carnival. I would hope. So it was a car so right. it was a carny deal. So we are carny rats. We figured it out. It's like the seven shades of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just I know about it. It was cool to see Ricky Stebo come back. I just remember I couldn't believe the outfit on the way to the ring. He looked, they made him look like a goof. Well, here's the thing. I see. Yeah, he looked like a goof. And then his matches were like 35 minutes long. <laughs> it's like Steamboat, your opening match. You're supposed to do seven, eight minutes and get the hell out of there. We all want to go home someday. <laughs> he liked the work. He loved to work. 
He loved but the But I work. thought he was kind of a weird dude, man. Why is that? Just by his mannerisms. Kind of like, kind of like he was really, uh, just really swank. You know what I mean? Yeah, I you know the, the way you put it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it, I didn't like the swank shit. I should have took a swank over his head and hit him and changed it a little. Yeah, yeah. And changed. Now, now that's the right swank. I never really thought about it like but that. But it's yeah. true, and you know what I mean. Yeah, P nice guy, but I really see what you mean. Really nice yeah. guy, but don't give me the swank yet. <laughs> I just figured that word out. I'm going to use it all the time now. You're feeling very swanky here on Throwback Thursday. Quit being so swank over there. Yeah, you. Jeez, John. Fight up over there. And again, the returns kept on coming. I, I don't know what it was with these repackages early in the year, but former World Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion, household name in the mid-'80s uh -huh. on the NBC Saturday night main event era, WrestleMania early day era. Now, in 1991, he's an Iraqi sympathizer. Uh, the Iron Sheik returned as Colonel Mustafa. Again, another odd return yeah. where everybody knew Just it was the Iron bit. Sheik. Just a little bit, yeah. Everybody knew it was the Iron Sheik. Right. He had a little bit of the gas gut going at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a little, someone should have put a pin in there. Yeah, <laughs> popped him a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it was kind of foolish to take someone with the Sheik's resume and pedigree and all of a sudden say, okay, now he's Colonel Mustafa, like he's uh Yeah, it's, it's absolutely idiotic. It really is. Because you go from, you know, he was so over at one point with the curled toes, you know. Right. He was over, brother. And when you got somebody that's that over, don't change it. It's fine the way it is. And then they change it in this weird, geeky deal. They find out, you, all you do is find out you got guys up in the office that really aren't the smartest guys in the world, like us all, and they just aren't that smart. Um, sometimes they get lucky and they nail a great gimmick, but not always. As we're seeing in 2022. Yes. A lot of it. Yeah, but that's a different story for different I, times. It, it is a different time, but I'll tell you what, these the, the guys, all they, they listen, uh, all they do is high spots, one after another right now, and I think it's absolutely hideous. They need Ricky Steamboat to go back and work another yeah. thirty-five. Except, except cut it down to at least, <laughs> to at least an hour and a half, man. Ricky, Ricky Swank. No, you're right. It, it, it reminds me a lot of almost like a 500-piece jigsaw puzzle with just the pieces <laughs> going all over the place. But I know. It's, it, it's, it's, it, I think as far as athletically, I think they're some of the most athletically gifted guys that have ever been in the industry. They just don't know how to put it together or they're not given the time to put it together right. in a way that has logic to it. Right, There's right. no pacing and there's no patience. Right, right. It's just right. move, 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 boom, next. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, you still got to tell a story out there, man. And, and you know, you, you, the old timers like Ray Stevens and God, those guys were just incredibly talented. But then the fans were different back then, too. So, you know, it, it was it was different back then. So you got to give it to them that that it ain't the same now. So maybe we are missing it, but right now, uh, I think WWE is absolutely just hideous. But how long do you? I think hope it would they take, come out of it. How long do you think it would take them to maybe the fans to be re-educated in a way that pro wrestling is more than move? Good move, idea. Move, 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 move. Good move. idea. And it's dangerous, and it's it's risky actually in some ways, but I think it would take maybe a full year. Well, I mean, considering how the ratings continue to hit rock bottom so often, record lows for Monday Night Raw, I think it might be a, a risk worth taking. You know why? Because the the young little kids. Okay, how do you how do they make their money? 
from five-year-old to 13-year-old little boys that want to go see the matches and they want to see the gimmicks. They want to see The Undertaker. They want to see this guy. They don't want to see all these legit guys that ain't crazy. They want to see crazy guys and that's where you make your money. I'd say about five to 13 and you make your money and that's it. And once you're past 13, the ball game's over, hmm. you know? That's why, keep it in that range. Think like a five-year-old to 13-year-old. What would they want? I don't think they do that enough. I think they got the big sledgehammer, big tough guy, all that or that. And maybe that is a good deal. Just speaking of that, maybe Paul Bunyan would be a good deal. But it's gotta, you got to think like a five-year-old to 13-year-old boy, little boy. And I've never said that before. I just said it now. But. Very insightful, honestly. Very, well, it, it has, the, it has the wheels it. in my head turning a bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely not little girls. Well, I, we could talk about how they've overpushed the women to the nth degree. Oh, the, my God. Oh, it's you a, might as well have had, if they had totally naked girls, it'd be fun to watch. It's too much. And it's but been, then that's just me. I it, like naked girls. It's been shoved that we won't talk about Sergeant Slaughter again, but yeah. Um, well, yeah. we had one guy, remember Mel? Mel Phillips. Mel Phillips, the toe sucker. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. it was another We're going to get into that era. That, that's uh, yeah. the cream team was certainly uh, yeah. remembered for all the wrong reasons. But right now, wrestling fans. I heard I, he still got a toenail stuck in his back, too. Well, you know, maybe they could have been friends for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe shit just went wrong. All right, wrestling fans, right now we're going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we're going to look at the event that was WrestleMania 7. Stand by. Yo, baby. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Party Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. After successful cancer surgery, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, plus three-time WWE Tag Team Champion Zaxxon Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, the Wild Berserker, and at least three more WWF icons. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive group 80s legends photos, autographs, individual photos, all before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Get your VIP packages and tickets now to secure the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College March 26. Tickets and Superstar Experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over BostonWrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. You can add this to your collection. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this WWE NXT TakeOver War Games 2020 11 by 14 limited edition autograph poster signed by everyone on the event, number 23 of only 100 made. Include signatures from the Undisputed Era, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Tommaso Ciampa, Timothy Thatcher, Io Shirai, Tony Storm, Rhea Ripley, Dexter, Loomis, and more. Comes with authentication hologram on the back of the poster. Also comes with mystery autographed 8x10 and an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursday, Dan Marotti along with the latest, the greatest member 
of the Boston Wrestling Sports family, Mr. John Nord, the Berserker, a man that's going to be joining us live, along with Jake the Snake, Robert Saxon, Smash Demolition, and so many more, when we go back to the 80s at Soul Survivor 10, oh, yeah. Saturday night, April the 16th, Memorial Hall, two blocks that way from this studio. Yeah, baby! It's going to be the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, live autograph session, live photo session, Great in-ring wrestling, a VIP exclusive Q&A. Discount tickets are available now on the BostonWrestling.com super site. Yeah, Back to baby. the world that was 1991. Talk a little bit about WrestleMania 7. In a previous episode, we talked about kind of the, the venue dilemma that they faced. I worked, I don't know if you remember, Red Cohen in yeah. WWF who booked all the venues, but I did a little work with him yeah. uh, back in the early 2000s. Sure. So he, he taught me a few tricks of the trade. Yeah, Unfortunately, he... Ed's no longer with us. Uh, you're very yet to be taught by him at 20, 21 years old. I was that was like a college wow. education. I'm, that's a that's another a one degree. I'm eternally grateful to. That's a degree. Absolutely. That you're right. Uh, some of the feature matches on the big event: The Ultimate Warrior defeated Randy Savage in what was uh, Randy's retirement match at the time. Do you remember Macho Man being a little banged up, just wanting some time off? Macho? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, uh, Macho then, when uh, he was riding with me after he broke up with Elizabeth, mm -hmm. he was an absolute puddle. He was like, I want to ride with you guys. Give me a Percocet. And me and Kurt be in the front seat and the back seat, Darso and uh, Wayne Bloom. And he, Macho Man, he needed support. Then he went to the strip joints and got support there for real yeah. he had to do something Different he was support. he was in pain yeah. i get it man but when this was this is probably about a year before they oh that's they a year before yeah. that so i don't know i guess i'm lost on where well they put him in the commentary okay, so, for a little bit okay and i thought he was actually pretty good oh yeah, yeah yeah oh i think he was very good now that i remember i just don't remember much on on story being line. banged up yeah Oh, well, you know what? Around, I, I don't know if he was. Storyline-wise, he was managed by Sherry Martell, and Sherry was pissed Macho lost to the Warrior, and then Elizabeth came running down the aisle in one of the most bland-looking outfits I think they could have put such a pretty <laughs> woman in. I know. Do you, I remember that. Do you remember, you know, there's been a lot of stories told in this studio by many men over the years that Macho was a little maybe overprotective of Elizabeth. Going oh, you think and, so? Locking her in closets. Do you think events. so? Well, what do you remember oh, the, the Macho Elizabeth What I dynamic? remember is... Were there closets? What I remember is now I got half of them being together and half of them bro broke up. Yeah. Um, basically, maybe only a month together, that type of deal, um, and the rest being uh, broke up. So, oh, really? Yeah. So, so I didn't get much, but together, um, I could see in her eyes that she just wasn't attracted to Randy anymore. She had enough. I mean, come on. The guy looked like he had straw for hair. <laughs> the fucking guy, uh, you know, uh, tanned. He walked around with 10 gallons of oil on his body. Um, he uh, mm, dunked like this. Um, I don't know, man. Oh, yeah. To me, that's not very attractive. Um, and if I was a woman, I would be, frankly, quite sick of the son of a bitch. I heard he was very cheap. And he was very cheap. He never bought nobody nothing. And Elizabeth, he wanted, he didn't, he, he didn't ever want to introduce her to the guys and let's go have some fun. Can you blame that poor girl? Hell no. If I was being locked in a, an arena closets, I, I, I think that could grow old pretty quick. Right, right. And then, of course, you know, the story about Randy getting out in the car and beating the guy senseless um and randy couldn't beat up no beat I, up nobody i'm not familiar with what you're talking about okay a guy and i not a guy a road rage going randy with, did okay. with randy yeah and randy got out and beat the guy up and he went to court and everything um it wasn't a big publicized deal this was wwf time 
this was either late, late WWF. Okay. So, yeah, he, he beat him up, and then... Um, Bad? And then, yeah, no, not to where he was going to die or nothing, okay. but he beat the shit out of him. But, but Randy couldn't beat up nobody. He thought he could, but he knew in his mind of mind that he couldn't. Um, and uh, uh, Randy was so freaking, I, I think he was mentally ill. I really do, because he would come around us guys and say, I want to be around you guys. You guys are the coolest. I need you guys. Now, this is when he broke up with Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then from there, he was just the way he acted. Um, the guy needed help to act just normal. I mean, he could walk in a freaking tanning salon and be paranoid that there was somebody looking at him naked or something. <laughs> You know, he was or, a paranoid man. Huh? He was a paranoid man. Oh, he's par one of the most paranoid guys I've ever known. Really? Oh God, he's terrible. You walk up behind him and hey, what are you walking up behind me, man? <laughs> I'm like, are you acting right now or is this you? <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. I go, okay, it must be you. <laughs> so I think I'll stay away. I mean, you. even to some of the boys, he'd be yes. like, oh, "Yes, no, there's no joke. He would act like that during, during the freaking all the time. He's a goof. He grew up in the business, and you know, I think he was in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most setups or something. Oh, Angelo Papo, yeah, the dad. Oh, uh, pa Angelo did? Yeah, he was the one that set the record. Yeah, the one that could suck his own crank. Oh, no, that, well, that, no, that's Lanny. That's Lanny. Oh, who's Angelo's dad? Angelo is the dad, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. So he got raised on train, 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 workout, 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 workout. But you know, what you find out about that is this. You... You can train and look good and train, 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 but your relationships go to hell because you train your body, but you got to train your relationships. You got to love your wife. You got to take her out for dinner. You got to take your girlfriend out for dinner. Whatever you got to do, take her out to dinner once a week. Something. Talk. Fulfill her so you can have a girl. But just don't walk around doing set-ups, push-ups, and looking in the mirror. Do you think maybe he didn't give her enough love from what you saw? Was it a loving relationship? I think at first he gave her a ton of love. Uh -huh. And then I think the last quarter was him just being paranoid and them fighting. Because you know she pulled back and went, Randy... I just don't want to do, do this right now. Did you ever see them have a verbal altercation? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I did. I seen her do what I just did. Um, Randy, I'll just ride in the other car. Okay, I don't want to He would do permit that. her to travel with other people? Well, it was her girlfriend. Oh, okay. And it was okay. on the part of the side of the car, and it was on the side of the arena and he didn't know I was I was just sitting there you know getting my bag and I, I just was acting it was I wasn't trying to pay yeah, attention. Yeah you just heard it yeah. I just heard it and I heard her go yeah I ran the out go on that like like and I could tell he was pissed so that's I think was part of the beginning that was the end. Um, and then poor Elizabeth ends up with Luger and uh, and dies, and then Luger now is is a, a preacher, and uh, uh, and good for him. Um, can't say a bad word about Lex, um, and uh, yeah. Well, it, it's too bad they were one of the more infamous couples in the history of WWE slash WWF. It was incredible, 
And that's not even counting if you had even a better guy than Randy. Yeah. If they had that same deal, but a better guy than Randy. Somebody like Kurt Henning. Yeah. Right? That would even exploded more. Um, but, you know, you hate to talk about the dead. And God bless Randy's heart. And God bless Elizabeth's heart. They both died too young. And, and I seriously, um, if I tell a story like that, I always, you know, under my breath, say God bless them. And That's I, nice. I hope they're doing good. I don't want and to hopefully talk they like are. that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Sure, sure. They're just they're your experiences that you had throughout your career. You yeah, know? I'm just telling the story. I'm whether just relaying. Now, whether now if it's my opinion, I'll I'll tell you. Now, this is my opinion. Here I go, like Marty. That's my opinion. I don't know, but you're going to tell me that? No, I know Janetti, and I know he can be full of shit. <laughs> and any guy that can be full of shit is full of shit. Well, and I love him anyways. I'm not saying I don't love him. Listen, the guy freaking had a girl dead in his bed. <laughs> For several days. Yeah. <laughs> she blew up like a pumpkin. <laughs> You know, she, come on you know now. She blew up like a pumpkin. I don't know, but you, I, I, I you know just put that. It out there. How do you know she blew up like a pumpkin? Oh, that she was as big as a blow-up doll <laughs> that Mel used, probably. I don't know. How out of it did Marty have to be for several days not to realize she was in the bed dead? I think he just kept walking in circles doing the next hit. Well, that could have been it, too. Like, oh, That was his swank. The ninth day. That was his he's swank. He's dead. Maybe I should call the police. <laughs> and he's lucky as hell he didn't go to prison. No on that shit. One. No kidding. You talk about a break. Not only that, but all the drugs that were in the house. Right. He had one good lawyer. Either Marty or... threw his mercy on the court. But that's what I'm saying. See, I don't think because of Marty. Here's another catch. Dan, Marty already was in a shitload of trouble with this girl. Do you think that bringing up that guy in the river would really be true? Are you guys all retarded or what? I, like I said, I, I know what I, my private discussions with him, my on-air discussions with him, that phone call he took that we mentioned off the air, and a good friend of his, right. I don't know if you know him the that well. The wrestling coach. But he told, no, no, no this is a, a WWF wrestler that he, th okay. this guy told me, Marty told him the same story in 1995, years, 96. Yeah, yeah. So, and he said it was identical. Well, I'll tell you something, Dan. I'm going to tell you a story later, and I'm going to totally fucking lie, and I'm going to have you in tears going, <laughs> that's too bad. And I'm going to go, yeah, I know. But would you and then in 10 years from now, I'm going to go, yeah, that still happened. It still affects me. And you're going to go, that's too bad. That story's got to be true. Bullshit. But, and he, see, if he ever sees this, he's going to be mad at me. But to, to call a spade a spade, he's been, let's say he's been out of the public spotlight for quite some time. Why not use that story sooner that he shared with wrestlers back in the 90s to try and get some publicity. Right. Why not five years ago? Why not ten right. years ago? Right. That's, that's another thing that makes me wonder. You know what right. I mean? Right, right. And Marty... He pulled, if, let's say you're 100% right. Why didn't he pull that card out before to try and get something right. out? Right. As many months in a row as you've been flat broke, you didn't pull out your gun and use it? On that story? And Marty, I know you're going to be mad, but this is the deal. The truth is the truth. We're just, all I'm saying is you're full of shit on that. <laughs> but I love you as a guy. You're my buddy. He's had, and I hate this, and again, I'm not trying to knock him, but he's had three matches on WWE television since the late 90s. I mean, 
He could have pulled out that card at any time to right. try and be more relevant. Right. Go up and tell Vince that. Well, hey, okay, I bet, but you know why? <laughs> if it was true, then he'd be taken. What about the chance of it actually being true and then finding a bone? Yeah, right. Okay, so you're really going to take a chance? That's why it's not true, because you're taking a chance. Of Big it, chance. Of, it, of a bone being in the river. So why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense. So tell your story, Watson. John, I love how you put it. You got away with words, brother. That's why we're having so much fun on Wrestling Inside. This is fun. I got to quit. John, you know, I didn't even ask you as we started to dive into WrestleMania 7. You were a relative newcomer to the company. Were you there for the event? Or what were you doing that day? Just kind of yeah, hanging no, and catering? Yeah, seven, seven. Um, that was LA. I brought my wife. Mm -hmm. Kurt brought his wife. Mark brought his wife, Jody, and and me, Kurt, and Undertaker went out drinking. We all came back late, mm -hmm. and all three girls were in the their own hotel rooms, which were ours. Yeah, and they were all crying because they didn't think we were coming oh. back. <laughs> that was ugly. All I, I said, can imagine. I looked oh, at Mark. You. I looked at Mark, and I says, "Was Jody mad?" I, he says, yeah. I says, was she crying? Yep. I says, so was Jane. And then Mark goes, I guess Lanise was too. <laughs> and I go, fuck it. We fuck up. Ooh. How late did you come back? Well, not too bad, yeah. like two. Oh, they, well, they probably. I mean, two the next day. No, I'm just oh. But no, no, no. And I wasn't even in it. And I don't think Undertaker was in it. I might be wrong. Was he in it? In what? The show? Yeah. Oh, both Kurt and Undertaker were right. Okay, yeah. I wasn't then. I yeah. was You were still real really new. Yeah, well, I'm a good fucking courier, right? God thanks. <laughs> okay. So uh it was the next year that me and Davy Boy were supposed to have a match and they canceled. Well, we'll get there once we get to ninety two. Yeah, I, I hear remember you. that. God, I was you know, disappointed. You know everything. You picked me up. I was disappointed. Well, I was disappointed well, you were too. You I was disappointed because, but I tell you what, between, I mean, Davy Boy, God bless his heart too, but I would, I would pound on Davy Boy. I would just pound on that son of a bitch as hard as I could. And he, he just, he took it, man. You think it because he was so gassed up? It didn't well, have Well, he impact, was so or? gassed up, but here's the thing is, I know I was going to do the job, so I might as well just really beat the shit shit out of him with kicks and punches, and I did. But I'm not like bragging, I'm just saying he took it, he didn't say one word. That's what's great about Davy Boy Smith, he never bit. All right. All right, wrestling fans, you heard it. Right now we're gonna take a brief time out. We'll be back to wrap up the show. Stand by. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston Wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon. But we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty, but... But our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out.
At WrestleMania 37, she proved she is the EST, defeating Sasha Banks to become the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Here's your chance to own this limited edition collector's autograph print, personally signed by Bianca Belair, one of only 50 made, direct from our friends at WWE, also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome Bianca Belair collectible for your wrestling collection now. Re this is the last one, right, C? All right. Wrestling fans, time flies when you're having fun, and boy, are we having fun with our new co-host, John Nord, the Thank Berserker. You. Yeah, no. Thank you. Hey, you know what? The, the adventure isn't over yet, brother. We still got a long ways to we go. Do. And we do. And if you guys last month in December missed John with us for the Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive, the great news is we're, 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 we almost feel like Santa's elves is we're trying to get John back just a little bit later in January to be with us live. He yeah. can do another cyber autograph signing where you guys can get autograph photos. We're going to do more great interviews to make sure every Thursday night is a Wrestling Insiders throwback Thursday night. For John Nord, nice. I'm Dan Marotti. You and yours. Be well. Be healthy. Good night from Boston. Good night. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the berserker John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday. Dan Marotti, John Nord. We continue to hold the record for the most weeks without changing our clothes, but that's all right. We're still looking good. When you got a sweater like that, baby, who needs something else? Yeah, I, the only thing I need is a muffler. All right, well, all right. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> all right, wrestling fans, we started to talk about WrestleMania 7 last week. Uh, John was not booked on the card where he was a relative newcomer to the company, but he still got to enjoy the ambiance of WrestleMania. Did, did being that close to it make you want to have a little taste? Uh, of WrestleMania 7? Yes. Um, absolutely I wanted. I was actually heartbroken. I wasn't in it. But they really weren't knowing what they were going to do with me. And you know what? I never got treated all that good anyways in there one one thing that the office did tell me about wwf was uh and then it's this came from vince to pat uh to uh uh who's JJ? the canadian redhead the canadian billy redhead. red lion oh okay yep and what had happened was they just flat said, you know, they, they, I was wild. Sometimes I didn't know how to work too good. Sometimes I knew how to work great. They didn't really know what to expect. But one thing they did know was I would never sue them. I would never do anything to, uh, to alter that company. I would, I would show up. If I did something, I would say I was sorry. On and on, and that made me feel really good. They respected you. Yes, and and I'll be honest with you, when I went to drug treatment, um, they said, literally, the treatment place said, uh, the WWF said they would give you as many treatments as you want, John, and spend as much money as they want because of the way that you handled yourself in the WWF. How long so that ago, made me feel really good. How long ago has it been since you had to go for the treatment? Oh, 09. Oh, 09? Okay, so a little over 10 years. Yeah, I was in there with Dan Spivey. Oh, and really? And technically okay. you're not supposed to, you know, it's supposed to be very, uh, uh, not confidential, but yeah, what's confidential. another word? Yeah. Confidential. Well, anyway, it's close enough. And, and they, they put two wrestlers in the same place at the same time? Yeah. That's and, a little odd. But yeah, it was funny, too, because I just got a, a, a big check for uh, disability. And I'm walking around, I got $50,000 in my pocket, cash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, who stops by? Wayne Bloom, one of the, my buddy, yep, one of the yep. Beverly Bills. 
I said, you ain't fucking supposed to be here. What the fuck? He what showed are up? You? Wayne yeah. Bloom showed I said, up too? I said, what are you doing here? He goes, my brother Terry's got a place 50 miles from here. So I, and when you told me the address, I didn't know you were coming when I told you the address. I said, Geez. He goes, well, jump in. Let's go to the mall or something. You were allowed to leave the rehab facility? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean on the right time. Oh, okay. You still had to go to class and all that mm -hmm. shit. So I jump in with Wayne. We go to a, uh, uh, we go to a freaking uh, 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 the shopping mall. Then he says, "Let's just have one." I said, "Yeah, maybe just one won't hurt." <laughs> right, right. That story. So he going now. Do you know who a guy named Remember Beverly Hills Cop? The movie, yeah. Remember the red-haired guy? What was his name? Austin, or... It's been so long since yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, he was his sidekick. Uh, not Nick Nolte, not... Uh, what's his name, the black guy? Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. The, the red But the guy. guy that was chasing him. We ran into him at a bar. Oh, and wow. he was so damn funny. He was delusional, brother. He was going to us. He goes, he goes. I, d I just did a movie with, 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 with Bobby De Niro. You know, calls him Bobby. Bobby. Yeah, yeah Bobby De Niro. <laughs> Not Robin. Yeah, Bobby. yeah. He yeah. says I just did a movie with Bobby De Niro, but they, they gave him his own dressing room, and they don't me. I'm a star, he says, and me and Wayne are looking at each other, going. This fucking guy's gone. <laughs> Calling him Bobby De Niro, and he should have a dressing room <laughs> like Robert De Niro? <laughs> Anyways, and then I got back safe, and I got no trouble or nothing. But Did the, they know you had a drink when you got back to the rehab facility? No, we kept that one undercover. You can't babe that one. Dan, Dan Spivey called me, though, <laughs> when I got home. He goes, I heard you were drinking. I said, yeah, I'm a lying piece of shit. And he goes, no. Nah. <laughs> he couldn't help but laugh. He ended up having an affair with Ann Gordon, who worked for the WWF. Danny Spivey did? Yeah. I never knew that. And then they got married, and now they're still married. Dan's eighth marriage. Eighth? Yeah. Now, funny enough, he owns or owned one of the other. A well drilling. A, uh, a what? Well, his family owns a well drilling. Well, he owned. A, he opened a breakfast joint. Did he? In um, Beverly Hills, Florida, where I used to be. Yeah. And I thought, because I, when I, I didn't know I had that. family down there, and I didn't know. One day, I Fucker, just happened to come. don't tell me shit. I happened to come across the advertisement, and I, I couldn't believe it was him. But well, I, I didn't know he married Ann Russo Gordon. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. They, uh, it yeah must have, no. Was it before? Well, well during well, no, WWF he was or in, after? He was in treatment. Yeah. And when he got into treatment, Ann got him in. She was in charge of the whole treatment deal. Right. Got him in. They started talking to each other next thing, and, and Ann's not. Exactly, a beauty queen. <laughs> but that's saying it nice. But anyways, <laughs> sorry, Dan. <laughs> sorry, Dan. Anyways, and so they just started getting together, and, and I'm down there going, uh, what the fuck, where am I? What's going on? And Dan goes, I don't know if you figured it out yet. I said, what? He goes, me and Ann are having an affair. And I go, Oh, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> and this he, was goes, while he goes, yeah, I figured you did. This was while you were still at the facility? That's when he was still at the facility. Then he started working at the facility because he was such a good patient, right? Oh, he got a job there. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I'm still the fucking worst of the worst <laughs> in the fucking patient. I'm sneaking shit. I'm putting poop in guys' beds and cottage cheese in their underwear and oh I was a terrible patient. How long were you there? Two months. Two months. But I'll tell you uh, it was kind of a shit place. I didn't like it. Oh really? Nah. It's in Tampa, Florida. And I met a girl down there and I brought her home because I had that chunk of cash. And, um, 
I, I, I'm so fucked up that I was scared to touch her down here. Why? Because I didn't know what was in there. I was a little scared. I know that sounds crazy. But you remember, I'm with a 56-year-old boy, girl. I thought maybe it was all wrinkled and sticking up. And well, that, was that the oldest woman you were ever with at that point? Oh, well, I was uh, 53, I think. Yeah. So, anyways, but no, I regret now. I should have just went down and chomped away. But I regret it because I had, I, had, I had been with so few women except my wife. Do you know what I mean? That you get a little nervous because my wife, I knew. You knew the body. I, she was perfect to me you know and so when I'm digging this other I didn't know if I was going to find a turd hanging out or something were or, you were you recently separated from your wife at that point no we've been divorced for five years oh okay so you took kind of a break from the females or just elderly ones yeah well, they just didn't ones. like me very much oh. but um but no then I ended up getting a rash of girlfriends like four of them and nice looking, you know, and I still just can't, I just still can't. Women are with me are just hard to get along with. I'm like, you know, I just don't, I don't have much time for them. I want to start loving them again, but God, how about just being a fun, nice girl instead of I want that, I want that. You meet the ones that want a little, uh, a little more than the love and Yeah, money. one time I was laying on this one's couch, and I had all the money. And I was in her apartment, and I was paying for everything. And I'm looking at the TV, I'm watching the Beverly Hillbillies, and she goes, I think it would be better if you left. <laughs> I went, me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll get my shit. I packed it for you. Go. Wow. Yes, what I'm saying? <laughs> well, maybe it's better you're in your little It was way better I got house. out of that one. Yeah. She would have killed me in the middle of the night. Uh, well, definitely better than that she left. Yeah. I interesting, odd almost segue. Uh, we look back at WrestleMania 7. You said the night before you enjoyed the night with Mr. Perfect and The Undertaker and... The next day, so it began, the Undertaker's undefeated streak uh, that started at 21-0 and 0, uh, with a victory over a guy that I think you, you, you probably had some uh, many interactions that? with, the Superfly Jimmy Snooker. Ah, uh, Jimmy! I love Jimmy Snooker. I got a great Jimmy Snooker story. Let's hear him, baby. Okay. <laughs> Me and Jimmy are somewhere in Pennsylvania. And we just did a shot, I think Scranton or something. And we just got to go to Madison Square Garden. And we're driving there together. And, he, and I'm driving. And it's just me and him. And we stop at the dope dealer and we buy a bag of powder coke, right? And me and Jimmy are doing bumps. <laughs> we can't talk, are we? And we're driving. And uh, we get to the garden like, an hour late, right? <laughs> uh -huh. After the matches have started. Oh wow! Okay. The, the the security guard comes running out. Roll down the window. Security guard goes. Nord, you missed your match. That's okay. Snuka, you can still make yours. Go ahead. And Jimmy goes. Not tonight. I thought it was funny. He would he wouldn't get So it. anyways, so anyways, I told this story to a lot of guys around where I lived, and now everybody's going, not tonight. Now was Jimmy angry that they wouldn't let you in or No, he was just so high. high. <laughs> he was high and he goes, not tonight. And that was at MSG. What? That where this happened? It was that, at MSG? Yes. Not tonight. Oh, yeah, me and Jimmy wrestled a lot. That we got a, I got a lot of stories. But, you know, Jimmy, here's Jimmy, long story short. 
is if you wrestled him, he was like a fine piece of crystal. If you slammed him too hard, he would shatter into a million pieces. That's how much his body was brittle. Really? From, from over the years. Yeah. Jimmy went up like like a feather. And you just want to just barely slam him so he didn't crystallize. Hmm. But right, it's hard to say that unless you're a wrestler. Unless you're a worker, right. Yeah. All right, wrestling fans, uh, we're going to take a brief time out. we got the cue from John C. Manicus Riley. Uh, unfortunately, I should say, that we'll be coming back from the break tonight. Not tonight! Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the Berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the Berserker, John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but... We're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling, and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Mighty Rockin' each and every Thursday night. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back. What a way for The Undertaker's streak to begin at WrestleMania with a win over an icon like Jimmy Snuka. Um, did, any, did you know Jimmy from AWA before WWF? Or were you guys there at the same time? Um, I did know Jimmy from Japan. Oh, from Japan, okay. And I also knew in 85, and I also knew Jimmy from Wrestle Rock at the St. Paul Civic Center, uh, me and Brody versus Greg Gagne and Jimmy Snuka called Wrestle Rock in 1987. Now, was Jimmy always a big into the medicine, as the Sheik would say? Nah. He, really? liked, he liked the pot, but not the cold. Oh, really? Okay. But, but uh, Jimmy was just a great guy, you know. I mean, the nicest guy you could ever run into or talk to. Uh, he's just a fine, he was a fine, fine man. I know later in life he got absolutely batshit crazy, but he was a great guy. I met him for the first time in 93 when I was working for Tony Rumble. Mm -hmm. And the last time we actually had an event for him at the same venue you're going to be at Saturday night, April the 16th. Okay. Uh, when we go back to the 80s, we did a Jimmy Snooker appreciation night. And I have to say, out of every encounter I ever had with him, by far, that was the last time I saw him, was the most clear-headed he ever was. It was what amazing man? to me. So I don't know if he, he had, Well, he had streaks of being clear-headed. All guys do that use drugs and, and drink. Like, you might be, he might show up totally perfect clear-headed. Other times, they might be just out of it, you know? And that's what it was. You're right. Yeah, I couldn't, I, it was blown away. Yeah. Blown away. He did a Q&A with the fans that was very clear and remarkable. And, you know, I'd never really seen that. Right. Side yeah, of yeah, before. yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah, nice. That's a that good it, point. Nice that it happened towards the end. I think his, his wife, Carol, that he wound up with was a really nice lady. Oh. Um, I don't know if you ever met her. Um, no, no, I never met. Is that his second wife? Uh, at least. Uh, well, I, don't, I'm I not know his to be son funny. was a great know. athlete, good baseball player. Yeah, it, it, well, one of his sons wound up wrestling, but his daughter is still with WWE now, Tamina. Is uh, she? Yeah. And she's a little long in the tooth. She's older than me. 
But wow. I don't know if that's like a thank you Jimmy Snooker award that wow. they give to her. Or, but see, I don't follow that. Yeah. I just don't. But I'm a, I might start keeping up. Yeah, she was just on Raw last night, as a matter of fact. Tamina. I don't even know that stuff. No. I, I don't. I'm a, I'm a hillbilly. I don't know nothing. No, don't. You got to give yourself more credit than that. But uh, you know, you said you had a lot of Jimmy stories. What do you think about the story that unfortunately kind of took over his existence in his final years as he was suffering from stomach cancer when he had to go back in time uh, to what happened back in, I believe, 1983 with the, his his road mistress Nancy Argentino and her her death, which was labeled a murder after he changed his story that he gave to the police to what he put in his autobiography very, 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 very differently. Yeah. He um, should have kept that one out of the book. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dan, I just don't know. I don't know. That I just don't know. I, all I know is I love Jimmy, and, and I, I just, I can see him flipping Having out. a moment. Having a moment. I could see Jimmy doing that, definitely. Um, but the other side is he's the nicest guy in exactly. the world. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. I yeah. don't, here's the deal is I don't know. You don't know. I just flat don't know. I could never say one way or another because he's so much like we just said. I, and you know, you can't even say, quote unquote, he, he lucked out avoiding having to go through trial because they didn't find him mentally fit as he passed away just a couple of months later from the stomach cancer. So. Yeah, yeah, he must have had a great lawyer. But the thing of it is, is yeah, he, uh, Jimmy just, you know, he went home to be with the Lord. And Jimmy That's a good way was, to put it. Jimmy was very, um, um, very much uh, uh, into the Lord anyways. So Jimmy, Jimmy, uh, it was time for Jimmy to go. If it is true, though, I say it's sad that the Argentino family never got yeah. their peace. But yeah. that's a different story for a different episode, I guess. But, you know, let me ask you this. Aside from that, as far as the professional wrestler Superfly Jimmy Snooker goes, how do you think he should be remembered? For his Jimmy? contributions to the sport. To the sport? as an absolute icon. The, the super fly off the top rope is what made, do you, know how many, do you know how many people came to see him jump off the top rope? More than you could ever believe. More than Roddy Piper's skirt, more than Hulk Hogan, more than Roddy hitting him with coconuts, more than anything. They came to watch the Superfly. Do you think that if he was more trustworthy, not missing shots, not into the drugs as much as he was, he could have been as big as Hogan? I don't know. No, no. I don't. I don't. I'll, and That's it's honest. Just because, listen, Hogan's 6'5", 300, and, uh, you know, 22-inch arms, 23 on Johnny Carson and all that, and and he's an American type thing. Fair enough. Jimmy's a Tongan, and it ain't gonna happen to a Tongan as easy it is as an American. Right. Americans still Americans. You know Makes what sense. I mean? Makes sense. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, maybe it'll change someday, but right now we're still uh, kind of a a little bit prejudiced that way. I got you. I hear what you're saying. I interesting uh, vantage point, as always. Another yeah. very memorable story that came from this event, and I didn't realize how long, uh, how many others were involved, but the uh, the party with Willie Nelson, uh, <laughs> where the Nasty Boys and Kurt Henning and Larry Henning, who Kurt flew out, uh, uh. and some others all celebrated with the Willie Nelson, and uh, a coked-up Willie wound up with one of the WWF Tag Team Championship belts. Were yeah. you around for that, or I'm sure you had to have heard about it. Well, absolutely. First of all, the first time we ever ran into Willie Nelson was in Dublin, Ireland. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. We are at a cafe, and it was the highwaymen. Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, Chris Christopherson, and who's the fourth? 
Who's the fourth? I don't know. Johnny Cash, uh, Chris Christopherson, Willie Nelson, and one more. But anyways, Willie gave his headband because that fucking knobs. <laughs> that fucking knobs bogarted. I wanted that fucking. I wanted, wanted that. The head I wanted the red-headed stranger's na- na- napkin, and Knob got it before me. I you son of a bitch. I just remember thinking that. I never say nothing to Knob, but what happened? Where then Willie was playing at a place called Medina, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Now Medina has a huge um, dance floor, a huge. Everything. They have weddings. It's been there for years. And when you say Medina, you just know it's a big uh, wedding wreck uh, thing, a concert place. But it's not like a Civic Center or a Target Center. It's not like that. But Willie played there, and me and Wayne Bloom went there together and went in Willie's bus and started giving him Percocet <laughs> and beer. And we How old was Willie Nelson? I, I, yeah, he had to be fucking 70. He's 100 now, I think. And he just, he just, he just, 100, oh, uh, me and him just started eating Perks, and then we were in the front row while he was singing, and ah, oh, it was funny, and, and what's amazing, Willie didn't miss a beat on stage. He was Nothing. one of the, Willie was one of the boys. He was exactly like a wrestler. You do that match perfectly and you're a mess? How is that possible? Willie sings perfectly just like the album, but he's a mess. He barely gets off the bus. <laughs> he gets on the stage. <laughs> Blue eyes crying in the rain. You know, it's perfect. So, it's pretty cool. So there were a few encounters with Willie and the boys back in that era. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, number one, the only one I had was Medina. Okay. And uh, I told Kurt about, I remember Kurt was just pissed he wasn't there. You know. He was a Willie Nelson guy too? Oh, yeah. Kurt's biggest mark, he was the biggest fan by far, of Hank Williams Jr. Really? Okay. Oh my God! He must have loved the Monday Night Football. Oh, he theme named song. his youngest kid after him. Oh, yeah, that's right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Hank, Hank, let's talk about your daddy. Did your daddy really love that? This is almost turning into a, no a musical. Answer, you gotta just Hank Jr. If you listen to the music. It's still as good now as it was. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go home and listen to it. We got you in the mood. Yeah, it's just great. Just unbelievable music. Um, Hank Jr. was just an icon too, but uh, Hank Sr. started it all. Died in 1951, Cadillac. Threw up on his own throw up. Wow, so I didn't know that. Yep. Well, see, and you say you don't have stories, my God. But were you jealous to learn that Willie ran off with one of the tag team titles? No. no. It's Willie. How can you not? You didn't even get a spot on the show, Uh, and Willie Nelson wound up with one of the belts. I love, yeah, I know. I love, but I just love Willie so much. He don't got a mean bone in his body. He'd give you anything, and the poor guy owes more taxes for a while <laughs> than all of America put together. But the point is, is if when you meet him and talk to him and party with him a little bit, you absolutely fall in love with the guy. Great guy? The best. Not a mean bone in his body. All right, wrestling fans, not a mean bone in his body either, except when you get him angry inside the squared circle. Hey. Or if you're not with us on the flip side, as we continue with more. Wrestling Inside is Throwback Thursdays. We'll be back with John Noor. Thank you. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Party Saturday night 
April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. After successful cancer surgery, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, plus three-time WWE Tag Team Champion Zaxxon Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, The Wild Berserker, and at least three more WWF icons. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive group 80s legends photos, autographs, individual photos, all before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Get your VIP packages and tickets now to secure the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. Mm -hmm. All right, wrestling fans, mm -hmm. we're talking a little wrestling. We're talking a little country music. What did you Yo think God. of the, the Nasty Boys? Who knows if they'll come up the again? The Nasty Boys? We had them here with us the in nasty studio last boys. year. Are, are great guys. I watched them break in in the Brad Rankin's camp. I actually, we had an RV at our car lot too. We had RVs. Mm -hmm. And we took them up north, him and him and Sags. You know, they've been in town maybe a month. They didn't know anybody. We took them up north and, and one, a buddy of ours was driving and you know the side window on an RV and you got the big steering wheel. He was taking screwdrivers and throwing them on windshields. <laughs> I mean, that's how completely nuts we were. Yeah. And knobs and sags just went, I've never seen anybody this crazy. And we thought we were the craziest, but you weren't. We had Bloom, we had a guy named Dan Johnson who played for the Dolphins from 81 to 89. Mm -hmm. um, he is a great football player, but he's right in the middle all the time. He was our buddy, Kurt. He was right there. Um, anyways, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. I had another brain fart. We were just talking the Nasty Boys. Oh, the Nasty Boys. Yeah, and great guys. Great guys. I don't have a bad word. I love Sags. I mean, I love Sags, but I love Knobs probably more because how bad he gets on guys in the locker room. like He's in know, rough shape right now. Yeah, oh, God, well, they both are. But, well, you know, I mean, but here's been hospitalized the, for a couple of months. I don't know if you knew about that. Who? Knobs. Knobs, yeah. really? That don't surprise me because, yeah, no, I did know about that. Um, I know they're both, you know, Sags might be in really good shape as far as healthy. But knobs, it don't surprise me. And here's the thing about the Nasty Boys. Greatest guys, but I'll tell you what. You talk about guys with two left feet. They <laughs> couldn't work for nothing. They just, they, they have no athletic ability at all. You go like this, and they tip over. But they're great guys. And, and here's the craziness of wrestling. They gave them the belt. <laughs> that they gave to Willie Nelson. That they gave to Willie Nelson. But, but you tell me that ain't nuts. That's nuts. The, the, the WWF will give a derelict the truth and give them a great job. An absolute derelict, nightmare, river bottom nightmare guy, and just a nut, and give him a good job and a push. And then you get a normal guy who's athletic, and they won't do nothing with him. Now that's fucked up. That pisses me off. Because listen, you spend all this time in the gym. And you got guys in the gym, working out, trying to look good for wrestling, make it look, um, you know, like, you know, you don't take no shit. Anybody says it's fake in the bar, you punch them. And then you get a derelict, and that's okay. You, you see what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's, no, it makes complete it's sense. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, we had a very interesting weekend with the Nasties last year for the uh, the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. My dear God. I'll say this, the interviews we did with Jerry Sags, absolutely fantastic. Mm. Brian was, wasn't at his best, uh, 
health-wise, even at that point. Wasn't he? He, he, he actually had to use the, uh, the uh, loading dock as the men's room because he couldn't make it up the, uh, the ramp. But that's a different story no, for a different that's time. That's too but, bad. And the live interview they did with the fans, they didn't really endear themselves to them as they kind of... That's too bad. They were a little, little too nasty, maybe. But yeah. Jerry Sags, what a very, very... Sm I really didn't know him. What a really smart guy. I He's thought. intelligent. Very, very intelligent. intelligent. I'd love to See, have him. See, he went that. to, like, I mean, junior college and stuff. Did he? Yeah. Sag just has a, you can talk to him. He's very easy to talk to. Nobs, like you said, is a little more on the wild yeah, side. Yeah, he's, 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 he's nuts. But I can tell you this. You talk about two guys that got lucky to get a push because their athletic ability was hideous. Did you ever work them? Yeah. We're up in AWA? Uh, ba, 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 ba. AWA. I'm trying to think if I did in the WWF. But I'll tell you this. I know they didn't want to work with me. Really? Because, yeah. I'll, I remember when I was working with Bret Hart. And Bret goes, uh, he was kind of nervous about working with me. And he goes, you know, you're not exactly the nasty boys here. Uh, meaning that that was a compliment to me that the nasty boys are, you know, if, if those guys are watching, let me tell you something. Guys, I don't mean no bad. You guys know I love you. I went to took you up north in my RV if I didn't. But you guys would fall over your own feet and you know it. <laughs> now what? Hey, you know what? Too bad they couldn't have got a little more mileage out of Willie. But I don't think Willie would have wanted to have been a hero. Well, they're, they're lucky they got everything they got. My God, Sags ended up with a million-dollar lawsuit. Knobs, just, they ended up so damn lucky. It's just, it's, in, it's insane. It's crazy how it works out for some and not mm. the others. Uh, talking about one of your uh, Minnesota friends, Big Boss Man defeated Intercontinental Champion Mr. Perfect via DQ. Uh, uh, that night, Boss Man had the real boss in his corner, Andre the Giant. In 1991, yeah. which was coming towards the tail end of his time, yeah. uh, how much pain was Andre in at that point? He wasn't moving well. He was in a ton of pain. Yeah. He was a ton of pain. I would literally play cribbage with Andre in the locker room. Now, that's when Arnie Skolin didn't. If Arnie wasn't there in the town, and Andre was, and didn't have nobody to play cribbage, I knew how to play. So I said, hey, boss, my place, sure, John. He really liked me. And he, 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 and, uh, he would sit there, and I would watch him drink a whole bottle of brandy. Wow. And that would take, Ease it a little that bit? Would take the pain away, bottom line. How odd was it for him to navigate through rent a cars? Uh, did, would they have? Uh, a, ever, well, did ever, they have he, a didn't, he didn't rent no up? cars. Yeah. He didn't rent no cars. They had nothing. They had this big conversion van that actually, many years ago, Jake Roberts was the driver. Um, I thought he didn't like Jake. No, I'm talking many years oh, when okay. Jake was like 20 years old. Oh, okay, okay. Um, he probably didn't. And and anyways. Dan, uh, he, he didn't have to because Vince made sure that he had everything taken care of. He took care he of took, Andre. He, he, he got a conversion van with a big chair. He got, a, uh, he got uh, the room he got was a king-size bed, um, period. Uh, in, in Japan, the biggest room they could find, otherwise it's feet were sticking out the window damn near, really, for real, and on and on. But Vince did everything. He got tried to get Andre two first-class seats together so he could get the arm up and sit two first-class seats. And he had paid for it. And, he, and Andre was worth all that because wherever Andre went, if you were on his card, you had a huge payday. Yeah. It was a sellout. That's pretty cool. That's why you get your booking sheet and you go, <laughs> Andre, Andre once, Andre twice.
twice. Come on, more Andre, more Andre. Andre three, that's good. More, more, more. And Hogan was a little bit like that, but not like Andre. Now, Andre if, was automatic sellout. What about Warrior? No. Meant nothing. Well, not, no, didn't not mean so much. as much? No. Not so much. Savage? No. 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 All right, well. They were sick of Savage. They had enough. You know, well, you know, he had, by the time you came in, yeah, he, he had been there quite a while. I was sick of Savage. <laughs> well, speaking of the Hulkster himself, he won the WWF World title for the third time over that Iraqi sympathizing Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah. Uh, did you think it was a, a boost to the WWF to, after a year to finally see the championship back on Hogan again? The Warrior experiment really didn't work with him as the guy. Wait, when did he win it? A warrior won it at WrestleMania six. When did Hulkster win it? He won it back at WrestleMania seven. Yeah, that gave it a boost. Uh, I know that the, if you're on Hulk's card, you got paid better. So that's all we went by was you. You got paid better if you're on Andre or Hulk's card, and if you're on, um, if you're on a card with like Sergeant Slaughter versus. Uh, Terry Daniels, <laughs> you, were, you might as well say a hundred bucks, you know, it was a joke, but yeah, you're right. I think it was a boost, Dan. What did you think of the Hulkster? What did you think of Hulk? As a guy and as a professional? One thing I got to say I love about him is one night I blew all my money. I blew it, just blew it. And I says, Hulkster. Gave me a, I need 500 bucks. He pulled it out of his pants so quick. And he goes, here, boom. He goes, I go, I'll pay you tomorrow. Don't, he goes, don't worry about it. I don't need it. I got too much of it. So, wow, imagine saying that. Yeah, yeah. Must be a nice feeling. But, but I gave it to him the next day. Did you? So that kept me with Hulk. That's what I was feeling. Because if you do that with a guy, you're never the same with the guy, right? It's like what happened with, funny enough, again, hate to bury him, but Tony and Rocky Johnson. Rock, Tony was having a hard time. I think it, it was behind on his rent one month or something, and it came up in a conversation, and uh, Rocky sent his wife, his new wife, down to like a, a Western Union type place to send Tony the money. Then the next time they were on the same show together after they got paid by the promoter, Tony just kind of snuck off without saying anything to Rocky. What a fucker. So. Yeah, see that's. Rocky was a little stiff with him in a couple of interviews he did. Yeah. Right before he well, he should away. be. He should well, be. Well, he tried to do him a favor, if nothing else. But Tony said, in Tony's, to be fair to Tony, he said Rocky did some a few unscrupulous things to him over the years, stranding him at buildings and at hotels and well, trying to make him look bad. Again, who knows? I don't buy the it. The 100% truth to that. I don't buy it. We weren't, I, I wasn't there. I, don't, oh, buy, I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I'll tell you why. Because any guy can say that. You can say anything. You can screw a guy out of $1,000 and then go, yeah, but I remember one night um, I gave him two of my tires off my car because he needed them. And just make up something. To me, it's bullshit. Sorry. Don't work. Uh -oh. Not on me. So you're a man You might be right. Opinions. I'm not going to bet you no more, but you're, you you're might be right. You're 20 in the hole, brother. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fans, you might I'm be tell right. You this. When we have our live episodes, we need you to help us come up with some competitions so John can win his $20 back. I need that 20 back. <laughs> I'm in a real shithole right now. As far as you mentioned the professional side, I mean the personal side of the Hulkster with the 500, what did you think about him as a pro? I mean, I don't think you really worked with him a too, pro? too much. A pro? Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You want to hear the bottom line with yeah. the Hulkster? Okay. You're, you're all beat up. Kurt Henning, if he was alive, he'd be so beat up. All the bumps he took, all the bumps I took, all the bumps a lot of guys have taken. Hulkster did two things, this <laughs> and drop the leg. And me and Brad Rangans, we kind of laugh. We go, uh, he, he, he must have calluses all over on his uh, fucking leg from the guitar. <laughs> Boy, that's a rough life. That fucking guitar will kill you. You know, he only did two fucking things, this and dropped the leg. How beat up are you going to be? I mean, I got guys 
tell me, like, Wayne Bloom, I got an argument with him. And, I, and, and he goes, yeah, but fuck, he's been working a long time. I says, Wayne, he dropped a leg and did this. <laughs> fuck, what's wrong with you? Fuck, I get every backward over a table on, on my table, on the post. He did none of that. And you're feeling sorry for him? Sorry. That this that fucking cat don't work like that. That's what I got to say about that. A lot of people said he was kind of a manipulative individual, a very self-serving individual. Uh, Did he you was. ever see that side? Yeah, you saw yeah. that. Yeah. I think there's a lot of guys like that in wrestling because that's the nature of wrestling. Um, when we get to other guys, I'll tell you who's really bad, but we can't get there yet. Um, Hulk, absolutely self-serving, very it, much. Do you think it was a necessity based upon the nature of the beast? Like you said, you never know how much you're going to get paid. There's very few guarantees, very things locked in in the well, world. Well, here's the do thing. You think is, he need, do you think maybe he was, not to borrow a line from what you said about Randy Savage, but paranoid about keeping that spot and that money? Well, well listen, but here's the thing, Dan. How much money do you need? You got thirty million in the bank. You own an island, <laughs> and you're still paranoid. Why would you be paranoid? You're set for life, and because you kept chasing the money, because you stayed paranoid, still you lost your wife. She took it. It all blew up. You fucking ended up with almost nothing, but now you're back on, on Isn't roll. it funny, though? Yeah, the, the, his life almost imploded between that, what happened with his son and that uh, that car accident that took place. Yep, his son his was just and, a little fuckhead. You know that. And then after that whole sex video thing, he's, oh. he's back up on top of the world again. Yeah, yeah. How he much did you win on that? Uh, I think he, if I remember right, he got about $140 million. I don't think he collected anywhere near that, but well, I don't I'm know. sure I don't was... think you could collect that. I mean, who Well, that's what he was sure. awarded, but I know it was appealed. Right. It, it, for some reason, the number 40 popped into my head. Well, does it doesn't matter. Not it's, if it's in the millions, who cares if it's one or a hundred million? It was just a little... To us, it's the same. It's a million. As the Sheik would say, it was just a little sex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fans, right now we're going to take a brief time out before we wrap up this show as I'm waiting for John C. Manicus Riley to hit the mill. There he is. Hopefully you'll be having a little sex, too, after we're back from this brief time out. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Here's your chance to own a piece of history from the 2020 WWE Draft. On the second night, October the 12th, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss unleashed hell on Andrade and Zelina Vega. This limited edition 11x14 collector's poster is number 26 of only 50 made, personally signed by both The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, direct from friends at WWE. Comes with Certificate of Authenticity hologram on the poster itself, suitable for framing. You'll also receive a bonus autographed mystery photo and an on-air shout out as our thanks to you get this ultra rare autograph fiend and alexa bliss poster now join us for a professional wrestling reunion decades in the making april the 16th 
All right, wrestling fans, another fun trip down memory lane as we looked at the event that was WrestleMania 7. Many of the personalities involved in the big event. John, we continue to be having a heck of a lot of fun here yeah, on we Thursday we nights. Are. And again, folks, along with Thursday. the Thursday, Thursday nights we're talking about, baby. he's going to be coming back live. And we're talking in the yes. month of January. Yes, baby. We're going to be doing the cyber autograph signings. We're you guys can up. ask him questions live on the computer. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you missed the big uh, Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive event we had with John back in December, have no fear. In the month of January, WWE's getting ready for a Royal Rumble. We're going to have a Rumble right in this studio. For the latest, greatest member of the Boston Wrestling Sports team, I'm Dan Moriarty. Don't forget, tickets on sale now for Saturday night, April the 16th. You can meet John Nord the Berserker in person, Axe and Smash Demolition, Jake the Snake Roberts, and a host of others. For John Nord, I'm Dan Moriarty. You and yours, be well, be healthy. Good night Thank from Boston. Thank you very much. If you've been watching today's marathon since the beginning, folks, give yourself a Barry Horowitz-like pat on the back. We're having a great time gearing up for the Boston return of the Berserker this Sunday night for three big days of studio tapings in live cyber autograph signings. You can pre-order your 8x10 and 11x14s now to be signed by the big man live on the air, personalized any way you like as he interacts with you. Uh, over at bostonwrestling.com. Don't forget, we're also less than nine weeks away from our Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest extravaganza, Saturday night, April the 16th, at Memorial Hall right here in Melrose. The Berserker is just one of the legends coming to town, along with WWE Hall of Famer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champions, Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, the freshly announced Dangerous Danny Davis, and at least, at least two more 1980s WWF legends to be announced. If the VIP packages sell out, John Cena Sr. and I, again, are giving you our word. We're going to bring you even more 80s legends beyond the eight that we've advertised. That is our commitment to you. The event includes a VIP exclusive Q&A session before the fans enter. It includes an 80s VIP Legends group photo before fans enter. It includes an autograph and photo session open to everyone before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light the squared circle on fire with a hot night of professional wrestling. With that said, folks, Back to the Berserker. Leave your thoughts in the premier chat or in the comment section below. And don't forget to tip the bartender graciously, respectfully, using the world-famous Super Chat button for all of our hard work for you. Again, we cannot produce these shows without your help. Back to the Berserker. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another Thursday night. Uh, here on Wrestling Insiders, Throwback Thursday, Dan Marotti along with the Berserker, John Nord. John, a pleasure to have you with us again. Thank you. Appreciate it. The feedback hey, we're having a ball. The feedback continues to pour in. Uh, I love the it. fans are loving it. They love our new look on Thursday I love night. It. Poor Marty, I don't know. Hopefully we'll be seeing him sooner than later. Who's look, that, Marty? My uh, people like Potty. He's probably Marty. doing backstroke in the river. He was a little well at the Chattahoochee, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there was a he little jumped too off much the potty. Chattahoochee Bridge. I don't know if there is a bridge at the channel. Oh, remember the song? We're gonna. Oh no, there's a song Billy about. Joe, no, Billy Joe McAllister jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. It was what's her name? It was Glenn Campbell. Before my time. Bobby Gentry. I know the name. Oh my God! Help this guy. I know the name. Bobby Gentry. It's the day Billy Joe McAllister jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. Now we're gonna figure out how. Marty Janetti jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. We're gonna we're gonna incorporate. It. Well, give it time. Give it time. We're gonna figure Marty out too, but that might take a little longer. Yeah, that might take a while. All right, back to the World Wrestling Federation, 1991. John is a man that lived it, experienced it, didn't just read about it online. Uh, we saw Brutus the Barber Beefcake resurface from what was almost a near death from that parasailing yeah. accident that took place. Yeah. Um, a guy, kind of a polarizing figure in the business. Some guys like him. Uh, he made an appearance here in the studio where he didn't really endear himself to many, but uh, uh, some in the business, like Bret Hart in his book, said he was uh, Hulk Hogan's manservant. What were your thoughts and memories of uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake? Uh, uh, after he got hurt, um, 
And, and what I heard always got hurt was the board came and hit him in the face from the water, right? I think in his book he wrote it was the woman's knees. Wow. Okay, yeah. so I thought it was the board. But anyways, his face totally changed. Yeah, it did. And I just was shocked when I seen it. And I'm not, you know, making fun of him, but Kurt Henning used to make the face. He had his new face, Kurt would go, <laughs> like that. And I would start laughing so hard, I'd go, stop, stop, don't do it. Not. I said, beefcake's coming right now, don't do it. And Henning would go, and God, I laughed. Um, Beefcake, yeah, he was just a total. He, he was he was there because of Hulk Hogan. He had zero talent, zero, 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 zero. In my opinion, mm. um, I don't know. You know, you give a guy that can anybody can. You know, <laughs> he didn't take that many bombs. He didn't do it. What did he contribute? Hey. I don't wish the guy bad. Uh, hey, he trained, I heard he trained Mickey Rourke and the wrestler, him and he did? who, Valentine? Really? Yeah, I know trained R Mickey oh. Rourke, yeah. I seen him on Good Morning America the, the morning that the show came out. And uh, uh, Mickey Rourke goes, I'm just glad Brutus, and uh, uh, I think he said Valentine helped me out, um, taught me a lot, and I'm like, Beefcake is teaching you? That's <laughs> frightening. No kidding, right? No, it is. It's 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 but but I, I I'm here, I'm being really negative and all this shit, but I'm telling you, I told you I'd tell you the truth and I gotta. And beefcake, um, nothing personal, but you should have just went and got a fucking desk job somewhere. Oh. <laughs> Do you think he was like a glorified manservant to the Hulkster? Yes. I mean, was he around to help him with his whims and needs? Yes. What would he do? And would he carry his bags? Would he yeah, get him food? No, he... Hulk wouldn't let him look that obvious for what he would do for him. Mm -hmm. The stuff he would do for Hogan would be behind the scenes. Oh, okay. Like... Maybe go get a bottle of Percocets or from a guy that Hulk don't want to see because Hulk will get told on because he's Hulk Hogan. Just stuff like that. Does that make sense? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he ain't an upfront guy, but um, Beefcake. I never knew him that well. Um, he wasn't. He was always nice to me, but you know, he he wasn't. He wasn't going to try to be my friend either. So I don't know what to say about Beefcake. Um, you weren't but, impressed with the in-ring work, I guess. Is no, the no, thing. no. He's another guy with not two left feet, but three left feet. So, But he was cordial enough to the boys? Yeah. Because it seems like, 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 I, like I said, a polarizing figure. A lot of the guys liked him, and then yeah. there was that but big he posse was, that couldn't stand him. But see, he was just so... In, in, Colossally, he was a colossal Borat. I mean, when you, when you come up, and, you know, Brutus, if you're going to tell a story, have a point. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, what are you talking about? No, I mean, he just fucking had just. He, he bored talked, you when you spoke to him? He talked about nothing. And I'm like, this, why he's talking, I'm going. <laughs> And he still don't get it. <laughs> that again. No, he don't get it. He's still talking. Was he, uh, d was he vain? Was it about him? Not at all. Oh, really? yeah, no, okay. I mean, no. no, he wasn't vain. He was just like, just almost like a little kid. That's why it's hard. You could not hate the guy, but you could damn sure go, enough. <laughs> this is so fucking boring. You're so fucking boring. Hit the road, tell your story, walk <laughs> Well, I, to be fair, I, did, I thought the interviews we did were rather interesting. Like I said, the, I think it was a personality 
issue he had with some of the people here at the studio. Not like you, where we've had so much fun today. Wow, well, but... that's not even, that's, that's, that's being fair. That's being overly fair. And, and I think it's unfair. What's lousy on his end is that where he has family in the area and he's here visiting, it'd be awfully easy for him to, you know, come on down, tell a few stories when he's here, and do a little business and, you know, have a little something extra absolutely, on the side. Absolutely, absolutely. Why well, ruin here, that? Well, here's know? the thing, though, is Hogan would get big paydays, right? right? Of the fucking thing. And then they knew they had to give Beefcake a good payday or Hogan would say something. Oh, or get they pissed. didn't want to listen so to him. So here's yeah. this fucking guy getting more money than me that can't shine my fucking shoes. Fair enough. Got and it. I can see and I can see how that would be a result. That's what pisses you off more than anything. I couldn't quite figure it. It was in there. I just You got it though. You got it out. I got and it. that makes perfect sense. I mean, who wouldn't be resentful? I it like is. That? Absolutely. You know, Hogan, how can you resent that? He's the one that's putting the food on your table. Yeah. But, yeah. but for Brutus to have a better table than you could be a difficult pill to swallow. Right. You know? All right. Right. Well, right. There you go. All right. House shows, they finally started you gearing up in the springtime. Two of the guys you worked with early on, Jimmy Powers and Tugboat. Memories of either, both? Well, Jimmy Powers, um, perhaps another colossally bore-ass guy. <laughs> now, His face you... never changed. He did a few fire-ups like this, <laughs> and that was it. And one time on the plane, um, Jimmy Powers lost to me, and I went to the flight attendant if she would announce congratulations <laughs> to Jim Powers for his last and final loss. And she announced it on the plane. <laughs> and Powers goes, who did that? Who did that? I said, what me? Fuck, I, I just wrestled you. I don't worry about it. <laughs> so it was just, he was just fucking terrible. Who's the next guy? Tugboat. Snugboat. We call him Snugboat. A little snug. Yeah, he's a little snug. His underwear were always snug up there. All right, well. Okay, but that's a whole other story. Snugboat was a great guy. Very, very nice guy. Actually, like a little kid and super nice and he was huge yeah big the guy. guy if he got mad i would almost i don't know how you could stop him you know he was huge but like a little kid and i can't dan i can't say nothing bad about him so that one is he's he's a wonderful guy good guy that's it the best any fun memories of tugboat Fun? Working with him. Any, any, any he, good he was so easy to work with. He was easy with. to work with? Oh, God. He was light as a feather. And he only weighed 900, you know, <laughs> on a good day. But, no, he was that easy. He was, and a great, wonderful guy. Did he mind doing jobs? Because he, no. he put you over quite a bit. No. No. No, he didn't want it. All right, easy enough. He didn't, he didn't mind doing April 20th, 1991, right here in the great city of Boston, you finally made at least your WWF debut. I don't know if you were here before that, but any memories of the old Boston Garden, the arena itself? You w went over on... Yeah, Snugboat? I remember walking up that damn board. And the ramp? Yeah, that damn ramp. And God, what a long walk. And then having to walk through the concourse. Yeah, to the all room. that. And all I could think of was Bobby Orr walking on his skate. <laughs> and a relatively short walk to the ring from the locker room too yeah 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 it was no, a lot easier to get from the locker room to the ring than it was to get into the building <laughs> right yeah. it was yeah yeah um well i i i just i'll tell you what i remember more than wrestling is the boston garden i remember you know bobby Orr, who was the big tall great me uh, mier uh, player, uh, Mario. Mario or, Lemieux? Yeah. He was on the Penguins. He was on Penguins. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, different guy. Okay, so anyways, Bobby Orr. Uh, and uh, But see, we would do four shows in two days. 
we would do Boston, you know, like, like what I can remember, like Philly, and then Madison Square Garden, and then somewhere else. And if you did four days, you made some damn good money. And that made your whole paycheck. But you had to work your ass off, and it was four, four days. Or four shots in two days. On the weekends? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it was, you made great money, and that's what made your check. You had to put in the time to get the dime. Yeah, you, yeah. you did. You did. And it was really great wrestling Jim Powers because his face would do this. <laughs> anyway. Well, at least you didn't have to do too much work with him. Uh, I, I love Jimmy. Jimmy, I love you. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't help it. Someone that used to have some special skills uh, that would make people's faces do a little bit more than that. I don't know if you'd stay at the Hilton when you're here in Boston, but did you ever get to know a lot of the guy's old friend, Danny the Ass Eater? You mean Danny the Rep? No, Annie the Ass Eater. Oh, Ass Eating she, Annie? Yeah. Of course Not, I know her. Well, she's become kind of like a cult favorite on she the show. She is. Yeah. Now, did she, she, did she ever try and get up the tourniquet? She... Here's what I remember about ass eating Annie. We'd, we'd go down at the we go we go down to the bar at the Hilton, and <laughs> and and I'm sitting there at the bar, and this is one of the first times she started her career as ass. There's an Annie. ass eater. Yeah. Yeah. She walks up to Kurt Henning and she goes, "I bet you I can get the whole thing in my mouth," and that fucking Henning. He was worth, I seen him with some of the ugliest girls on planet Earth. Um, one time in the AWA, this like giant girl was sitting on the bed. And I walk in, I says, hey, have you seen Henning? We gotta go. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's sitting right by her. <laughs> he popped over and he goes, and he goes, like this, here I am. I'm like, oh my God. And you gotta remember, he was 180, crooked teeth, sandy brown hair, not, you know, Mr. Perfect, but Kurt Henning, the small guy. And it was just hilarious. But Annie, I gotta say, because I like her so much, um, would she say to you, how you doing, baby? <laughs> She would go like this. Remember that time? <laughs> I'm gonna go, Annie, there was no time. Please don't say that. <laughs> what was it about her magic tongue, do you think, that made Greg Valentine actually crack a smile? Um, Brutus Beefcake dedicated almost an entire chapter of his book to the romance between Greg and Annie. Right, right. What would happen as her tongue went in the butthole, <laughs> the legs would go back like a jackhammer, like a, like a hydraulic jack. Annie's legs? No, the oh, guy's the legs. Okay, yeah. yeah, it was a hydraulic jack and nothing could stop it. <laughs> what made her such a specialist, I wonder? It's, I mean, like, a, it it's like the blob. <laughs> nothing can stop it. The blob. I don't know. She just had it. Now, did you ever meet the sister, Gina? She looked kind of like Big Bird. She was operated more out of the Holiday Inn. Oh, oh wait, whoa! That's a you're tall... going places. You're so, right. You're you right. Think I'm going places. What do you think I am, Annie's tongue? You're writing checks my body can't <laughs> cash. Okay. <laughs> did you ever meet Gina? No. She was. She was a large woman. Didn't look anything like I, Annie. I might have, but I just don't remember. She was about your height. If that I might have, I just don't remember. Annie wow. looked to me more like Adrian Adonis before he died his yeah, hair. Blonde, yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, it, but Annie just, I mean, how are you going to not like that girl? That girl was just, she would do anything for you. Literally. She would, she would <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. Can we move on? Everyone wants to except for Greg, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just, I'm always interested to see what the, what the guy's uh, memories are. Well, I talked to Valentine 
And I said, you don't look like you're getting older. You look like someone put you in a microwave for a fucking year. <laughs> well, it's probably because he lives out in Vegas now. He needs that Boston loving. Fuck. Well, anyway. Anyway. Uh, anyway, you know, Greg, he really disappointed me. He was supposed to be part of our Paul Barrow Holiday Headlocks toy Ooh. drive. The Hammer. Yeah. And um, we, we, had, we had a session with a few guys out in Las Vegas as sure. part of the Cauliflower Alley Club. Sure. And, um, we had D'Lo Brown, The Godfather, Papa Shango, Kevin Sullivan, and the day Greg was supposed to come, he no-showed. And it was because he was, it's not like he had to worry about Annie out in Las Vegas. <laughs> he was upset that he was going to run into Medusa. <laughs> really? Yeah, because I guess they I had their little... I wonder what they're letter. weighing, what she's weighing. Which, how much is she weighing? These days. Uh, Alondra Blaze? Uh, uh, she's no, She's still in, um, yeah, Medusa. She was Alondra Blaze. In WWE, uh, weight-wise, probably not too far off from where she was wrestling-wise. Pretty cool. Personality-wise, you know, we can talk about that too. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> total into herself. Oh, my God! Oh. I'm ashamed to say she's from Minnesota. I didn't even know she was until she was here in studio yeah. with us. Well, but we had a very interesting interview, and I, like you said, she's you're uh, lucky. She's fucking lucky she didn't interview with me. Great. Oh, now I got to hear why. Why? Medusa? Yeah. Because she's so into herself. Now what would you have asked her? I would have fucking asked her. Uh, uh, what do you got? Uh, uh, nipples that are gold plated, or <laughs> you know, you got a gold plated quick? Look at your ass. It's all <laughs> saggy and shit. Get the fuck out, honey. <laughs> Who that's, needs you? That's how the interview... That, you know what? I, I wouldn't have made that comment about her ass, but she, she was not one of the more pleasant experiences we had. Fuck her. I'm sorry for swearing so much. Well, you know, an event we had Bob Backlund, Bushwhacker Luke, Luke even Crazy Mike. Bob Backlund? And just oh if you... Uh, well, all right. Well, <laughs> I think Bob's slipping. Yeah. Bob, Bob had yeah, I few, think his fucking cheese slid off his cracker. I, you know, that might be a way to put it. He's, uh, <laughs> he's, it was odd. It was a very odd weekend that he's you missed. Not, it was a very odd he's weekend bat you missed. He's shit crazy, to say the least. Or, no, he is. It is age slipping, or both. Uh, he's, he's just, what, 70? He ain't that old. He's in his early 70s, yeah. Uh, yeah. But he, well, every time sure. he took a picture with one of the fans, he got up and left and tried to go and sell his book. I mean, it was like trying to navigate a six-year-old. Another book? Well, he only had one, but he's still selling it. <laughs> How many books can these guys fucking write? <laughs> the, the only one that's missing is yours. Yeah, well, fucking, no, that ain't fucking happening. Well, hey, who needs a book when you got wrestling inside his throwback Thursdays? We'll be back with the final segment after this brief. Time out. Thank you. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the berserker John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come, unfortunately, where we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursday, Dan Marotti, along with your new host with the most, Mr. John Noida. We've yes, been sir. having a hell of a lot of fun on this show. Yes, sir, we have been. And who the biggest star of this show, I think sometimes even we forget, 
Are those people over there? Her, him, That's right. that guy back That's there, right. there, 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 there. Right. Because without great professional wrestling fans like you, we'd just be sitting here talking amongst ourselves hey, like it was fan, you and Andre. Wrestling fans are the coolest because they just kick ass all the time, and that's a shoot that's for real. You guys are top shelf. And again, if you guys want to interact with us live, L-I-V-E, we're shooting towards the tail end of January. Berserker John Nord back here in the studio telling more great stories, cyber autograph signing so you guys can get autographed pictures personalized to you and mailed off. We love to see what you're saying in the premiere chat on Thursday nights when you include your comments on what we're talking about. Or if you can't join us on Thursday, believe it or not, I do realize not everybody on the planet can be glued to their computer on Thursday nights at 10. Leave your thoughts on the show in the comment section below. We're really interested to know what you think. Uh, again, if you're with us live, the Super Chat button is always open for business. It helps us keep the lights on in this fine studio, helps the staff keep flowing through, helps us bring in great superstars like the Berserker John Nord. Oh, God. Um, you know, the airfare, the hotel, believe it or not, they don't say, hey, it's free. Uh, those things add up in a hurry. And, you know, M Marty still wants to come back. He's ready to party like never before. We have a whole group of superstars. Axe and Smash Demolition are very excited about joining us again this year. Uh, Bushwhacker Luke has had a lot of fun. Uh, so the list keeps growing and growing, John. It does. And it that's does. what we need to see because, as we've seen with too many of our brothers, we yep. never know when we're going to lose one and we're never going to get oh, to hear man. their stories Ain't again. that's the true. Just in this studio alone. Ain't that the truth? Percy, Matt Earth. Bourne, oh, man. Leon White, Vader, yeah. Paul Orndorff several times, Holly Race. Paul, we yeah, um, forgot about him. My Harley. gosh, who else? There's so uh, there's Just on Kamala, and on. Ugandan giant. Yeah, Ugandan giant. There's, yeah, we'll um, never be able to hear any more no. other than what we already did, and that no, sucks. It's, it is that it's we'll never see him again. When we had Unless the original, we see him in heaven. Yeah, and we'll see him there. But when we had the original incarnation of this April 16th event, Road Warrior, when it was 80s themed all the way, Animal was going to be with us, and he was going to be there in that very seat, and Paul was going to be with us again mm -hmm. in that very seat. We're not going to have a chance to talk to him, nope. which is pretty lousy. God, it's crazy. Which is why we employ you fans. You know, I, one thing that it was insulting to me was that they almost said, you're trying to push death. I, I, it, I feel like we're just trying to push the reality of the situation. Wrestling yeah. is a tough industry. It is. A lot tough. of our folks don't live into the '80s and '90s. You know what I mean? Right. And and everybody has their own road they take in their life. Right. Why stuff happens, only God knows. But we're living um, the best we can, and we got the best people. If if you don't think that wrestling fans are better than football, hockey, baseball. You're crazy. You guys are the best, and I'm just not saying that. All right, fans. So, again, uh, continue us to join us every Thursday night. But, again, we're going to have the special live episode in January where we're going to be able to interact with John L-I-V-E. Live. So now we go back to 1991, April the 22nd. You mentioned your world tour de force. Uh, we head over to merry old England on April the 22nd. Uh, before you made the European stop in Montreal, Quebec, God is still out of the country. You suffered your first loss to the late, great Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog, a man yep. you said you could really lay it in on. At that point, he had Winston. Jake the Snake had Damien. Yeah. Coco had Frankie. What was it like to be around so many animals when you were on the road? I don't know. All I know is they stunk. And I'll tell you something. Davey hated t taking that bulldog. Oh, Did he? man, he couldn't stand it. It was just a lot of work and a lot of stuff. And uh, he hoped that he, you know, Davey was the type of guy that would walk up to the office after he got his paycheck and say, what am I supposed to do with this? Oh, really? Yeah, like it wasn't enough. He was one of the few guys that did that. But when we were in England, uh, me and Davey were main event. And I got to say, we had one of the best matches that I think I ever had. We just ate them up. We just had people. 
That's because Davy was so over. Yeah. You know, oh, especially over, over in England. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in England. And he's just, they all stood up, boom, boom, pounding. And then here comes the comeback, and that was just great. Well, and you know what? I think, as a matter of fact, that, that match took place the same week we're going to be talking about now. Uh, Marty, when he was here in the past, he said that the, some of the pets took a little abuse. Did you ever see that? Yeah, Especially they, the snakes being thrown around in the bag. The, like the they, snake, that's Jake. <laughs> Jake, who knows what Jake did with that snake. Jake probably but fucking put it in the nurse's uh, laundry chute or something. I don't well, know. I, again, I don't know how many of, of Marty's stories you want to share on your program, but Marty said... Um, when Jake would do a little bit of the medicine, he had a hard time closing with the women. And he'd give a call to Marty's room to come and finish off the lady of the night. Yeah. And one time he went down, it was with WWF office personnel in the bedroom, and the female already had Damien's tail inside of her. Uh, so there were some wild nights with those snakes, I guess. Oh, my God. See, I don't <laughs> know that <laughs> well, you I gotta, don't know that shit. If you're, I, if you're online back in Minnesota, you got to catch up with some of Marty's old episodes, I guess. Oh, God. Wow, Marty, when you're drunk, it's the old thing. When you're drunk, you'll damn near do almost anything. And literally, he almost did. Yeah, and he did. And he did. I know, I know, and Marty was absolutely crazy that way, you know. But it just, it wasn't my style. I'm not saying I'm any better, but... Marty just, he, 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 he partied. He's partied. I, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put Marty party, but I'll tell you something. Marty, I bury Marty in a drinking contest. Really? Oh, God, give me a break. Well, I don't know. I've never seen Really? Him. I've never seen you I would through a wall. just leave him laying in the dust. He'd be in some alley all twisted oh, up. Oh, well, maybe we'll have to have that on the New Year's well, Eve special. Well, let's have a all right, all right. drinking We'll contest. get him back then. You mentioned Jake, though. Uh, you put him over very positively yeah. in one of our prior episodes. He's a complicated man. Is that a good well, way to put it? Well, he is, but I'll tell you something. He grew up in a dysfunctional family. His dad was Grizzly Smith. First time I met him was in uh, Mid-South. He took me and went and got a haircut when I was the barbarian. Are you talking about Grizzly or Jake? I'm talking about Grizzly and Jake. Okay. Uh, Grizzly was the booker in 1985 in Mid-South. Uh, Jake was a great guy. He said, Jake, take care of him. Um, he's going to be your partner. And we got over. We got seriously, we got over. And um, the only thing I didn't realize was Grizzly was taking young girls into his uh, hotel room, like... And we're not talking 18 or even 16. Exactly. We're talking well little said. girls. Well, well said. And when I learned that, it took me three months. I don't watch shit real close. It took me three months to realize that, and I was just, like, pissed. Then me and Jake started, and I had a link, and I leased. I got a hell of a deal on a, you know, an 85 Lincoln. It was just beautiful car. And, and uh, Jake always rode with me. And um, me and Cheryl and Jake and my wife had dinner. And uh, Jake and Cheryl were so highly going, this is really good. Oh, wow. And me and my wife were looking at each other going. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just funny. But I'll tell you what, Jake, with me and Jake, there's a picture on YouTube that has got me and Jake on there, and I'm in shape. Like, it's black and white, and he's behind me with his hands on my shoulders. It's my favorite picture. Really? Yeah. We'll have to see if we can dig that up for yeah. the episode. Oh, just awesome. And to me. To me. Do you think that that experience he had growing up is what turned him into a complicated man in the yes. confines of wrestling? Yes. I mean, and yep. I don't know if you ever saw the or have heard of the Dark Side of the Ring series, but yeah. I mean, he even insinuated that there was sexual relations with some of Grizzly's wives. Yes. I mean, how would that not mess up a kid? I, I know it was just sick. And then what? And I hear somebody got killed. 
We got buried. In their family? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Now that you mention it, see, it's been... Uh, right? Yeah. It's hard something, to remember all this shit, ain't it? The, well, look at the people we've met. <laughs> but no, yeah, you, yeah, there yeah, was some... Yeah, there was something, but see... Uh, and then he had, a, I think, a retarded sister. Okay. Grizzly Smith or Jay? Jake's sister was retarded. Rock and Robin or another sister? I think Robin. He had one sister that wrestled. Robin? Rock and Robin, yeah. She was WWF Women's Champion. Okay, Sam Houston he... was, uh, well, I think they were half brother oh, and yeah, sister. Sam and him won't talk. It's oh, really? Like 20 years. Oh, really? But anyway, I'm in the back seat, Grizzly, and, and, and we're going out back home at a long shot. And I just got a boner, and I'm just, and I don't even know who's next to me. I can't see. It's too dark <laughs> in the car. And I think it was Rob. And I took her Rock hand. and Robin yeah, filleted you? I took you? her hand, and I went. And I put her right on there, and next thing I know, I was going. <laughs> <laughs> it was all over, you know, and anyway. Robin Rock. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, I think they might have known, but I think I might have pulled it off because Jake would have said something, I think. But, yeah, Jake, uh, Louisiana is an adulterous state. Is it? Oh, my God. Why is that? I think their morals are just messed up from the Cajuns and shit. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm not kidding you. Um, why? I don't know. I hope I'm not judging anybody, but good God, it is what it is. And, uh, uh, and Grizz and the way Jake is, they're just morally messes un until someday they get their shit together morally. Well, I think Jake is in a better place now. Definitely. Uh, it'd be hard to be in a worse place, but I mean... Definitely. You know, it just seems like the whole family needs a little bit of help. I don't know if, like I said, I don't know if they do. And, seen and, that and dark side of the ring episode. Well, and we all good. need, and we all need help. It's In just that there is, yeah. that it's just that theirs is more prevalent, way more out there. So, yeah. yeah, I agree. And it's too bad because you know, what would life have been like for them if, uh, if yeah. they came into the world under more normal circumstances? Yeah. Not to have a 12-year-old mother, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was, who, I mean, who knows what happened. All I know is Jake, uh, Jake was a really good guy back then, and he was really a good partner in the ring, and he taught me shit that I still can't do because only Jake's body moves that way. My body got too beat up too quick. Yeah. But, yeah. And a great mind for the business. Yep. It's too bad that his problems took away the chance to work in creative with WWF when he had that chance in 96. Yeah. Because, you know, especially at a time when the business was in a rough shape in 96, he potentially could have added an awful lot to it if he still wasn't battling the, the, the personal demons or exactly, the personal exactly. choices, whatever you J want to call Jake, them. Jake could pop any territory. Yeah. Any territory. Even now. He could pop, because, especially now, because of, of, of the, the, uh, all, the, all the press on the Get Sober deal. Yeah. You know, the resurrection of Jake Roberts. That's over. That thing's still over. Jake is one of those guys that'll be over until the day comes when he takes his last breath. Probably. He's one of just one of those guys. Well, it's such a name, Jake the Snake. Oh, Robert. yeah. That's just cool. Perfect name. That's just like perfect look. Perfect name, look. Um, and, you know, he don't even got to lift weights, and he still looks like he can hurt somebody. Yeah. Yeah. The guys that don't lift usually don't look like they can hurt anybody, and that's my bit to him. You don't look like you can hurt anybody. Get out of here. He still looks like a reasonably tough guy that you wouldn't want to screw with if you ran into him in an alley. Reasonably. Even without, you know, having that big reasonably. gas stuff look. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. All right, wrestling fans, don't you be a snake. Right now, we're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back to wrap up the show as Wrestling Inside is Throwback Thursday with John Nord continues. Stand by. All right. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Party Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. After successful cancer surgery, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan plus three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition. WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, The Wild Berserker, and at least three more WWF icons. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive group 80s legends photos, autographs, individual photos, all before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Get your VIP packages and tickets now to secure the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College March 26. Tickets and Superstar Experience packages on sale now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back. As How the time flies, John, when we get talking about wrestling. Oh. And, and sometimes uh, even when we don't talk about wrestling. It's, born, it's, born it's not one of those beefcake conversations. It or ain't a Jim Powers conversation. Jim Powers, right, right. <laughs> yeah, exciting, guys. We mentioned you working Davy Boy just a little while ago. Yeah. I almost wanted to, to chop your tongue off, not like Annie's, but um, because I didn't want to ruin <laughs> this one. On April the 28th, Manchester, England, you worked the British Bulldog in his native land. Only this time he was managed by, I believe, in what would be his first appearance in three years and maybe his final ever in WWF, the Dynamite Kid. Yeah. And what, did you get a chance to interact with Dynamite at all? Did I ever get a chance to actually lock up with him? No, I think he was long done by that point. Oh, but yeah. just he had a, another personality uh, that many Great. weren't big <laughs> on. Yeah. Your memories are of having at least that one match where Dynamite was involved as a, even a manager at ringside. Well, Dynamite was, you felt so sorry for him. Yeah. That you just weren't going to kick him or hit him hard, you know, although you heard about him being such a legend, um, although most people say at his best, he was the best failure, which I might agree with. But I got a few guys at home that have never wrestled that I can say if they did wrestle, they are just absolute freaks. Um, they're like about dynamite size. They can do standing flips. There's a kid that just signed with Vince, uh, uh, Gable Stevenson. Oh, he was just in uh, the front row at Raw last night, as a matter of fact. There you yeah. go. My son wrestled him. Oh, really? Trained him when he was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And he's a kid that uh, never lost at the Minnesota High School wrestling. That's seven years in a row, state champ. Wow. And could do a backflip, standing backflip after he won. He is a freak of nature. Then he does a gold medal. Nobody can beat him. Now, if Vince has him lose to anybody, I would be seriously let down we because he, he is absolutely a freak. How tall of a guy is he? 6'2", 255. In this day and age, that's big. Yeah, well, a guy that can move, do what he's doing. Yeah. He, he can take anybody down. It, 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 nobody can beat him. One guy beat him from Penn State in the last 15 years. Wow. Do you know him at all, or just you've observed Yeah, 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 I met him. Yep, me and my son. Me and my son met him. They go, hi, hi Mr. Nord, you know, and he's a, he's a great guy. My son uh, is a wrestling coach for Columbia University, so mm -hmm. 
Um, he tried recruiting them, but he wasn't going to get them. But Minnesota got them because Minnesota is known for their yeah. heavyweights. Yeah. You got Brock Lesnar. You got Sheldon. On, on and on. Sheldon. You got, uh, what's the other one? Uh, I mean, it goes on and on more than you could ever know. Uh, but you know who the greatest uh, wrestler of all time is, don't you, collegiately? I thought you would know. Who do we got? Would you say Danny Hodge? Oh, how could you forget that? Yeah. Danny Hodge is close. It's not Danny Hodge, okay. No. Oh. This guy wrestled for Iowa State. Dan Gable? No, no, close. Iowa State, Division One, and Division One guys got more muscle on them than like Division Two or Three. Okay, they're they're like bodybuilders because they've been wrestling since they've been four years old, six hours a day on the mat. They're animals. They're absolute animals. And this guy, record. I mean, he never got an ankle out of place. He never got turned this way out of place. His four-year college career record, Division One, the big boys, 159 and 0. Wow. Who? Cale Sanderson. I have no idea. The who head, that is. He's the head coach at Penn State. Right now? Yeah. And he, he's the greatest collegiate wrestler of all time. Without question. Really? Well, great. He's a cool guy to check up on. Um, he's, an, he's a point scoring machine. I, he's, he's incredible to watch his old matches. I mean, he's a 198 pounder, too, so he wasn't a small guy. Yeah. But for 198, he had a brother from Utah. You know, he had a family he lived in Utah. He had a brother, Cody, that's his assistant coach. And Cody, I think, won nationals. I think he. Uh, you know, maybe lost four or five matches in mm -hmm. in uh, in college, but without boring you, at Iowa State, one fifty nine and all is just maybe the freakiest record I've ever heard of. Wow! Do you Not th wants to get caught out of position. Did he ever have any aspirations of going pro? Do you know? Or? No, no, none. 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 Do you think Stevenson has the the personality that WWE would like? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think he's a little flaky. Oh, really? Okay. We'll see. Oh, that could be a good thing. You we'll never... <laughs> see. Well, you we'll know. see. He could be a little flaky, and I tell you what, he's 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 in it for the money, and that could hurt him. He's got to keep his head on. You, you follow me? Yep. You got to keep your head screwed on. And me and Joe, my son, just got doubts about how he's going to handle it. So hopefully he's going to get a mentor that's going to be beside him, that Vince will give him some kind of mentor. A veteran. A veteran that will keep him thinking, acting straight. Because nobody can beat him. Well, Nobody. It's not happening. They, Jerry Briscoe and I had a conversation not too long before the, the virus began, and it was what happened to all the big guys. To be able to get someone 6'2", 250 pounds, that's the machine like you're talking about, that on paper it sounds like could be a potential WrestleMania main eventer, you know? He's, he is. Yeah. He is. If anybody, that's why it pisses me off about Goldberg. You, you make Bischoff's head got so effed up that he gave Goldberg 80 some wins. And some people started thinking he was really a great wrestler. <laughs> He's not. He was a good football player. He was a nice guy. I met him. I think I was one of his first jobs. Yeah, you worked him. Yep. You I think him. I think I was one of the first jobs I had to do with him. Anyways, um. Uh, and it's when my body was all fucked up from nerve damage. But anyways, um, to give that guy, you know, and, and he starts bragging about his son, how he's got to just do it and wrestle it. I'm like, dude, it was given to you. You didn't win nothing, you know? So it, it, it really does piss me off.
about Goldberg because Bischoff's head got fucked up and he started fucking giving. Yeah, Goldberg ended up drawing some money. He did, yeah. For I got to give him that. Time. But you could have put, if you push anybody that hard, you're going to draw money. Come on. As long as you're built. Yeah. Um, and, and he had that build. But the thing is, is, uh, you, you know, fast a guy like Gable Stevenson could tie him in a knot? I mean, like within five seconds. Yeah. Um, I'm not a hater on Goldberg. I'm just pissed off still at this group that treated everybody like shit. In, in what was a federation called? WCW. WCW, Nash, Hall, Bishop. And Bishop was going to give me a push, but my body fell apart. Uh, Arn Anderson came up and said, so why did you quit working out? I said, I didn't. I, I got nerve damage. I'm trying to work through it. And that stopped right there. And it broke my heart. I'm wow. telling you, it broke my heart. Anyways... Um, um, and, and, and on and on about these guys that, uh, that fucking just, and here's another one that makes me almost fucking throw up. Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> now why A he... fucking bar manager from a strip joint, no ass, no legs, <laughs> fucking his face looked like it was stretched from a fucking some kind of elastic um the fucking guy well i mean what's that bang what do you mean bang what the fuck does that mean come on fucking page you're a punk you help jake out get sober and i don't believe you're sober jake anyways but anyways Ah, uh, Diamond Dallas Page, all I got to say to you is fucking bang. Go bang yourself. But listen, I'm not hating on you. Although it sure sounds like it. But you thought you were actually a wrestler. You're gone and you made money. You should have been fucking kicked out. You don't let bar managers at strip clubs with no ass and no athletic ability into wrestling. Do you get it? Well, do you think him getting it uh, with the reported swinging that used to go on with the Bischoffs and the Pages helped? What do you mean? Uh, like a little wife swap. You think they did that? I heard that from some people that I think would know. See, my mind works like I, I just don't believe that. You don't think that. they'd be swinging? I just don't no. believe that. See, but I did know uh, Bischoff's wife from high school. Did you? Yeah. Angel. Oh, Minnesota, right. Yeah, okay. Angel. Called her Angel. A little blonde, beautiful. But but Bischoff uh, was, was just, I mean, he was just a total little punk. But he wasn't in our high school. Oh, okay. He went to school in Minnetonka, which was another high school. And... Uh, uh, the, but the bottom line is, is, you know, he ended up making a lot of money in Turner. And I still ain't hating on Eric because he gave me a buck and a half. Hey, year. you can't complain about no, that, right? You put no. money, fed your family. But for a I bit. forgot all about Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, my God. The most ass. He made Brian Knobs <laughs> look like a fucking world class sprinter. Wow. Well, wrestling fans, uh, I, I asked John C. to take it to the center cameras. We're running short on time once again. We'll take a brief time out. We'll be back to wrap up the show. Thanks. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. But we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him in our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link 
in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. All right, wrestling fans, more twists and turns is only our new partner in crime on Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursday can throw him down. Mr. Yes, John Nord, John, Thank more you, laughs, sir. more fun this week. We're Yo, looking baby. forward to having him live this month, a little later in January. Keep checking our social media platforms for information on that. Nice. If you're with us live on the Thursday night premiere, leave your thoughts in the premiere chat or in the comment section below. Of course, the super chat button helps us keep the lights on. It helps us bring you legends like yes. the Berserker John Nord back here to Boston. Please. For Thank these you. live interviews, these Please. shoots, Thank you. great live events like we have in April 16th Please. at Memorial Thank Hall. You. Cough, cough. Uh, anything you can do to help spread the word on social media, it goes a long way. For the man in the booth, booth duh, Mr. John C. Manicus Riley, I'm Dan Marotti. For the host with the most, John Nord, you and yours, be well, be healthy. Good night from Boston. Good night. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. At Night of Champions 2020, Tribal Chief Roman Reigns successfully defended the WWE Universal Championship against his cousin, Jey Uso, in a must-see battle. Here is your chance to own a piece of Roman Reigns moments before battle on this beautiful limited edition autographed 11 by 14 poster direct from friends at WWE. It's number 19 of only 50 made. Includes WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Suitable for framing and matting, you'll also also receive a bonus Legends autographed 8x10 photo in an on-air shout-out on Wrestling Insiders as our thanks for helping keep wrestling legends working. Get this ultra-rare Roman Reigns autograph poster now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday. I'm throwing it over to John Nord as we uh, break through the memories, the experiences, the life this man has had in this industry Going back to, what, the early 1980s, I think, when yes. you broke in? Yeah, correct. I tell you, in this episode, the fans, you know, we always encourage their thoughts, their questions and such. They wanted Absolutely. us to, uh, one thing I really like to do, and it, it's almost on par with what we do with Paul Bear every year for the toy drive, we like to try and remember our fallen brothers. Because, you know, where sometimes it happens so quick, it's so fast, it's so furious. Their names are in the wrestling news for a day or two. And then it's forgotten, and they're on to the next one. You make me cry. Well, it's important to me, and it's always been important to me. Absolutely. That's why the Cauliflower Alley Club means so much to I, me. I agree with you all the way, except magnify it times 100. I love your talk. You lived them. You I lived with them. I love your talk. All right. Some of these guys, I don't know if you had any experience with. I don't know if you ever met them. Maybe you had unique, great experiences with them. So we have a list here of about, okay. oh, I'd say... Maybe around ten. Let's see how many we can fit in. I'll throw the name at you. If you got a any whatever comes to mind, you uh -huh. share with us, and we'll go from there. Okay. One guy that really meant a lot to me that we lost in 2021. He was actually going to be a part of our uh, Back to the 80s event, April 16th at Memorial Hall with okay. you, Jake Demolition, uh, the late great Mr. Wonderful Paul Ondor. Yes, I did know Paul. And uh, Paul was very close to Brad Rangans. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, uh, when he was over at his best, he was an icon, brother. He played football at the University of Tampa, and I love uh, guys that play football. Um, other guys that played at the University of Tampa was a guy named John Matuzak, number one player over everybody in the 1970 draft, I think it was 70, Freddie Solomon. I just love football, but that's what it brings me to Brad. And he used to be a big hunter, you know, him and Brad Rankins would go hunting boars and pigs and all kinds of crazy stuff. But um, God rest his soul, he, he, uh, it was time to go home and Paul 
was, uh, you know, I met him a couple times. I was not a good friend, a good, good friend of his, but I was a friend and we really liked each other. Uh, it's too bad you weren't more of an internet guy. I'd love to show you some of the interviews that Paul and I did here in studio. Nice. They were very, very, very good. Nice. We had him here twice for those in-depth interviews. It's did just, you? It's, yeah, it's sad that, you know, we'll never be able to do it again. As I like to continue to note, when the fans help out on You don't things, mind if I drink beer? No, 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 not at all. Uh, when the fans join the Patreon or they help on the eBay or anything like that, it goes a long way and us being able to afford to bring these great talents to the studio I, I agree. to share the story. I love it. I love it. Uh, another guy, I think that maybe you might have came across him in Mid-South, beautiful Bobby Eaton. Bobby. God, Bobby. I, you, I can't believe he's, he, he ain't gone. He's passed. He must have just passed the last couple months. It was in the past few months, yeah. Yeah, I seen Bobby last summer and... Uh, God, you know, Bobby's got that same look, that same head, and what a guy. What a guy. Just a good human being. Never had a problem with anybody. Um, wrestled him a couple times in Mid-South, and uh, he, just, he just was a guy that had the heart, and he had an easy, kind soul to him. No better guy. What about King Kong Angelo Mosca, Canadian football legend? Um, uh, uh, are you talking about uh, the, the announcer? No, Angelo. I think maybe he did do a little. You're not with, who was the, the big, huge guy with Bobby no, that's Gorilla Monsoon. Yeah, that's Gorilla Monsoon. Okay, see, you see how my brain is when I drink? And, um, yeah. and you're having iced tea. Uh, you know, Angelo Mosquery was in the Canadian Hall of Fame. He was a bigger star, I think, probably in the late 70s, Never early knew 80s. him, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. Um, if he was in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, he was an athlete, and he was a bad dude. No, I didn't know him. Didn't know him. That's fine. But but uh, he, was, he was a bad dude if he was in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Another gentleman we lost very recently, a man you probably worked with more as an agent than a uh, peer inside the squared circle, Black Jack Lanza. Yeah, uh, Black Jack was an agent, um, and uh, yeah, he, he, he was a guy that just, he was a really, really one of the good agents. In other words, he would give you heads up if, you know, a P test was coming, or a, or or, or why don't you do this because this is happening over here? And he just tried to make it better for you, but he was also one of the boys because he did, you know, he broke in with Vern Gagne. Um, Blackjack lived right on, right on a highway. Um, you can see his house right off 494 as you were going in, into Minneapolis. Um, so he always looked to the left, and there's Black Jack's house. And he was just a, a great guy. He Married really to was. the same lady for 64 years. Oh, do you, do you believe that? Ain't that great? In wrestling. Ain't that great? Um, I used to give him a hard time about his hair. I, <laughs> says, I said, uh, yeah, I says, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The, the, they got a product out, Jack, that um, you can dye your hair black and it takes seven days, but the change is so gradual nobody notices. Well, that was my joke to him because, of course, <laughs> nobody gets jet black hair after having gray hair and, and, and it nobody notices because the change is so gradual. Right. You of course know, you know. And I used to give him a big hard, hard time about, you know, how much stuff did you put in there today? Oh, shut up! <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, but yeah, wonderful guy. And, a, and, a, and anybody that's married to the same wife for that long, do the math. Yeah. He's a real guy. And he was a help to you as an agent? He was a lot of help because he he, he would he would give you heads up on trouble yeah. coming, or you know. And I I 
I was a little bit of trouble here and there. And I was never bad trouble, uh, but I was like, I want to have more fun trouble. Yeah. Now, think back to some of the agents in that era that you were with WWF. You had Goulet, you had Gurria, you had Steele, Strongbow, Lanza, as yep. we noted. Who were some guys. of the better ones, some of the worst ones? Patterson? I will tell you. Briscoe? Uh, well, uh, Patterson wasn't really an agent he, he, when I was there. Mm. He was just flat in the office. Mm. He was back in Stanford in the office with Vince. Um, and, uh, but as far as the agents, uh, the ones I didn't care for were George Steele because, uh, and God rest his soul, he was a very nice man, but he was, he was a guy that would tattle on you. Mm -hmm. He was a stooge, and, but a nice guy, and, and, and so, but you see, there was two sides. I'm more of an outlaw. So I don't like the Stooges, I don't like doing that, but it's stuff I shouldn't be doing. And that's where George would say something, like, you shouldn't be doing that. And I'm like, okay, you Stooge. Um, another, uh, Rene Goulet, great agent. Ray Stevens, <laughs> a classic guy. But he, was an a he was still an agent when you were there? He was an agent okay. when I was there. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, he, he, he would, uh, you'd have to do, back then, it was, the big deal was a pee test for the agents, and they had to watch you pee. And uh, when I used to be dirty, and so a couple of times I had stuff in my system that maybe shouldn't have been in my system, and I would uh, be at the urinal, and Ray would have to stand there, and I'd just take my hand and put it over his eyes. And I would dump someone else's pee. And he, <laughs> he wouldn't touch my hand or nothing. Yeah. He'd just stand there. So, Ray Stevens, God bless you. I love you. See, that, that's a guy, you know. And then Arnie Skolin, same thing. Arnie was uh, kind of an agent. He really just got a paycheck because he, you know, he was kind of Andre's, you know, buddy. And he'd and, handle a lot of the venue business. Yeah, he yeah, did. Yeah. He did. That's right. Um, but Arnie, when when I was there, he was pretty old, and he wasn't at, you know, he he he, could, he couldn't handle too much responsibility when you're that old. He just couldn't. But nice, great guy. <laughs> oh man, what a guy. Um, who else did you mention? Uh, Strongbow. Uh, Strongbow, not my favorite. No, why was that? He's a stooge. Another one? He's a stooge, and he's, uh, 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 but he, he was pretty easy going. It's just that I seen him talk to guys one way. I never had a problem, but I seen him talk, you know, like Jim Neidhart, for example. Uh, Jim went MIA for a couple days once. And uh, it's actually quite, it's actually a, a really funny story. And he came up to Jay and, and Strongbow and, and, he, and Strongbow goes, where you been? What's the deal? What's the story? He goes, oh, you wouldn't believe it. And Nightheart's like, you wouldn't believe it, Jay. And, and, and Strong goes, well, what, what happened? Where the hell have you been? You know, now here's that um, Bret Hart deal where he should have been fired. I would have gotten fired, but he didn't get fired because he had this two heart contract deal. Mm -hmm. Long story, I'm trying to make this shorter. So he says, Jay, yeah, I was driving along, and you know me, I love, I love animals. I'm, I, I'm an animal lover, and I seen this kitty cat on the side of the road. And I pulled over, and I went up to it, and it scratched me. And um, uh, I couldn't believe it, and I started driving, and all of a sudden I started breaking out. And uh, in hives, I ended up in the hospital. And Strombo's jaw is just like, huh? <laughs> and he goes, okay, so Jim's got his bag. Now, 
10 minutes goes by, Jim throws on his trunks, he's going down the aisle, and Strongbow's still scratching his head. And he goes, hey, Jim, you're in the house, he says, what did they call it, what you had? What did they actually call it? And Nightheart looked at uh, Trombone and goes, cat scratch fever. <laughs> and he just kept walking. And Jay goes, that son of a bitch. So you have any <laughs> idea where he was? Yeah, I think he was, I think he went on a ripper. And he, I, Jim is a lot like myself. He starts and he can't stop. A little medicine. Yeah. Or a Between lot of the medicine. drinking and the pills. And I'll tell you, that's, that's the wrestler's biggest demise is drinking and pills. Um, Mr. Perfect. I can name all the guys. Rick Rude. Um, just on and on. But it's, it's, guess what? That is no newsflash. That has been around for decades. Um, they're a little more harder to find now, the pills, but... Uh, um, if you're still wanting to get them, you can get them. But yeah, it's not. It's a bad thing. Thank God they've shut it down. The doctors. Yeah, good thing. All right, wrestling fans. Right now we're going to take a brief timeout. We continue. We'll have more with John Nord's wrestling insiders. Throwback Thursday. Nah. Stand by. Nice. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the berserker John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back as we're joined by John Nord, the berserker, trying to... Remember some of the, the fallen greats in the world of professional wrestling. We mentioned that uh, interesting antidote about Jim Nidot getting and surviving cat scratch fever. Yeah, God, um, that's a horrible disease. Horrible disease to get if you, yeah. if you come across it, I guess, yeah. right? Uh, let me ask you this one. I, I don't think you ever worked in Mid-Atlantic, did you? No. Did you ever come across uh, Jim Crockett? Jim Crockett I met a couple times, and both times were in the airport. Oh, really? Yep, and they were in the airport bar. Oh. Um, I met somebody, who else did I meet? I, I only met, uh, who was, uh, who's, uh, what's his name? Uh, Blackjack's kid, Mulligan. Blackjack Mulligan's Barry Wendham? Uh, Wendham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I met him once at the hotel bar, and we... I just grabbed him and I said, let's start doing shots now. He's got a great story about it, but he said we ended up just getting toasted, you know. You and Barry? But me and Barry, yeah. And there's the only time I met him ever, you know. So you just ran, recognized him, ran up to him at the ah, bar? And we knew each other were. We go, well, when's your flight? Four hours. Ah, shit, mine's about four hours, too. Like you you want to have, you want to go for it a little bit here? And he says, let's do it. I says, I'm in. I'm in. So, you made so we started doing black shots of Jack Daniels and gargling Jack and, oh, yeah. You made a quick friend. Made a quick friend. In and out. In, in and, and out. out, baby. One night. Or afternoon, even. One afternoon. <laughs> All right. What about the assassin Jody Hamilton? Any... You know what? I always heard about Jody Hamilton. Didn't know him. Didn't know him, never met him, never seen him. I wouldn't even know him if I'd seen him in eight by ten of them. Really? Well, he, would, he was kind of hidden under the mask, so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there It'd you be go. kind of tough to recognize. Oh, well, there you go. And another one of our fallen friends in 2021, the natural Butch Reed. Butch, yeah, and everybody knows there's a little story about me and Butch, but me so and Butch traveled Butch? down the road together um, uh, in Mid-South in 85 a lot. And, uh, and we were friends before and after our little incident. What was the incident? I thought you would know. How do you not know about that? That was a little bit before my time. Okay, so... in 1985... Me and Steve Williams, we did two shots on Sunday, Saturday and two on Sunday. 
and we were headed to Tulsa from Oak City, I think. Anyways, I ended up, you know, starting to pound the beers, smoking a little of this a little that gimmick. you shouldn't do, a little gimmick. <laughs> and I'm with Steve Williams, so my character is a little bit off. I'm, I'm a little bit off my game anyways. So I go, uh, oh, it was the first show. So I go to Oak City, um, and I got to wrestle Butch. And I go into the ring, and I just start doing unorthodox, crazy shit. He tries to get me in a headlock. I just pushed his arm away. Um, I scooped up a leg on him, and he's going, what the? And, and he starts getting mad, and, he, and he's in the ring, he's going, what the hell is your problem? And I'm going, fuck you, fuck you. And we were going at it in the ring, but not a real fight, okay? We were just getting pissed and little tugging that. The, the, we ended the match, it was fine. Got back to the locker room, I knew the shit was gonna hit the fan, and and, and of course, I'd only been in the business uh, six months, mm -hmm. nine months. Uh, actually, I was in the business longer than that, but th the point is, is Butch comes, you don't ever, you freaking greenhorn, and he got in my face. I said, don't get in my face, don't get in my face. And I hit him with a right, and Butch went down, fell down in, on the big, long, painted benches uh, in the locker room. And uh, uh, he got up, and inside the locker room was this white pipe, pipe that plumbers use, big, long. And he picked up one of them, and he jabbed me with it, and it hit me in the eye. Oh, jeez. And... I went, you son of a bitch. No, I'm just pissed. I'm just, I'm just like, you son of my eye, my fucking, you son of a bitch. And my eye, and, and that was it. But Butch's, from, from me hitting him in the face, Butch's face just went, just swelled up. I mean, both of his eye, one was slit, and, you know, it's all you can See what he couldn't even hardly see out of his eyes. So his his face swelled up, and and then I had a scratched eye. And now we're going to the other town at night to do a show, and we got to wrestle each other again. And Bill Watts likes stirring the shit, anyways, you know. So Bill Watts says, "Well, I'll work it out in the ring, you guys again. Let's do it." You know, I'm like, that, "That's that's bad, Bill. Don't you know what I mean?" That's what I'm thinking. I just say that to him. But the thing of it is, is Butch came over to me, says, "Listen to me," and I'm looking at his face, going, Ooh. "He goes, I just want this thing to end. I want it to be over." No, and I says, "I agree. I agree. My my eye is scratched." His face is swollen, and that was the story. It ended, we, and we ended up traveling down the road together. So there was no retaliation or anything towards? No retaliation, because I told him, I said, listen, Butch, I was drinking. I started using the gimmick, and he says, yeah, I know. You were a totally different person. And I said, I know. I'm sorry, man. And I had to apologize. And, and I did apologize till the, I felt bad till the day Butch died. When he passed away, I really felt bad for him. He was a great guy. And he was a great football player. He paid for Kansas. Yeah. I mean, you went, that's no joke if you're playing for the University of Kansas. That's where Gail Sayers played. There you go. What more needs to be said? But so you never retaliated for that yeah. pipe to the eye. Never. That's some. That's a lot of macho shit. Let me tell you, any stuff that you know, um, like at, at our early ages, like Hawk and Rude and uh, not guys like Barry Darso, but myself included, maybe we'd get into once in a while into this macho type tough guy image, and it's bullshit. 
It's your ego. It's wrong. It's pro wrestling. Stick to your job. Do your job. Don't be walking around like you're a tough guy. You know, it just it just don't look good on you. And it and in years to come, you'll regret it. Yeah, I mean, if that continued to go on and on and on, it could have cost one of you one of your jobs. One of you could have become injured. Well, like Who I knows? talked about from you a lot, Dan, is about what about the promoter? What if he fires me? Yeah, for acting like a badass. Or Look, beating a guy up. What's the promoter if I lose my job? I get to go home and tell my wife I don't have a job. That's not good. And that promotion, though, that might be have been the one that would have encouraged it, though. Watts always seemed to like it when the boys would get That's correct. It. That's correct. But he, that's he, where Watts, I'll guarantee you, regrets being like that now. You think so? I know so. Um, I ran into him many years ago. Uh, Shit, I think it was, I don't know where it was. I think it was New York. But anyways, ran into him, just said hi to him real quick. And he says, John, I, I, I've got a lot of regrets. We all do, don't we? I says, yeah. But you know what? Um, at least we're not walking around going, I wouldn't change one thing. Oh, really? You wouldn't change one thing about your life? We all would change sure. things I in would. our life. I don't know. That's macho bullshit. Not to, to say I wouldn't change one thing. Are you kidding me? That's, that's having a huge ego. Um, thinking that you did everything right. No kidding. Um, right? That's sick. But yeah, so he said that and Bill, Bill regretted. Well, I worry that our friend in the control room, Howard Miller, he's had the same problem like you had with Butch Reed. Uh, with the man known as Boizel over the 86 Celtics picture. They've actually get, come to a fisticuffs over it. So really? We're, we're trying to calm it down. Really? A picture of the 86 Celtics has caused this much friction with the French, well, we call them the French douchebag sometimes, but... Hey, Frenchie, why can't you just get along? We're trying to figure that out. Figure it out, Frenchie. Do you think he's living... I ain't got the time, okay? Do you think he's living up to his moniker, the French I douchebag? I think Frenchie's got problems. It's, it's only the 86 Celtics that brought this region a lot of joy. It sure as heck did. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't uh, mean he's got to become a hard ass about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, like I said, we're trying to figure it out. But, John... You know, we continue to talk about name after name after name, the, the, many of whom on that list passed away far too soon. God, it hurts. How is John Nord still alive and kicking with some of the trials and tribulations that you face? Well, and again, it's not my ego saying this, but I get to so many people saying, how are you still alive? You know, um, because of the way I was, like Barry Darso. Uh, uh, was on uh, YouTube saying, well, John's demons, um, me and John were, you know, Barry really put me over. He said, of all the guys from Minnesota, John would be the guy that would be the first guy to be there for you. Really? And yes, and uh, it really warmed my heart. But that's my buddy, Barry. Yeah. We've been down the road. I know Darso better than he knows himself. He knows me better than I know myself. That's how tight we are. But going, uh, where were we going with this? Um, well, just as far as, you know, it's strange sometimes where we, we see so many guys pass away so oh, young. Oh, yeah. And then you have guys that yeah. have lived those wild, <laughs> crazy lives, like someone like the Sheik. You'd think, how on earth could they still be living at this right, point? Right, right. Well, and you asked about me, and I, and I'll tell you something. I, it's only by the grace of God. Listen, you know how many nights I was maybe this far away from slipping over the line into eternity? Mm -hmm. Now, why would you say? I mean, any in, stories in particular well, that you just, remember? Just, no, I, I, there, there was there was hundreds of times. Um, let me see. I'll take five Percocets. I'll drink a case of beer, and then I'll do take this and that and a little bit of this and that and stay up for three days and this and that. See, that kills people. You understand how that works, folks? That 
kills guys. It killed Kurt Henning. Okay? It killed Rick Rude. It killed Brady Boone. It killed Mike Hagstrand. It hurts saying it. Right now, I'm getting choked up just thinking about these guys who were my buddies. Your family. They were my childhood friends. And, the, and, and they, they slipped away into eternity. And it sucks. It sucks. Half of them were in my wedding. You know, you could go on and on, but it, it hurts, brother. And why I kept doing it after they died, I don't know. I think I was in, I was grieving. I didn't care, you know. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, I don't do that anymore, but I'm still, you know, once you got the, in your blood, it never goes away. And I still got it. So if I drink a six pack of beer, look out. I could still go over the line. But uh, my point is, is, is um, those guys that I named that you know all went to high school. Tom Zink, um, just it just. And sometimes I get mad at wrestling, but it was not wrestling that did it. It was their choices they made. And it's the choice that I make if I die that way. Um, and yeah, it just hurts. Because those guys that I just mentioned, all of them, you will not find any better guys. None better, period. They're all, every one of them guys got hearts of gold. Barry Darso is still alive. Yep. Thank God, God. Do I have to tell you about Barry Darso? Tell us about Barry. Well, I mean, do you have a story Barry, like to oh, share about Barry? I got too many stories oh, okay. to start, but I'll tell you, we met in junior high school. Wow. And a nicer guy, a, a better athlete. Um, I think he might have been the best athlete of everybody. Um, of everybody in wrestling. You said he took to just about everything he tried and did pretty well. He not just pretty well, he well, did great. the he did the best. And he could have gone a long ways if he would have pursued it. He just he didn't have that uh, necessarily that killer deal, but he was a pure athlete. And Barry, if you're watching, you know brother what I'm talking about. You were pure, pure athlete. And uh, you got to see the guy can run. You know, if you ever watch him running around in the ring, look how easy he makes it look. Smooth. Smooth. Yeah. All right, wrestling fans, right now we're going to take a brief timeout. We'll be back with more Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday with the Berserker, John Nord, after this brief nice. timeout. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders in studio shoot interviews on eBay with this brand new personally autographed WWE Royal Rumble 2021 11 by 14 poster signed by WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, his advocate Paul Heyman and Kevin Owens. Reigns and Owens battled for the Universal title in a last standing match January 31st in the Thunderdome in Tampa. This limited edition collector's poster is number 31 of only 50 produced. Comes with WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Also comes with an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus autographed 8x10 photo. Get this rare, awesome collectible for your man cave and help keep wrestling legends working now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursday, Dan Marotti, John Nord, talking a uh, little on the serious side this week, talking about yeah. a lot of the brothers yeah. that we've lost. Yeah. Um, recently in 2021, along yeah. with... You know, some of you have fallen friends from over the years. And it's oh. just, you know, as we continue to field questions from the fans, now that the show is becoming more and more popular on Thursday night, one of the Absolutely questions is, is, you know, your stories are out there online. You know, it, it's certainly not a secret, some of the battles that you've faced. 
Yep. You know, you've had some arrests, yeah. the DUI, Ooh. Uh, several DUIs. Just seven of them, that's uh, all. Seven. That ain't really that many. Well, uh, again, what's the magic touch? That Why is it that you're here when so many of, the, of your dear, close personal friends have gone on, you know, to the next adventure in our universe? Um, the grace of God. Mm. The grace of God. It's like, uh, uh, I don't know what the line was in True Grit, the new True Grit with Jeff Bridges. Uh, there's a line in that movie about the grace of God, and I wish I knew what it was right now, but it's, it's a really great line. Um, and that's all it is. There is no explanation. It's only God himself keeping me alive. Mm -hmm. Now, not to get too personal, and if you don't want to answer, that's fine, but do you, would you have considered yourself an alcoholic? I'm an absolutely an alcoholic. Okay. I'm a raving alcoholic. Even now? But I'm, uh, no, no, okay. no. I haven't been, I haven't been a hard drinker since 1997. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. But when I hit it, I still have a tendency to go deep. Mm. So, but not very often. I, once a year. Really. Okay. Once a year. And just, you know, I have my thoughts on DUI because of what happened to my body and my life as a result of it. You know, was there anything going, maybe this is the best way to phrase it, was there anything going through your mind when you made that choice to take those keys and get behind the wheel of a car, not only risking your own safety, but other folks on the road who had just happened to be traveling? Absolutely. Oh, and again, it's the exact same thing. It's the grace of God I didn't kill nobody or hurt anybody. Just the grace of God. I'm no different than, than anybody else. I did nothing special. I wasn't a good driver. I wasn't, um, I actually drive better when I drink. You know, you've heard them guys. That, have, that, yeah. That's real smart. Anyways, um, yeah, it was just, uh, I got so lucky, so blessed, so it just it, unbelievable. Um, uh, and uh, I, I, I guess I would want to say, I guess it, I wouldn't consider myself like all over the road. You mean you know, it wasn't like you're going in that lane and this lane, and you're driving in one-way traffic the wrong way. It wasn't that kind of deal. I was just swerving a little bit. But here's the point. It doesn't matter. You are impaired and you can kill somebody. Um, didn't hurt anybody, didn't ever hit a car. Grace of God, period. I was I should have I should have been in jail. I've never had to go to prison or nothing, over seven of them. And I'm just so happy and grateful not to. How did you think you lucked out and that you never wound up having to do any time for any of those arrests? I think it was God again. Just luck again? I, 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 it, was, it wasn't luck, it was God, mm -hmm. my faith. I know it was God. It just, without question, um, I was scared. I was on my knees praying. I was... I was very humbled, um, on and on. My kids didn't talk to me. Oh, really? My 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 ex-wife uh, wouldn't talk to me. I became a isolated from the world because um, I was a drinker and driver, and I had that many, and everybody just thought I was too messed up to even to hang around. Well, that has gone away since. Um, at your worst, would you consider yourself, I, I don't know if the terminology would be right, but yeah. a, a full-time alcoholic? I mean, were you drinking that regularly? No, no, no. Wasn't a closet alcoholic. I was a bar alcoholic. Bar, okay. I would not drink unless I would call a guy and say, hey, meet me at the bar, let's go, come on, and just to grab a bar stool and get up to the bar and have fun drinking. And then... Of course, um, I wish Uber b would have been around. Yeah, that. no kidding, right? But it wasn't. It's not an excuse, though. 
Um, it would have been a nice if it solution. would have been, it would have saved. Right now, Uber is saving thousands of lives from people driving and drinking. There's no excuse nowadays in 2022. Not if you got Uber. No, no way. No, not at all. And we do, so. Would you give advice to anyone out there that, you know, is, is in the same shoes that you have been? That think, well, you know what, I'm not sitting at home drinking a 24-pack every night, but I like to go out to the bars and have fun and so on and so yeah. forth. And, you know, I, I think you've made great strides in your life. Well, thank you. But, I, yeah, I guess I would have... Two, two things I would give advice about. And uh, number one, uh, take an Uber. It's cheap. It's doable. Don't bullshit yourself. You know you can do it. And number two is the company you keep, brother. Watch who you're hanging around. If you're hanging around drug addicts, um, hardcore Elkies that uh, don't got a job, can't keep a job. Their whole life is that smelly, stinky bar room. Stay away from them. The company you keep is huge. Don't do it. Watch who you're hanging around. And you noted a few minutes ago that it caused turmoil with your kids and your ex. And was it that they were You're just, torn. they were... They were angry that you decided to take the keys into your hand or you were just difficult to deal with when you would consume the alcohol? My kids, I was married 25 years and we never had alcohol in the house. Not really? one day. That's great. Not one day. Well, again, I got to be careful. I'm not pregnant. You're talking to a guy that's seven DUIs. Well, what happened was I would get a phone call and say, yeah, I think I can sneak out for a little while. And then once I started, all bets were off. I wouldn't go home. I, what was I going to do, call home and yeah. get yelled at? I didn't want to get yelled at. I'm like everybody else. You don't want to call home and get yelled at by your wife because you're out drinking. Yeah. So you don't call, which is the opposite what you should do. If you just would have called your wife, her pain would have been one-tenth of what it was. So I inflicted a lot of pain on my relationships, my kids, my ex-wife, and I'm um, in total remorse the rest of my life about it. I pray for their forgiveness. Um, I, th I believe they have forgiven me um, and my three kids. Um, I'm, I got them back in my lives again. Good. Uh, Good. and it, it took years because it's about trusting you. Is your word worth anything? And when you're an alcoholic out drinking, your word means nothing. Would it change your personality at all once you'd come home, or were you still I'm drunk? I the happiest drunk in the world. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was too happy. I, I actually, everybody knows it's switching the, the seriousness of this. Guys can have a, the ability to have fun more than women. Everybody knows that. And growing up with the guys I grew up with, it was so much damn fun. It was, you can't even describe it. We had no business having that much fun. I still say that to this day, and I'll say it to the guys that are alive, like Barry Darso. I call him up and go, Bear, we, we had no business having that much fun, did we? Wayne Bloom, same thing. We always say that. Brad Rangins, always say that, you know? And it's the truth. And that's one thing as someone that has just scratched the surface of what you did in your career. But you're right. I mean, the amounts of fun that we have and the shenanigans oh. that you get into, oh. it's unbelievable. It is. I mean, again, I think on one of the prior episodes, we talked about a different uh, a scenario. It's like, oh, well, what's the sneaky thing we're going to do? We're going to take an extra three minutes on our lunch break or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And look at the things that go on in our genre after various events we have going from city to city, uh, state to state, yeah. uh, even country to country. I yeah. mean, it, it leaves a lot of time uh, in room open for 
I, I guess shenanigans. Shenanigans. It's and, like and, it's and, like Peter Pan. It's a lot of big kids yeah. that don't want to grow up. Yeah. <laughs> and and you got this time and this job and and one of the big things is you're lonesome. Yeah. You want to be home with your kids and your wife. Even if you didn't have kids, you wanted to be home. You wish you had them. There's no yeah. place like home, like Dorothy said. There's no place like home. And there isn't. And my kids, I had so much fun with them the first half of their lives. Um, I, I can't even explain, um, you know, uh, uh, going, going sliding in the snow. Uh, trick or treating, just you know how the program sure, goes. Yep. Um, the night we had the biggest, one of the things in Minnesota, we had the the biggest snowstorm ever, was Halloween Day, nineteen ninety one. Really, we had a storm like that about ten years ago here in Boston. It wasn't, Did you? Wasn't I think, the oh biggest, yeah, I remember that. Wasn't the biggest. That's ever, when New big. York City like shut down, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I I do remember that. But I'll tell How you, big was it? Do you remember I'll tell you, just we, we, we got uh, 22 inches. On Halloween? On Halloween. Wow, that's crazy. I was supposed to wrestle in Las Vegas against The Undertaker um, in uh, Thomas Mack Center. Um, well, I don't think that would have been 91 because he was still a heel. He didn't turn babyface till early 92. Yeah, you might be right. Who would well, you were going to work someone that. in Vegas. I thought it was, but I I think you're right now yeah. that you say that. You're right again. We didn't bet 20 yeah, bucks, though. Yeah. Hey, so anyways, um, the airport got shut down. I got to stay home, and we actually went trick-or-treating with our snow boots, going through the snow. The snow was, you know, this deep, and it was a blast. It was incredibly fun. And here's my big thing. My youngest daughter, Lizzie, if you go nine months forward from October 31st, 91 to July 31st, 92, that's when she was born. Really? So well, if you do the math, you know what happened that night. Mrs. Nord, uh, you know, you, you had the chestnuts roasting on an open fire on Halloween night. I that's, guess. that's, and, <laughs> and when I tell, when I tell, tell Lizzie that, my daughter, Dad, don't talk, like, don't bring that up, don't talk, you know, they don't want to hear that, but I don't see, it's just kind of, all, all in good fun. And what a great time for Minnesota, about a week before, you guys beat the Atlanta Braves to win the World Series in 91. We sure did, and yeah. we were in. We were in. Uh, I believe Sun. Uh, what's the uh, Tucson, the big stadium, or was the it Metrodome? Sun Devil Stadium? What's that called? In, Where Atlanta played in Arizona. No, this was it. Was the Braves? No, no, I know, but w this is where we were working when the Braves won. Oh, when, oh, when oh, the Twins oh, won. Okay, oh, we I all see. went crazy. All you Minnesota all guys. All the Minnesota yeah. guys were in the locker room. We had the TV watching the game. We we're going, you're up. You got to wrestle. Get out there. No, I'm staying here. I'm the Twins, the Twins, and they won. And we were at right at the stadium. I forgot what it, uh, Sun Devil Stadium. What are they called? Tucson, or is it Phoenix? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that's where all the boys were. What a classic Jack Morris pitched in that game, huh? Man, did you nail that. You know baseball. I love you? my baseball. We, well, we've spoken baseball. about that. Oh, man, uh, my I was, dad. I was probably 10 for that World Series, yeah. My dad lived in Tucson, and oh, he, he would write in to the sports writers about baseball. And they would print. Oh, really? They would print what he would write because he was that smart. My dad knew everything from the uh, uh, what they call the kids uh, in the, the Phillies in in the fifties. You know, they had a name. Uh, but anyway, from you know DiMaggio to the Yankees, everybody, Mickey Mantle's uh, uh, that. That ball he hit that went probably probably pretty close to 650 feet. It was 
Have you ever seen that clip? I've never seen the clip. No, <laughs> I've heard of about it, the legend of it. It was, it was just you got to see it. But going back to baseball, God, what a what a great game uh, as football. But I'll tell you something, and most guys agree with me on this. I said, as you get older, you like football less and baseball more. And I don't know why that is. I think it's because of the hot dogging and the, and the dancing and all the, and all the hype and football. Sure, you still got great um, class act players, but it ain't somehow baseball becomes more of an older guy's game to watch. You I just, think maybe it's they like the, the pacing and the strategy behind it. Yeah. I know that's why I've always liked it. I'm not an old man yet, but no, that, that's but the you, reason why I love it so much. Uh, anybody I've said that to as they're getting older, they'll, they'll come up to me and go, you know what you told me? That's true. I like baseball more. I said, see, I don't know why that is. Happened to my dad. But, yeah, baseball, wow, what a sport. All right, wrestling fans, we are running out of time here. We'll be back after this brief timeout to wrap up Wrestling Insiders. Throwback Thursday. All right. Wrestling fans, the winter heats up with the return of the berserker John Nord. The WWE legend will be back for Wrestling Insider tapings, live episodes, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings beginning Sunday, February the 20th. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the Berserker will sign for you live on air. Get ready for three big days of the Berserker, John Nord. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insider's Throwback Thursday with John Nord. I'm Dan Marotti. Another great episode. We got a little deep. We talked about some of the brothers we've lost we did. in 2021. We did. Some of the brothers that you lost that meant a lot to your heart. Yep. Um, some struggles you faced in life and even reclamation. So Absolutely. I think a very, and even a little baseball. So an interesting episode overall. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to having you back with us one week from tonight, Thursday night at 10 p.m. Again, so many different ways you can help the cause in the description box below. Leave your thoughts in the premiere chat if you're watching on Thursday nights or in the description box uh, beneath us if you're watching after and the fact. thanks for watching, you guys. I just had to say Of that. course. Thanks for watching. The man. big man, we're going to be having him with us more and more as time goes on. In 2022, he's going to be back here in this studio. And again, all roads lead to Memorial Hall in Melrose, Saturday night, April the 16th. <laughs> the Berserker is going to be joined by the greatest tag team in WWE history, Axon Smash Demolition, Jake the Snake Robertson, more discount nice. VIP packages and tickets on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. For John Nord, I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you next week. Until then, you and yours, be well, be healthy. Good night from Boston. Good night. Fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. But we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't. Do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday. Dan Marotti, along with your hosts with the most, the berserker John Noy. Join uh, February now. It continues to be cold, I'm sure, here in Minnesota. Yep. Well, for you in Minnesota, yeah, here in Boston. Uh, we're just a few days away from Valentine's Day, John. That's, Any big plans yeah. <laughs> with the, uh, the ladies in Minnesota? Uh, I... Absolutely zero, except for my daughters. I'm, I'm going to drop them a little uh, card each and maybe give them a little long green with the short future. Uh, uh, maybe pop a, pop a 50 in there or something in the there card and, and uh, just tell them I love them. That's nice. uh, I, I'm not seeing anybody right now, so I do not have a Valentine, but... Right now, I'm enjoying the peace I got by myself. You so, like being yeah, a bachelor right now. I do. Well, maybe on Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall, when we go back to the 80s, we could have a, a win a date with John Nord contest. Well, John, bring it on. I, I'm Plus not Annie shy. Enters. Don't get me wrong. I, I love the ladies. <laughs> Would you want Annie to enter the contest? Annie? Yeah. yeah. I love Annie. Yeah. 
and he entered the contest. What's that? Would mean? you let her enter sure. anything else? Uh, Annie? Yeah. Um, well, she wouldn't, uh, if, if I know Annie, she wouldn't eat dinner. No. Because she would want to eat something else. Something else. Right. And uh, we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> Annie, we love you, though, if you Annie, you know it. what? It's amazing that you continue to remain relevant on such a, a talk show like this about great 80s and 90s and throwback wrestling, but I guess even her tongue is a throwback. Well, and I want to tell you something about Annie. Back to Annie. It is, Annie, I want you to know, if you're watching this, that we say that in love. You know, we say we, that she's an ass eater in love. We we say that in love, and we it is no pun intended at that's all. That's for sure. We adore you, and that's it. What I, all I can speak for myself, Annie, I adore you. You're a wonderful person, a good human being, a great human. being. I don't think she ever expected to be part of Brutus's Be Brutus Beefcake's book quite like that, but it is what it is. I didn't read it, but I heard she had a full chapter. Yeah, in it. yeah, about the, the romance between her, Greg, and Greg's uh, backside. But anyway. Very good. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you guys all have a very happy Valentine's Day. If you have a main squeeze out there over the next couple of days, if not, you always have us with our great talk show content, virtually seven days a week across. The Boston Wrestling uh, Empire that we have on social media, YouTube, uh, and so much more coming with the big live events this spring. But, John, uh, more questions that continue to come in fast and furious from the fans. As you were a relative newcomer in, in early 1991 in the World Wrestling Federation, who were some of the people that you'd travel with? Who did you like to travel with or room with, even? Uh, when I came in in 91? Yeah. Um, uh... Well, there, without question, there only was um, every night. It was uh, uh, Kurt Henning, Barry Darso, uh, Wayne Bloom when they got hired, mm -hmm. um, Mike Hagstrand, Hawk, and those were the guys. Only them guys. I didn't really like to travel with anybody else. Sometimes you had to. I did a little bit with The Undertaker um, and Paul Bearer. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but mainly, mainly Mike Hawk and uh, Kurt Wayne uh, Darso. And what about Fuji? No? Fuji, you know, not so much uh, just because... Fuge didn't have that that total. He was older, and we were young, and we had so much unbelievable energy, and we would be laughing so hard, and uh, uh, we. It was just incredible how hard we would laugh. Um, and Fuge just couldn't keep up with that. So he, it was just a natural thing. He yeah. was with somebody else. That makes sense. And a question, I don't know how it didn't come up sooner. Uh, I told you before, I was a big fan of your pile driver. But where did the finish come up from where you'd take the guy, the enhancement talent job or whatever you want yeah. to call him, and just throw him over the top rope for a count-out victory as opposed to a pinfall? Was that something? It came from the office mm -hmm. of the WWF. Uh, it came from uh, uh, Vince McMahon, Pat Patterson, and uh, somebody else in the office. I know there was three of them. And they said, why not do that? Well, it never got over, and I didn't like doing it because some guys were, like, short and really wide, and that's hard to pick up <laughs> when you're tall. Yeah. And you got, you know, and and uh, and actually get them up and over the ring, and then you might hurt the, you know, the guy's landing on the cement. That's a dangerous, dangerous thing to do, and um, it 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 didn't get over. Number one, I didn't like it. And I can tell that they knew I didn't like it, so it ended up fizzling out. Thank God. Because I didn't want to hurt nobody. I, 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 you know, 
I don't want to hurt nobody out on the cement. You just can't land on the cement and think you're not going to get hurt or you're going to right. hurt. Sure. Somebody's going to get hurt. Someone's going to get hurt. Sooner or later. Let me ask you about this one. I mean, you worked with a, a bit overseas here in the United States on the House Show Loop. Longtime WWF veteran uh, before he was repackaged into El Matador, Tito Santana. Tito. Yeah, Tito. Arriba! Arriba! Every time the <laughs> nasty boys would give him such a hard time because, uh, you know, they wanted him to yell, Arriba! You know, and it was just kind of a little bit corny. And I could tell Tito didn't like it. Tito, uh, a great guy, super gentleman. Um, he's got his, got his kids. Um, got just a wonderful, loving family. Um, I just don't have a bad word to say about Tito Santana. He's been around a long time, mm. and he 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 loves wrestling. I and he loves and he loves uh, talking about himself. <laughs> that don't make him a bad guy though. <laughs> now that's Tito. Now there's a guy there that can talk about himself, and he loves talking about himself, and you don't hate him for it. And then there's other guys that do it, like Ted DiBiase, and you just want to kill him. Like really, Ted? That's all you're doing is talking about yourself, and you don't realize it. Why is it that you didn't mind Tito's talking, but Ted's bothered you so much? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It's just the personality it's, conflict. It's something that none of us know. It just happens. Um, and uh, uh, Ted was just such a. Uh, uh, I tell you, who really didn't had a hard time with DiBiase was uh, Kurt Henning. Oh, really? Yeah, Kurt was just he just livid. He did not like. He did not want to be around him. He did not want to, you know, when he had to work with him or he had to be good to him, he would be. But, man, he just, because uh, Ted would be like, uh, if, if Kurt would have, like, Wade Boggs, you know, or John Anderson or these guys, Willie Nelson, and these guys, and the, these were all guys that attracted to Kurt. Kurt met him first, not not Willie, but but John John Anderson, the country western singer, and uh, who did I say the other guy? Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs, and then also uh, somebody else big, but he would be sitting there talking about it, and Ted would just come right in between them, <laughs> and go, "Hey, I'm Ted DiBiase. How you doing, bro?" And, and Kurt would be going. <laughs> hey, if I can, and the one of the use, you know, the words is, is Kurt would use, and uh, would be, "Hey, you frickin' Jaime, get the f out of here!" And uh, uh, Ted just never got it. It never entered his head. He was being selfish. Maybe it is now. I think. It, hey, here's the deal. What uh, what goes around comes around. Look at Ted now. He's whole, in a world of deep shit. The whole family, yeah. The whole family. It took decades. But see what happens when you're self-centered all the time? The karma came back Case and hit him. Case closed. Yeah. Well, what did you think of working with Tito? You mentioned what you thought of him personally. What was he ah, like he to was work a with night in the ring? Off. He yeah. was beautiful. He was beautiful to work with. Um, he was, uh, he was, he was, he, he would never, never crack out of turn. Uh, that's a, that's an old saying, by the way, that con men used to use. You cracked out of turn. In other words, you went off, you did something you weren't supposed to do. Mm. Um, and he never never cracked out of turn. He always was a gentleman. He did exactly in the ring what you expected, 
what went well. You always had a good, decent, solid match with him. Not, not necessarily a barn burner, but then he was not necessarily uh, billed as main event type yeah. guy. He was an opening match, usually when I is, is what I remember. But very, yeah, would you say he was well. smooth? Very smooth. Very smooth. Good work. He good didn't work. mind doing jobs because he was the one putting he you did. over. You good guy and good. You're you're right. He he, he was almost like a steamboat, except uh, a swank. He didn't have them uh, uh, tights that uh, that you know the snake tights or yeah, what, whatever. lizard. What, what a lizard tights? Yeah. yeah. It's still a little bizarre, but we discussed that a on, little? on a previous episode. It's a lot Ricky. of bizarre. Wasn't Blizzard biz tights? It wasn't berserk, though. Bizarre to the max. All right. Well, Tito, good opponent for you. Again, wrestling fans, we're going to continue to barrel through the year uh, that was the 1991, the World Wrestling Federation, through the eyes of John Nord the Berserker as we continue with Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday. Stand by. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s Live Wrestling and Fan Fest Celebration, Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Meet WWE Hall of Famer Jake the Snake Roberts, Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hoffer Tito Santana, The Berserker, and more 80s icons to be announced. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive 80s Legends group photo, autographs, pose photos, all before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow blow the roof off of Memorial Hall. Get your VIP packages and tickets now at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside. Welcome. Throwback Thursday, Dan Marotti throwing it back. To the berserker John Nord as we're talking great 1991 World Wrestling Federation. John, uh, in the time period we're talking right now, you've been around the company probably four or five months, uh, primarily in, you know, the undercard opening contest, sure. trying to bazil, trying to bazil, trying to build the, <laughs> the Viking and the berserker up sure. uh, through squash matches on television and sure. enhancement wins over the Tito's and the tugboats and sure. uh, Jim Powers and so on. What were the paydays like at that point? Obviously, on the undercard, you're not going to be getting the big money that you'd wind up getting later on with the Undertakers and people like right, that that you'd work. Right, right. The paydays? Yeah. Um, what? You mean on the undercards? Yeah. Undercards, um, I would say, you know, you would get, uh, if you worked, you know the the four shots on a weekend, and th those were real common. Um, two on Saturday, two on Sunday, and you got lucky enough to be maybe an Easter Sunday special, and you were an undercard. You could you could have made, uh, you know, on the undercard maybe uh, seven hundred bucks a show. Oh, so okay. you have twenty eight hundred bucks now Just for the weekend. if you were. Yeah, for the weekend. So that, that's good. You're, that's a good. That's a good weekend. But you had to work your ass off. That was not. That was a. You had to have good matches. See, that's what a lot of guys forget. Is you know what was on my mind? It wasn't the money. It wasn't my gimmick. It wasn't me going over. It wasn't me winning or losing. I wanted to have a good match. It was important to me. I wanted to hustle. I wanted to stay moving. I didn't want to lay there in a headlock. I wanted to have a good match. And that's what I was taught in camp. So that stayed with me. And that stayed with Kurt Henning. It stayed with Barry Darso because that's what we wanted. And, and, and maybe that hurt you in the long run mm -hmm. um, as, far as, as far as getting pushed because you didn't go in the office. Uh, and bang on the door and go, listen, I want to start getting pushed. I want the belt. I think I deserve it. I've been doing that. None of that entered my mind to do that. I just didn't care about the belts or championships. Well, you know, it's like the only belts I cared about was grain belt beer, and the only title I cared about was the ones to my cars. 
I think one misconception with the fans is how much actually came out of your wallet to survive when you were on the road. You're talking about outside of the airplane ticket from the Nord residence to the first uh, shot on the beginning of the tour. Yeah. You'd be responsible for your own hotel room, food, rent-a-car, gyms. I mean, I imagine those expenses would add up in a hurry. Well, here's what I had. I cut a deal with my wife. Um, I didn't, back then, now, listen, I didn't bring a credit card. I didn't bring any cards because I know I would start slapping too much on it. I did not bring any cards. So, which everybody, most people know, you could get a $200 draw every town. Mm -hmm. So I lived on 200 bucks a day. So that, that basically came out to about 50 grand a year cash. And that's what I lived on. Um, I couldn't rent a car um, because I think you needed a credit card. But even back then, at one point, all you needed was a license and cash. Oh, really? To rent a car, if you go back far enough. Mm -hmm. But, so really the only thing I could maybe not do is rent a car, but other guys would, uh, uh, you know, rent it, and I'd just jump in with them, and uh, with Wayne, Barry, Kurt, Mike, Rude, or Henny. Anyways, and, uh, but at 200 bucks a day, and then you have, that's 400 bucks on a double shot, yeah. and 400 bucks, so I always had cash on me. And would you it, split rooms or did you get your own? Yeah, we would split, but you know, we, we, it got so bad sometimes <laughs> we'd be out drinking and we would get back so late, you wouldn't like even five, need six it. in the yeah. morning, and we wouldn't even use our room. And it started happening like two days a week. And we were paying, you know, 80 bucks for a room back then. And uh, he, he, we, I remember we'd go in there and just mess up the covers just so we felt better, <laughs> you know. And that's a true story. Yeah. And uh, anyways, so yeah, 200 bucks a day is a, is, was a good system. Yeah, no, as long as you could manage it and as long as, I know there were times a few years later, in the, you know, 95, 96, when the business was really dead, Sometimes they'd be barely making the draw, and the, their checks would kind of wind up being nothing. Well, but, and, and I figured it, though, the opposite way back when I was there. It was, I figured, hey, if I take a draw, hey, they can't give me a check for $700 or something stupid uh, because I've taken the draw money and it's knocking it down to that. But that ain't how it was. No. That, but that's no. how my thinking was they took it. a little bit. They took it. Yeah, so I just was grateful enough to where uh, they were just always good to me on pay. Good. They really were. And uh, especially with, with my run with The Undertaker. And, and I had a, uh, you know, I, had, I wrestled The Ultimate Warrior a lot. Um, and I got some good PDs out of that. Um, well, we're going to leapfrog there as the, the, the time of the Berserker John Nord uh, reaches 1992. As we continue through 91, month of May kicks off. You're on another one of those big overseas tours. It's the Berserker and Hacksaw Jim Duggan going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, at least in the World Wrestling Federation for the very first time. Your memories of Jim Duggan in that era. Hacker. Old Hacker. Uh, Jim Duggan, yeah, Jim was the same as he was when I knew him in Mid-South. Jim Duggan was always the same. He never changed. He was always just Jim. And Jim always tried to stay in a good mood. Sometimes he got a little moody, <laughs> you know. But Jim went through some things that I think, you know, as with the Sheik and that, and and I think it always, he was always mad about it. He had a chip. So, but Jim was Jim, and he knew I wasn't no threat. So we just went in there and had a good, best match as we could. That's all. Were you around Duggan in Mid-South when the incident happened, the, the drink and driving accident, when his 
female companion died, or was that before or after you? Yeah, uh, that happened, I think that happened in 84, and I was there in 85. Okay. But um, I know that uh, the, the, the time, the, other, the, the time, one of the past shows I told you about, Duggan and Steve Williams getting into that big fight in Ferry Day, Louisiana. Duggan and Steve Williams? Yeah, they both. I, end, I don't remember that. Yeah, they both ended up in jail. Fighting each other? No. Oh. No, they were fighting everybody in the bar. Oh, But okay. Ferry Day, Louisiana, like I told you then, was a very famous town. Mickey Gillies from there. Jerry Lee Lewis is from there. And... Uh, Jimmy Swaggart's from there. Oh, okay. All from Ferry Day. Really? So it's a very famous little town. And Williams and Duggan, they just went at it with some of the locals? They just uh, It's almost like Watts was happy. Yeah, yeah. Because then it was in the papers. Uh, Duggan and Steve Williams get thrown in jail. And uh, on and on. And Watts loved it, which is Frickin' sick, because some guys got their faces split open, and that's not cool. No, no. But I, from the promoter point of view, I can see him happy at the fact that it looked like it gave his wrestlers credibility, that they were out there fighting in the, yeah. and out of the ring. Yeah, well, yeah. absolutely it gives him credibility. That's every promoter's uh, dream, is to have people, people wondering, um, hey... I know, I know it's fake, but I know one of the things they did, I know that had to be real. And yeah. that is still kind of true, you guys. Yeah. Um, because you, it's not an optical illusion. You go from here to there. It's, you can't fake that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, May, I think it was the 6th, back in the United States, television out in Rockford, Illinois, uh, saw the debut of a guy that would, wouldn't get a contract for, I think, six years later with WWF. Uh, Del Wilkes, who would be better known as the Patriot. Any memories <laughs> old Del? Who, oh, another one God. that passed away not too long ago. Oh, Del. He was, Del Wilkes is one of the finest guys there ever was. And he got into some trouble. Some medicine. He did some time. He did. Too. And serious medicine. Serious. Del Wilkes was as fine as guy as there ever was. He was an All-American, first team All-American, old lineman for uh, the University of South Carolina. And he was, I mean, two, I think in two years, uh, maybe, I think he was first team All-American. Do you know what kind of athlete you got to be? To be an All-American first team, Division One, you got to be, an, and Dell was that. He was famous in South Carolina, man. Everybody knew Dell Wilkes. Um, I knew him in the Patriot in, in Japan, and uh, Japan liked him. Um, he didn't get a huge push or nothing, but he was a mid-card. Um, and uh, he, back here, oh, God, we, I used to make him laugh. And one time we were downtown New Orleans, and it was like 2 in the morning, and we're trying to find a hotel room, and we can't find one. And he never said, he goes, John, I'll never forget you walked up to the hotel door and turned around without going in, came back in the rent-a-car and said, it smells like death in there. Let's get out of here. And he says, I just never forgot it. So God bless you, Dell. Well, too bad he's not here with us. Um, in my limited interactions with him, he seemed like a pretty nice guy. He's a, just he's better than a pretty nice better guy. Better than he's a pretty a nice great guy. Okay. guy. Well, that's why we ask you. You knew the man very well as opposed to me who, yeah. you know, like I said, just a few limited interactions over the years. I want to tell you he's a Great guy. Great guy. All and right, he's well, a 
fun guy to talk to. We'll give it the official Nord stamp of approval. Oh, man, yeah. And then, of course, he got into selling cars. Yeah. I oh, and you to guys him. had that in common, too, yeah. Yeah, I called him out of nowhere once, and I said, yeah, you sold me a car, and uh, uh, it's, it's making noises. What are you doing selling me a piece of shit? I ought to come over there and slap you. And Dell's going, who is this? What do you mean? I said, Dell, this is Nord. John Nord? <laughs> I said, yeah. He goes, ha, 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 you band brother? Yeah. Well, well, I tell you, um, again, it's, it's always sad when we lose a, a member of the fraternity so soon. Man, I forgot that he passed. Yeah, me. he was another one last year. Yeah, no, I, I don't even think he was 60. Young. I don't even and think... again, uh, I think I know what he died from, you know. Oh, do you? Yeah, I think so. Well, I think... you know, hopefully he's in a better place. Uh, shame, another one I would have loved to have had in the studio to, to kind of break yeah. down and talk about his career and so on and so oh, forth. Love. But we got a cue from the back from Mr. Howard Miller himself. You forget about Oscar. You talk about a man on a mission. We didn't have Howard Miller, John. I don't know. Another one. I don't know how we would produce the show, much like with John C. Manicus Riley. Howard, what a guy Howard is. He keeps giving me signals like he's some traffic cop or some shit. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, we're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with more Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursday. Stand by. Nice. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling Sports Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Party Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. After successful cancer surgery, meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan plus three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axon Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, the Wild Berserker, and at least three more WWF icons. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive group 80s legends photos, autographs, individual photos, all before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Get your VIP packages and tickets now to secure the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. We'll see you live April the 16th. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to segment three of this welcome. fine program here. Wrestling Inside is Throwback Thursday as the berserker John Nord continues to share his memories, his experiences, the legends and uh, interesting human beings that he came across during his illustrious career as we continue to talk the World Wrestling Federation in 1991. In the month of May came a kind of a big departure behind the scenes. Yeah. A man that was with the company, a friend of this program, uh, he was with them from 87 through 91 during his first run. A brother love, Bruce Pritchard. Ah, Bruce. I knew Bruce from 1985. Uh, uh, Houston? Uh, in uh, Mid-South. Mm -hmm. um, he was not working. Um, he was just Tom Pritchard's brother. Oh, okay. As far as I knew. Mm -hmm. And nice, nice guy. Uh, uh, the brother love thing I never cared for. I just, to be honest, I'm just being honest, mm -hmm. never cared for it. Ah, uh, 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 bad. Ugh. Uh, just was not interesting to me. But Tom Pritt, or I mean Bruce Pritchard, as a human being, one hell of a nice guy. Absolutely. Bruce has been, like I said, a great friend of the show over the years. He's helped with the toy drive. He's a great guy. He'll only help you. For the fans that only knew him as the brother love uh, persona that would interview different wrestlers each and every week on yeah. Superstars of Wrestling, what would Bruce do behind the scenes, behind the makeup? What would he do? Yeah, what was his job? Because he was an office guy. Yeah, he was. His job was to uh, uh, try to give the guys ideas uh, to make their match better. Period. Hmm. Um, however, 
most of the time he would do that and he would be talking to a guy that knew 10 times more than Bruce knew. So what are you going to tell a guy, you know? Um, so maybe but that don't way, make Bruce a bad guy. That just was his job. Maybe best way to put it was he was kind of a creative guy that didn't have the veteran experience that yeah, the workers did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and his job, I think, was just to put that finishing touch on it, if it was possible. I see what you mean. Um, you know, I, I tell you, isn't it amazing that in 2022, after breaking in with the company for the first time in 1987, he's back yet again after having one of the most popular podcasts in all of sports. He's the executive producer of Raw and SmackDown in WWE right now. So he's Bruce here. is? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he, he, he left. Wow. Potted terms in 08. They brought him back. I think 2020? Well, the there you go. That's yeah. that's what you call being a good, nice guy that gets along with people that wants to, that is a team player. And they've always considered Bruce Pritchard to be a team player. Uh, always. That's why he got hired. Very dependable, very reliable. Team player. Hot and soul for this business. Team player. I wonder this, though. You know, given the popularity of his talk show and his podcast, you think he's going to be a little nervous about wrestling inside his throwback Thursday with John Nord? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad Johnny Higgs ain't going to be there. Because it, it sounds like maybe he got kicked in the throat or something. Well, Ace. I don't want to rain on your parade, but he's back too as the director of talent relations. It's Again. not raining on my parade, right, brother. Right. It doesn't change one thing. He's still funny as hell. Maybe you should just talk normal, Ace, instead of talking like this. That's your only quorum with the man is the way he talks. No, I had other quorums with him. Oh, all right. It, I, he, I just not a fan of him. Listen, I hate nobody on this earth. Hate ain't in my genetic makeup. I'm I'm not like that. But I'll tell you what, I will tell you the truth. And Ace can be a really nice guy. But what did I tell you about Barry Darso? Who are the two guys? You ask Barry Darso. I want you to ask Barry Darso this question at the the big event. Ask him, who are the two worst guys that ever screwed you over? Wrestlers. And he's going to say, Scott Simpson and Johnny Ace. And if you're doing that to Barry Darso, it proves your character. Because Barry Darso, you don't got a bad bone in his body. He's a right dude. And uh, 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 Scotty Simpson, Nikita, um, love him, childhood friend. Um, love him, graduated high school with him, good athlete, a good athlete, good football player. Um, but he did wrong by but, Barry. But he did wrong by Barry, and Scott just got any guy that don't want one of his good high school friends, he wants him to call him Nikita <laughs> instead of Scott. <laughs> you have got a screw loose, Scott. Go to... You're a pastor, so I guess you can't go to your pastor, but go directly maybe to the Lord and ask him why you insist on being called Nikita. Maybe you've already figured it out. Maybe you know something that I don't know. And then Johnny Ace, um, I, I know you're grieving. Joe died. You know, your mom, your dad died. I know um, I do. I do respect that, and I, and I do... Um, sometimes uh, act like this is in a mean sense. Um, the only problem is, is um, you know, Johnny, you were not nice to me a couple times, and uh, so I had to waffle you with a with a chair. Um, but um, you were a stooge and a suck ass too. <laughs> <laughs> However, I don't like you. So, listen, I love you, but you're an official giant suck ass. Wow. All right, well.
What do you think of that? I think it's an honest answer. Okay. If nothing else. How do you like them apples? I like those are the type of answers I think we like here on Throwback Thursday. No BS. You know. You, and you got a problem with it, Ace? Come see me. And there you go. May 28th, World Wrestling Federation Television taping Tempe, Arizona. A man that certainly did not do business the right way on the way out of WCW, but sure landed himself in a plum position in the World Wrestling Federation. It was the debut of Sid Justice, who would show up uh, in non-televised appearances at first just to try and get over with the crowd. They'd have him attack random heels post-matches during dark yep. uh, endeavors. Yep. Uh, your thoughts when you learned that Sid was coming to WWF? Did you think he was going to become a man of the town? Uh, Sid, well, let me tell you, this, this was uh, WWF's thinking. Look at the guy. He's huge. He's built. He's a, you know, he's got the curly hair. He's got the big jaw. He's got all the credentials that a guy like Vince McMahon loves. Okay? So they're going to try to use you as long as you um, play ball not in their ball. part. And, and, and not... And... and uh, uh, you know, I thought Sid was kind of a... I thought he was kind of a screwball, and I thought he was a little bit, maybe a little bit like Nikita, where he was just way too into himself, and I think that cost. But he landed, yeah, he landed in a great spot, made a, made some good money. Um, I don't know a lot about his career. I just never followed him, but um, I know enough about him to tell you what I've said. Would you, if you were World Wrestling Federation, have trusted him the way he departed WCW when he was a contracted talent? If he's going to screw over one promotion, what's to say that he won't do it again? Yeah. No, I want to. I want to. Because any time a guy does what he, do, what he did or whatever, he's going to do it again. You know why? Because it's all about him. You see, it always goes back to that. It's always all about the guy that is. Uh, very few guys hang around for decades that it's all about them. Ted DiBiase, example. Ted, for some reason, I don't know if it was because his dad died in the ring, whatever the case may be, but he got the gimmick. They kept pushing him year after year after year. And he was another colossal suck-ass. Um, and he was into Ted. He, Ted was talked about Ted. That's all he ever talked about. And I didn't care for him. Um, I remember he came in town into my church and he was going to uh, preach. And uh, he stopped at the car lot that I was working at, a Ford dealership. And uh, he, someone told him where I was working. He was nice enough to stop by and say hi to me, you know. So I do, do like that, but I just don't like the phony. I knew, I knew there was something. Anytime you start a sermon, ha, 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 ha. What, what? You get really animated over that laugh, John. Howard, if there's any problems with that, let us know. Howard, how are we doing? We okay? Just put that back right there. We don't want it to fall over again. But did if, you break it? Did no. The, I, think he, I think it might be on mute. Let me see. But the way you said so hold on, if once. you break it, I might break you. I can't see without my glasses. Shit. What are you here? We're looking for green. Do we see green? green? What color is it are now? We on the air? All right, John, as we continue to, to roll through the world that was 1991, uh, a man that I think it's pretty safe to say didn't do business the right way on the way out of WCW, uh, the then Sid Vicious of the Four Horsemen, yep. uh, kind of walking out on the company joins the World Wrestling Federation on May 28th, Tempe, Arizona, is Sid Justice. At first, 
Uh, yeah. Before he debuted in ring, they would send him out to attack various heels after they'd have dark match wins, just so the fans would know to cheer for him once he would become more of a, a featured uh, character. That's, that's Your correct. memories on Big Sid when he came in? Uh, Big Sid, uh, yeah, I think he had a screw loose. Um, Sid was for Sid, but listen, that is one of the things that you're told when you're in wrestling is you got to look out for yourself, you got to look out for number one, or you're never going to go on top. And there's a lot of truth to that. Um, however, some guys just have a hard time with that. Uh, Sid uh, uh, just kind of had a screw loose, but Sid was for Sid. And he wasn't, he never had a screw loose, though, to where he was going to think he was going to fight anybody in the locker room. Um, I don't think he was bold enough to do that. I think he, he was pretty scared he would lose. Um, but the way he did it, um, yeah, look at him the way he looked. Vince loved guys like that, the way the hair, look at the height. He was a monster, and he was built. He kept in shape. He had the hair. He had, he had it all, and uh, uh, Vince loved guys like that. Do you think he could have become the heir apparent to Hogan or Warrior? No. Do you no. think even Warrior yeah. was more over than Sid? No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, I no, I'm not a Warrior big fan, but it's probably because of the locker room stuff and his ego and all that. But the, the Warrior was over big time. If you were the booker, you would have gone with Warrior over Sid. Absolutely. Interesting. You're going you're gonna to get way more asses in the seats. Way more. And Sid's going to draw 10,000. Warrior's going to draw 20,000. And in your opinion, again, the way he left WCW, if he was willing to stick it to WCW, who gave him huge money, is kind of a greenhorn. Yeah. If you're WWF, would you not have that same worry that he'd stick it to you the Absolutely. same way? Absolutely. And yeah. that's the crazy part, is they will give guys that haven't even proven themselves that haven't paid dues, they'll give them these huge contracts. It was mind-boggling. And then you got great guys that are just as good, just as able to draw money as a guy like Sid, but Sid had the look, I'm gonna tell you that. I know that. But they'll give, you know, the classic Scott Hall, twenty-two grand a week. Uh, why? Well, he knew he knew Eric Bischoff. Bischoff got the book. I remember Eric calling everybody, going, "Do you believe it? I got the book." I mean, he was like in shock. He mm -hmm. got the book, and um, I, I don't know how I got switched over to that from said. But again, um, then that uh, formed the NWO, which is iconic, right. which is awesome. Uh, one thing that most people don't know, if you knew the amount of money that Japan made on the NWO merchandise, it would blow your mind. I've talked to Brad Rankins about this, who was in the office uh, in Japan for years, mm -hmm. okay? So this is a guy that connected Japan and NWO with Eric Bischoff. Um, he was the connection. And uh, Brad got a huge paycheck. But the NWO stuff in Japan just, it was mind-boggling how much money they made, which I I never knew till Brad told me a couple of years ago. Hmm. So, anyways, um, yeah. Did you uh, ever work, Sid? Did I ever work with Sid? I think I worked with him once, and he had a run-in, and I think 
whoever my partner was. So I didn't really work with him. I take that back. Um, I was in the ring, but he, he didn't, we didn't make any contact. And as a newcomer, how was he personally? Shy? Braggados? Somewhere in between? Uh, I think he was... Uh, cocky? I think he was a little cocky. Yeah. And I think he... Um, one thing I respect about him, he wasn't a suck-ass. Um, I, re I did respect him that way a lot. Um, a, a little bit of a screw loose, absolutely. If you know, if you watched him and knew him in, in the locker room and that, but um, he was into himself and he was into achieving what he wanted to achieve. So you can't, I guess you can't begrudge a guy for that. Um, but uh, uh, it's one thing uh, when you. It was just always mind-boggling. They they give this guy that hasn't paid any dues this money, and it's unbelievable. Here we go again. It's happening again. Some guy comes in and gets a bunch of money. You know, I'll, you know, to me speaking about Johnny Ace, <laughs> and it's true. You know that Johnny Ace got a tryout with the WWF, mm -hmm. and I watched. Uh, and Ace, what he did was he did it Japan style. And he'd do a leapfrog, this, that, like Jimmy Stuka, but it was Japan stuff. And the people just farted on it. They just went, what's going on? It wasn't America, yeah. American wrestling. You know what I mean? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, he never got hired. They, they just thought, man, what a clock, you know, I mean, he just didn't get hired. And his brother Joe was like, I need my brother, please hire him. And they would not hire him, <laughs> even with Joe in there. Wow. So Ace ended up doing good in Japan for being a Division Three basketball player with two left feet, like Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. The terrible trio. All right, wrestling fans, you heard it from John Nord himself. We'll be back after this brief timeout to wrap up the show. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon. But we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty, but... But our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out. Arguably the greatest professional wrestler of all time. Get this limited edition collector's autograph print personally signed by two-time WWE Hall of Famer Nature Boy Ric Flair inscribed 16 times for each of his recognized world championship reigns. One of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE. Also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome Ric Flair collectible for your wrestling collection now. Wrestling fans, another interesting episode here as we throw it back on Thursdays with Wrestling Insiders, Throwback Thursdays with the Berserker John Nord. Yeah, yeah. More Welcome. great content coming your way. John is headed back to Boston in the studio April the 16th at Memorial Hall. When we go back to the 80s, so much more for you to implore about, find out about, learn about, and take part in on the Boston April Wrestling 16th, right? Super Site. You April got it, baby. 16th. God, it's going to be a riot. For my partner in crime, John Nord, I'm Dan Marotti. Continue to enjoy our talk shows all week long. And then again, each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., we're throwing it back to you, baby. Until we speak again, you and yours, be well, be healthy. Good night from Boston. Fans, another marathon that hopefully brought you memories, smiles, and even a little history lesson from a superstar that lived the life and provided you action and excitement while giving up so much a time with his own family, abusing his body in the process. As we've noted before, please, like you would with a bartender or a waitress, we'd sincerely appreciate a tip of any size using the Super Chat button, again, so we can afford to bring the Berserker back to the Boston on a more regular basis. Also, if you could, please, like, share, and subscribe. Get those YouTube 
algorithms rocking and rolling so we can continue to get the word out to the millions of fans that have not seen our programming yet. And I stress the word yet because I believe once they find us, I know they're going to love us. Set a reminder on YouTube that the Berserker will be back for three big days of Wrestling Insider Throwback Thursday tapings this Sunday through Tuesday with live cyber autograph signings on Sunday and Monday. You can pre-order your 8x10 and 11x14s now at bostonwrestling.com, including a really, really cool exclusive print that you cannot get anywhere else. The Berserker is also one of it... Uh, Let's try that again, a little frog in the throat. The Berserker is also one of six of at least eight featured superstars at Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s live wrestling event and legends fan fest extravaganza a little more than eight weeks away, Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose, Massachusetts. The Berserker joins WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, Dangerous Danny Davis, and at least two more superstars to be announced. If the VIP packages sell out, we're going to bring you even more superstars for a VIP exclusive Q&A, a VIP exclusive 80s Legends group photo, an autograph photo session for all fans before the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow blow the roof off of Memorial Hall. I'm telling you, baby, we're trying to get the best athletes possible for a night. You're never going to forget. The VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. Lock in the best seats now and save some money before the week of the event and at the door. If you love the Berserkers, Throwback Thursdays, we're inching oh so close to Season 2 of Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Our Indiegogo campaign is at 94%. 94% is of this recording. Use the link in the description box below or across our social media to bring Marty back to Boston to continue his no-holds-barred sex, drugs, and rock and roll look at the 80s, 90s, and current events. We've missed Marty. Let's get him back to Beantown. If you love shoot interviews like this, you'll have the wrestling streaming time of your life by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling, knowing that you, yes, you, are helping keep wrestling legends working. You get early, full-screen ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk show shoots each and every week, our archives of over 300 full-length episodes, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library that's been seen by millions online and millions more on The Howard Stern Show, superstar watch-alongs, Patreon exclusives, my new Inside the MWF Patreon exclusive podcast, looking at how these shoot interviews and live events come to life, and so much more, all for the cup, the cost of a cup of coffee over at Starbucks. Help keep legends working. And the light's on here at the studio at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Finally, if your loved one didn't give you the gift you were looking for, hit up the Boston Wrestling Sports eBay store with merchandise of superstars from every era. Find the link in the description box below or click the store button on bostonwrestling.com. Had a great time today, folks. Hope you did too. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. Let's keep growing the family so we can bring more superstars to the studio, give more legends of this great sport work, more live events for you fans to enjoy. A Super Chat tip, again, would be graciously appreciated for all of the hard work that went into today's marathon. Every dollar counts. We'll be back tomorrow night at 10 p.m. after AEW Dynamite for Wrestling Insider Special Edition. Until then, folks, good night from Boston. Phil, take it away. Hi, this is Phil DeCesare. Thank you for enjoying tonight's Wrestling Insiders. Get early full screen ad free access to all our weeknight Wrestling Insider episodes while helping keep wrestling legends working by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. You can directly help us bring you more great historical wrestling content seven days a week to enjoy for years to come.